god, wait. The music is really loud. Hello, chat! Flame kitten, thank you so much. Thank you for all the subs. Oh my god, I see so many. Where? Okay, wait. Let me see where it starts. Gem, thank you. The realist, thank you. Uh, Poppy, thank you. Lilith, thank you. Uh, Little Boo, thank you. Half a year. Um, Yay, smiley face. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh my god. Uh, Trumi, sorry, it's buggy. <laughs> Trumi, thank you. Uh, Flameable Kitten, thank you so much. Uh, the God Janus, thank you. Uh, oh my god, oh my god, it's bugging! Uh, Hara Bear Band, thank you so much. Tixi, thank you. Victor Bubbles, thank you. Uh, Thelion, thank you. Uh, Kikyo, thank you so much. Uh, Nocturnal Smiley Mist, face. thank you. Sleepy Nora, thank you. And Lucy, thank you so much for the subs. I appreciate it. Hello, everyone! How are we doing? How are we doing? We are back. I am back. Games. I hope you're all well. Uh, I've been away for a little bit, at least on this account. Well, I've also been away on my other account, but I streamed on my other account the other day. Um, but I've been a little bit. I've, I've been away for a little bit. I've had some like family issues and internal issues to deal with, but I am back and I am here. Um, and today we're doing artist streams, which um, Eight months people. Off. I, I think I did them like. A year ago? Maybe a little bit longer now? I actually don't remember. Time? Or let me make that a little bit quieter. Time is so Five months, Nikki. Weird. Thank you for making me feel so much comfort and making me feel confident and comfortable within myself. Love you less than three. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah. Um, 11 months. Wow, time flies. No, me you love. Chad, actually, did you see that? Watch it. Yes, Noah. Did you see that Twitch accidentally went live on my channel? That was rude. Yeah, it. That was rude. They went live for like, for like a minute. I was asleep. I didn't even know. I didn't even know. I was asleep. Um. So yeah. Why? That was me. <laughs> I actually was away. Um. Thank you, Fuzzy uh, Snowy Cloud. I appreciate it. Thank you for the sub. Thank you for the subs, guys. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, Zoom Love you, here. Nikki. Blue heart, blue heart. I think he's very confused that I all of a sudden started talking. He's like, why are you so loud now? I was sleeping. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. You can Six sleep. months, yay. Your streams always make me happy. Thank You're you, amazing, Nikki. Um, yeah, I... I worked on the artist streams. I want to bring them back like once a month now. Um, which I think would be quite cool. Um, if you are an artist and you want to apply right now, it is only on my sub server, so it's only for subs. Um, Hi, Nikki Nihachu, love. Because I just think it's nice. I just want to involve my subs into more things, you know. So right now I only have my subs. Um, uh, or I have the applications only for my subs love on your my stream. sub server. Uh, if you want to do so, you can sub. And you can join the sub discord in the description um but yeah yeah i'm back oh my god it's so weird to be back chat i miss you back. i hope you have a good day <gasps> i love you, you less that. than three also five <laughs> months woohoo i actually wanted to stream yesterday but um i want to show you so i want to do a stream where i show you my favorite Hi, tiktoks Nikki. how are and you then today I do a stream. it snowed again last night and it looks so pretty that's so cool. I'm I miss snow. I haven't seen snow in a while because I live uh, near the sea. We don't really get snow. Um, but yeah, I wanna I wanna do a tick uh, a stream where I show you my favorite TikToks, and then a stream where my subs show me their favorite TikToks. Um, but I realized it took a long a long uh, bleh, a lot longer to get the, the TikToks from my uh, phone to my PC and then search which ones I want to show on stream and stuff. So, not that any one of those are bad, but, you know, there are some that hey I'm help. like, oh, I don't need to show these. Uh, Funny, thank you so much for the sub. Or, like, some that I just I accidentally liked. Um, So, yeah, it took longer, or it takes longer than I thought. Yeah, I'm wearing Jack Manifold merch. Um, I, I saw that a lot of content creators got, like, their Jack Manifold merch in the post. I didn't. <laughs> I stole this one. I'm different, Chef. <laughs> yeah, I, I stole this one from Jack. <clears throat> Don't tell him. Please. 
He's not home right now, so he doesn't know. Hmm. Eight months. <coughs> That's a I lie. Hope he you're doesn't doing know. well, Nikki and Chat Nihachu love. <coughs> A lie. I lied to you. He doesn't know that I stole it. Uh, thank you so much for the sub. <clears throat> you six Excuse months, me, thank you. Love. I was a little scared that it would crash with my hair color because both of them are pink and different shades, but I don't think it does. I think because you can see like my roots like well on like front, it's fine. I don't know. I don't know much about these things. <laughs> Ah, I choked on water. <clears throat> Mr. Oof, thank year. you so much I for the you're year. Having a good day, Nikki Smiley Face. Thank you. I hope you need to. Nihachu yai, nihachu Kata, how yai. have you been? How have you been, chat, for the last almost two weeks? I hope you've been well. Three months, P O G G. <gasps> My nails? Yes. Oh, I don't have it here right now, but uh, simply nail logic. Okay, chat. My nails are so embarrassing for like any nail person because they're so short. I feel like, cause, Ten cause like, I wanted to like, I wanted to like make an Instagram story of being like, ah, oh, Simply Nail Logicals new, new nail polish is so cool. And I look at my hands and I'm like, that's embarrassing. <laughs> but yeah, she sent me her P PR, um, and with her new shades, uh, and they're really cute. Wait, actually, let me see if it focuses. There we go. Oh, look how embarrassing, oh. chat. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I like them. I like them. They're very cute. I think one of them's already chipped. Yeah, I chipped my thumb. Oh, you can't even see. That's Two fine. Months. I won't show you. Laughing it's fine. Face you don't have to see my chipped for the thumb. Return of the artist streams. Yeah! Chat, how many of you guys love. know the artist streams? How many of you have seen the artist streams before? <clears throat> six months, yay. Thank you, Izzy, for the six months. I see a lot of people who have, and, and a lot of people who have not. Okay, so for the people who have not seen the artist streams, basically this happened, I think it was last year. I, I'm so bad with time, um, but it happened last year um, where I got my graphic tablet, which is here, and I wanted to learn how to Ten do digital blog. art, Hope but I realized well, Nikki. I'm not a digital so artist, calming after I'm busy not days. Artist, but other people are. Um, and other people in the community are. And I really, really like um, the art that this community does. And uh, all the artists I've met are all so sweet. So I wanted to do um, a, like, a, a stream where I wanted to give like back what what they gave us, uh, like content creators and, and streamers and like everything. Um, because without artists, where would we be? <laughs> where would we be without artists chat? Uh, so I wanted to give away back of like, this is you can you can this is your your platform where you can get some exposure uh where people can find you uh, obviously not 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 100 but i wanted to i wanted to just make a stream where we appreciate the artists um and what better way to make a stream hello nikki less than 33 your outfit is really pretty and hello zuko Thank less you, than 33 it. and your hair is um, so pretty smiley face wait jack said he stole my cat that's a lie my cat is literally here chat what do you mean he stole my cat? My cat's here. He is next to me. Jack is such a liar. <laughs> Jack is such a liar, Chad. He's such a liar. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at Jack's room. But yeah, I just want to make a make, this is just a way to appreciate the artists in this community, basically. Uh, and I'll explain more to you in a second. I just want to see what Jack's saying. You're a liar. Wait, hold on. Let me, Wait. Let me, just, let me just quickly deal with this. Hold on. Let me open Twitch.tv. Oh. Hi, Jack. Uh, yeah, he, 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 he opened it too. Every month, less than 33. Uh, what, what do you mean, I am lying? Jack, explain yourself. I, I have you. I explain, your, explain yourself. Jack. Explain yourself. Ah! I wait! You she's got my stream up. Hold on. <laughs> oh my god. This is gonna wait, be a loop. <laughs> she's just pulled up my stream. Ah, wait! She's got my stream up. <laughs> it's just gonna be a loop oh, now. Oh my god. Oh god, we made a mistake. We made a mistake doing this. Hey, oh, hi. hi, Jack. Can't stay for long, but have a great stream less than three. Hi, 
Jack. Stay for long, but have a Hi. <laughs> um. Um. I have. I have the cat. You no, you don't, Jack. Cat. Jack. Um, my cat is right here. You are a liar because my cat is right here. No, you don't, Jack. Jack. My cat is right here. You I have the other one. The other one. The other one. The other one. The other one is laying on my bed. I have the other one. The other one. The other one. The other one. The other one is laying on my bed. No, 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 no. You're not there right now. You don't know that. I can't believe you would feel. Do I have to get her? How dare you, Mickey? Are you making me get up now? For Valentine's Day applications and streams soon. Do I have to get her? Less than three. No, I'm bored of this. Are you making me get up? I'm leaving. No. All right, bye, Jack. I'm bored. Bye. No, I'm bored of this. Are you okay. I'm leaving. No, All right, bye, Jack. Did bye. you say bye? Okay, he said bye. Nice. Sorry about that, chat. I just quickly had to, you know, call him a liar. Um, and call him out for being a liar. <laughs> Anyways, that was a lot of echo. We could have just called each other. We have each other on Discord. We could have just called each other. But now we have to go on each other's streams. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, <clears throat> thank you so much for the sub. Pog, uh, thank I'm you calling for her from a fridge. Times, oh my god. Freeze. That's crazy. That's impressive. Um, artist streams. We're gonna have the four artists right now. Uh, like, it's always four artists from the community. We're gonna have them on our stream. OMG, we're gonna ask them a year. questions. And then we're gonna get them in a separate call. And then you guys can ask them questions. Um, and that's basically it that's how it's gonna be very cool very fun for the people who don't material girl 13 oh, yeah. months thank you for the 13 months crooked i appreciate it <clears throat> and tori thank you for the sub too um love your makeup oh chat i have a question because apparently this is like I don't know. Apparently, it's, it's like I feel like this is a very like either you like it or Four you don't. Months, okay. Yeah. So I have, have a, a question. Day, Mickey, to you. Laughing face. Thank you, Swirly Star. I'm probably gonna make a poll because this is quite interesting. Do you? Because I. So so chat. Recently, I've been doing freckles, right? Seven months. Thank you. And for I personally all that you think do, they're quite cute. I quite like day. them. Nice. But I I think it's like a very like split thing of like either people like it or people don't. So I want to know. Honest opinion, I'm not gonna be offended because I personally think they're cute. I'm gonna keep making them because I like them. But do you like my freckles or not? Now that I've been doing them for a little bit, um, eleven months. I want to know. Do the hard hands? I miss it less like than three. Them. Hard hands? You want hard hands? Hard. There we go. No, no. Six months already. Hartley, Nikki. I want to know. Three. I'm not going to be offended, chat. Just let me know. Because it's quite interesting. I, I figured that out like the other day. I was like, hmm. Do people like them or do people Nikki, not like ah, them? you're so pretty, P. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. I've been do contouring my nose, too. Which I really like. Uh, I never contoured my nose when I was young, younger. Like, ever. Ever since I've done makeup. I never contoured my nose. And recently, I started... And I've been liking it. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. I see I see a lot of people who do like Hello. them. That's nice. That's good to know. Good to know. Cosmic Flow, thank you so much. Hello. I hope you're well. I'm good at makeup. Thank you. It's practice. <laughs> and changing yeah, a lot. I change my makeup a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like throughout the years. Stream. Also, Jack, thank you, you Alexis. Good? <laughs> yeah, it's Jack good. I don't know. Um... Yeah, I changed my makeup a lot throughout the years uh, and just like experimented with things like the freckles. They're an experiment. They might go away at some point when I realize, oh, I don't like them anymore. OK, uh, 2000 people like them. You know what? Nice. <laughs> I'm glad. I just wanted to know. I was just interested. Um, so yeah, you know, it's just w blush. I never used to use blush when I was younger and now I cannot live without blush. <laughs> you know a uh, highlighter i stopped using highlighter about like like last year and now i'm using it again there's you know it, it just takes experimenting and like just figuring yourself out and and not being scared three. you know not being scared of makeup 
because it's makeup. You can you can rub it off again. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> so yeah. So yeah. Thank you, Nira, for the sub. Oh my god. This water is still from my other stream. It's just normal water. It says it's it, it tastes like stuff, but I drank that first. This is just tap water. But it's still from my other stream. <laughs> it says I need to drink more water. Mm. Wow. 13 months. Not the stream two weeks ago. You, but the stream the old stream. Alice, thank you so much for the sub. When am I starting? We're starting in about 45 minutes. I just decided I'm gonna do some just chatting first. Um, because I, I haven't been here in a while, you know? So I decided I'm just gonna do some just chatting. Uh, see how you guys are doing. And if you have any questions about the artist streams, let me know, chat. Let me know. Uh, Kesra, thank you for the 100 bits. I appreciate it. Do I like sushi? I do. I actually had sushi yesterday. <laughs> um, I've been craving it a lot. And then yesterday I decided to order some. I want to order less and I have been ordering less. Thank you, Abby. Thank you for the 10 months. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've been ordering less, but I was craving sushi yesterday and I was like, I'll get some sushi. <laughs> Why not? Why not get some sushi? RJ, thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. Nikki, do you have any other streams planned for the future? I know Valentine's streams are coming up soon and I'm very excited. Ooh, yes, that is another thing that we did last year that maybe not everyone might know. Hello, smiley face. Thank you, Koala, for the sub. Uh, hello, I hope you're well. Um, yes, Valentine's Day is coming up, chat. <clears throat> and I, Three last year, uh let my let my let my viewers send me valentine's day gf slash bf slash anything beyond and between uh applications and i'm gonna do that again i'm gonna let my community send me some valentine's day applications and i'm gonna go through them on my stream um i'm probably going to send out the forum on the first and we're probably going to do that on the 11th. I have another Valentine's Day stream planned, but I haven't planned it out yet. It was kind of like a shower thought and I was like, I could do that. And then I need more planning around it. Um, and then obviously a TikTok stream we're gonna do uh, where my subs could send me their favorite TikToks and I will show my subs and my viewers, all of them, all of you guys, my favorite TikToks. Um, we have a few things planned. We do have a few things planned. Yep, yep. Oh, there's an ad. Oh no. What's my favorite season? Fall. Probably. I like the colder seasons. I know it's a bit, no, this is very controversial chat, but I like the colder seasons. I'm also a fan of rain and snow. I know, I know. <laughs> I would rather be cold than be too warm. Uh, Winslaps, thank you for the sub, I appreciate it. Same. Why are you my viewers? <laughs> Mr. Uber, thank you for the five gifted subs. I appreciate it. Uh, but I feel like recently I have, like the last few years, I've like come, like I've, I've been more like friendly with the warmer seasons. The problem is that I'm quite alert. Like I'm, I'm very sensitive to sun. Um, so I burn really quickly. So summer is not very much, not, not very fun. And I also faint a lot when it gets really warm because I have a heart, heart condition and my heart can't take anything, <laughs> basically. Um, so yeah, sometimes it's, it's the, the warmer seasons always are a little bit hard for me, but it's fine. I'll, I'm fine. <laughs> <clears throat> Do I miss MCC? I do! I'm excited for it to come back. It's gonna be fun. I'm spring and dry, but spring's nice. When it like all starts blooming and everything starts getting like, like more colorful, I guess. That's nice. I do like that. <clears throat> Hi, Thank Nikki. you, wizard, wizard cat with a stick. With a thousand bits. Hello. I hope you are well. I 
like the color composition of your room. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm, I actually put a lot of work into it. Um, these flowers are from Guild. Guild sent me these flowers, which is very sweet. This is Jack's painting, but You're the so rest. Pretty, Nikki. Thanks for I going worked live on. today. <laughs> I'm sick today and can't leave my bed and was feeling very sad, Aww. but now I'm happy again. I hope D -D. you feel better soon. What's my favorite holiday? I feel like it always changes. Mm. I don't know. I like I like Halloween. Halloween is fun. My least favorite holiday How are you today less than 33 is your New Year's also Eve. My cousin is here a with me. She's telling me to stop giving this. Oh, oh no! Oh no! There must be a reason then, Molly. Um, speak German, please. Hey, chat. Hey, German people. People who constantly ask me to speak German. I am going to make a German stream on my old account very soon. It's not completely planned because we want to do it spontaneously. But if you want to see a German stream and me speak German, follow my old account, twitch.tv slash Nimki. Yeah. And stop asking me here, please. <laughs> Nikki are the best. Thank you, Maddie. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Thank you for the seven months. Yeah, I've asked a few of my friends if they want to join and they said yes. Uh, but Hope I don't want to announce anyone yet in case they can't make it. Less than three, less than three. Thank you, Ava. We're at the 500 bits. My alt account is in in the description. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Um, let me check again. Just to be sure. Yes, if you go on the little alt twitch. Alt twitch little icon. There it is. Isla, <clears throat> thank you for the sub. Less than three. Do I have a sister or a brother? I do, I have a brother. <gasps> chat! Chat, I'm seeing my family next week. My mom and my brother are coming to the UK and I haven't seen them in two years. I'm gonna see my family after two years. I am, so, oh my God, I'm getting emotional now. I'm so, I'm so excited for it. Yeah. It's gonna be nice. I miss them. gonna be very fun bro thank you so much for the 500 bits hi nikki hi. i hope you're doing well I'm i so hope you are too to meet the artists and learn yes. more about art oh my god chat they are so lovely you you can't believe it. i i always have like um a quick call like a five minute call five ten minute call with the artists like the week leading up to the artist stream just to make sure they're comfy and just to make sure everything works like their their screen share works and and everything they're so sweet. All the artists are so sweet. I'm so excited for you guys to meet them. <clears throat> well, then I can update the makeup tutorial sometime. I should. I should. Sh Do you want to know my secret to my freckles chat? You are back, you fourth month. Happy you get to see oh, your family you. laughing face. Yes, I'm excited. Actually, it's, I don't think it's a secret. I don't think I'm the only one doing this because I did see this on TikTok. No, I didn't see a tutorial or anything today. I just saw a woman being like, I'm just quickly doing my freckles and she did it with a fork and then I was like you can do it with a fork so the way I do my freckles is I use eyeshadow and a fork and <laughs> just dot it on it and Nikki. then I and I then I um, a use a sponge like a beauty blender to make them Zuko, like you are so friggin cute what like, the heck you know like this more my first art more smudged stream, so I'm super hyped oh, Looking let's go to thank you so much welcome zero cheer one yeah, Zuko is very cute. he is sleeping right now though I don't want to touch him because I've already woken him up once that's so smart I know right I was like I saw that it was like that makes so much sense that makes so much that is that is so simple I cannot believe that I never thought of that <laughs> Thank you, burnt house. Oh yeah, if you want to make freckles, I'm pretty sure you can do like different colored freckles that way Too really easily pot. too. Because eyeshadow, you know. Mikachi, thank you for the sub for the two months. <clears throat> and yeah. Hair tutorial. I brush it. 
I, I, I wash it and then I let it air dry and then I brush it. That's all. That's all I do with my hair. Um, I had quite bad when I when I grew up, uh, and and you guys know that I used to have an eating disorder, so I had quite bad like hair loss. And now it's really well. Like my hair is really good right now. But I'm so scared to do anything with it. Like I'm scared to touch it. Like heat, I cannot. I I am so scared to use heat on my hair just because I'm so scared uh, of it getting bad. I like getting bad. And I've always had quite like thin hair. My mom has thin hair. Like my family just has thin hair. But I I like I I've gotten it to a to a place where it's fine. So. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, I'm going to brush it. I'm going to wash it and I'm going to brush it. That's all I'm going to do with it. Uh, but sometimes I put it in like little little pigtails. That's that's all. <laughs> <clears throat> and diet. I do diet, yeah. Um, I, during the lockdown, I did like home bleach it, which didn't, which like luckily didn't uh, cause too much damage. But now i will only bleach it in like salons like that's the only thing that i wouldn't do myself i'm fine with cutting it i'm fine with dyeing it but i don't like bleaching it myself i always go to a hairdresser to bleach it <laughs> that's my hair <laughs> that's all <clears throat> what makeup brand do i use um i use a few different ones i uh actually my base like my my concealer and like stuff base is two concealers um i like one lighter one under like the, the place where you conceal and then one like darker one which has like more which like basically is my skin color <clears throat> i i'm very lucky because my uh my makeup is very color matched um and I ordered it online. Like both of my both of my like uh, concealers, I never went to the store to color match them. I just ordered them online and got really lucky uh, with it being the right color. Um, I'll make a makeup tutorial. I'll, I'll I'll do my makeup on stream sometime, um, and then you guys will see what I use because I don't know the names. <laughs> I will forget. Next one with Tommy in it. Tommy is in Brighton now, isn't he? Yeah, I I wanted I will do some streams of Tommy chat. Now we can do IRL streams together. Yeah. He is homeless. What do you mean he is homeless? Tommy is homeless. Oh no. Is he actually like? Is he is he actually like lost on the streets right now? I can message him so he can come here. Did he tweet something? He is? Are we staying with Will? Oh, bless him. They wouldn't let him in the hotel? Because he's underage? He's with Will. Okay, he's with Will, which is fine. I'll message him. I'll ask him if he Love needs you, some place to stay. <laughs> Darna, thank you so much! For the nine months, I appreciate it. Twitch baby, let's go. Tommy and your bio yeah. says, "What is this for?" A bio helps people viewing to know more about you. Noun: a biography or short biographical profile of someone. Oh, actually, I thought they were gonna say something more about it. I know. It's just the reason why it says, "Why is this? What is this for?" Is because we basically have two bios now you know on twitch and when they like implemented it i was like what is this for <laughs> you know because we already had something like that happy so I nine just, months just let it be uh hipsy thank you so much for the sub for the nine months twitch. <clears throat> what do i normally do in my lives hi um, nikki hope your january is going well nihachu love thank you nihachu Eden. i hope yours is too i do very many different things on my lives i play games and i talk to chat and i just have fun yeah <laughs> yep 
We do very cool things here sometimes. And then sometimes we also just sit here and talk. I should play Animal Crossing. I want to. Chat, you see my Switch? I have an Animal Crossing Switch and I have never in my life played Animal Crossing. I know. I know. I, I, I'm such... I actually horrible. Actually horrible. I know. Uh, but once I get a, a capture card, I'll play Animal Crossing with you guys. I'll do a first time Animal Crossing stream where we play Animal Crossing for the first time. But I'll probably do it on my old. That's, that's another old stream. <clears throat> Old streams are my low effort streams where I just sit and I play and I talk and I don't have to plan beforehand. Those are my old streams. So if you want to so if you want to do stuff like if you want to see that, if you want to see me play story games or if you want to see me um, just sit and chill, uh, those are my old streams. Um, but my main streams are more planned streams like the artist streams or some plan through Minecraft streams or i don't know what ha what have i done recently my brain is so empty sometimes <laughs> let me go on my twitch let me go on my twitch channel and see what i actually do or like fnaf no fnaf fnaf could have been on my own stream but it's a very trendy game so i figured i can do it on my my mainstream minecraft with jack and Amaran. That was that was something, you know, stuff like that. Mainly stuff with people, st because stuff with people does take does does take some time uh, to plan. Except I have them in person. Uno, <gasps> Chad, should we get an Uno group together sometime? I think that would be fun. How was I improving my English? Um. I just spoke it more. I wouldn't. I would not say my English is like anywhere near. Yes, yeah, we can do that. Um, I wouldn't say my English is like anywhere near good. Like it's fine. It's 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 okay. The only like the thing is sub. Oh, thank you for the sub. The thing is my vocabulary is dog shit. I don't have like I don't know nearly enough words to. To be to say that my English is perfect, um, I just have a good accent. That's what it is. I I I know I know I have a fine accent. I got rid of my like very German accent very early on, but I don't know so many words. Like I ask, what does this mean, daily, and it's fine. That that's fine because it's not my main like my main language, and it means I'm learning. You know, um, but yeah, it's just it's just a it's just a case of speaking it. You know, Mint, uh, Minty Saga. Thank you for the hundred bits. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, it's just it's it really is just a, a case of speaking it. Um, for me, what it is is, or or like for for every bilingual person, basically, um, is you will learn the gist of many things. You know, uh, you might not know a certain word or what a certain word means, but you will you will figure out the gist through. The conversation or through like context context is very important you really need to listen to the context when you listen to a, lang a language that is not your mother language because that way you will figure out even if you don't know a certain word like what certain word like means you know <clears throat> i think i think that's like a like a good 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 way to looking at it Thank you, Loki, Artemis. For the two months. I appreciate it. Yeah. Do I play Overwatch? I haven't played Overwatch in years. I played it when it came out. Um, <gasps> Rihanna! Hello, Rihanna. Thank you for the 17 months. I can hear her talk. I can hear you talk. <clears throat> Thank you, Mella. Oh, oh, you can hear her talk, too. Oh. Oh, hello. Uh. Oh, I don't think chat can hear him. Stop. Thank you. That's so cool. He thinks he's getting food. Uh, Epoxy, thank you for the sub. Did you hear him meow? I don't. Th I don't know if he did, but he did meow at her. Uh, 
Anna One more month song. until a year. <gasps> Nihachu love. Let's go. Let's go. Um, do I have merch? Not right now, but I'm working on some. Minecraft, please. Um, I will Hope play Minecraft having a great day soon. Less than I have three. a Minecraft stream planned. Uh, it just depends on when I'm gonna do it. Emily, thank you for the two months. Um, let's see what you guys are. Let me put on my glasses. You know what? I think it's time to put on my glasses. That's on Sweden. Sweden's nice. I lived in Sweden for a bit. Um, I like Sweden. Eyeliner tutorial? That will come with, um, my makeup tutorial in general. <laughs> so I see, thank you for the hundred bits. Stardew, we play Stardew again, yes. Stardew is so fun. Chat, Stardew is so fun. Currently, I am switching between Stardew Valley and The Sims as like my comfort games. Oh, I've been playing so much Sims. <laughs> Do I miss anyone? I miss my family. I miss my friends, uh, my German friends. I do miss them. Um, but I will see them soon too, I'm sure. You guys remember Lucas? I, mean, I miss Lucas. That is so wholesome. I know, I really like it. Uh, I'm gonna message the artistry chat and let them know. Um, in about Ina, less, than three, less than three, less than three, less than three. Lucas too, yes. I hope he's gonna. I, either he's gonna come here soon, or I hope I can go. Over. <gasps> Chat! No, I just got my ID. I got my ID back after like Nikki, what? You look a year. Have us, thank you. For the sub. I had to send my ID away for uh, applying for a visa here in the UK, but I got it back. I got it finally i got it back um which is nice which means i can hopefully soon um travel which right now obviously i can't anyways because of covid but um hopefully like once covid is less and better and 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 less dangerous i can travel <laughs> exciting <laughs> thank you simply riley for the two hey, bonds love you nikki Nihachu love drinking streams i don't drink anymore um i i only drank during like that lockdown uh like those few months i don't drink anymore like i haven't had like i, I had like two glasses of champagne the other night because we went out for food and it was a fancy fancy restaurant victor i remember you once said you never watched my little pony and i wondered how much you wanted to play it I lobs you. Victor! Thank you for the 150 50 euros. My Little Pony. I have no, I've never watched it. Um, Should I watch it? I feel like now I have to. I feel like now I have to watch My Little Pony. <laughs> oh my god, Victor. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you, 150. Oh god. <laughs> Kia, thank you for the sub. I never know what to say. I feel so bad. <laughs> okay, chat's saying I should watch it. I'll watch it. I'll watch it. <clears throat> I don't even know what I was saying. <laughs> uh, I have Chatterino now, so I can see your messages easy, e easily. E easily. Easier, easier. Wait, easier. It's easier, right? Games. Victor, stop. The games. My Little Pony game. Oh my God, there's so many. Oh. Oh. Okay. 
Ooh, you can color them? Wait, no, isn't there like a My Little Pony Island or something? I think I heard about that. I'll write it down so I don't forget this. But it looks interesting. Okay, I wrote it down. <clears throat> Axelto, thank you for the sub. You have my phone case, thank you. Very cute, very cute. Um, oh, can you hear my stomach? <gasps> very growling. I did have food earlier though. Uh, what was I saying? I'm trying to I'm trying to remember, but I think I was done with what I was saying anyway, so it's fine. Uh, Center Smithers, thank you so much for the sub. Uh, I remember playing so many My Little Pony games online. Those were the best. Ah, that's really nice. I've never I never have. Um, I don't know I don't know why I don't think I I think it just wasn't like big. Where I grew up. Toaster, thank you for the hundred bits. That's on Encanto. I haven't watched it yet, but I got Disney Plus now, so I can watch Encanto now. Very cool. I've just been watching American Horror Stories, like the little like 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 little series of like different story every episode. That's fun. I've been enjoying it. Whoop whoop 13 months so happy to have spent this much time subbed. Time. Hopefully I'll have many more months too. Nihachu or love new. Nihachu love. Oh thank you and Flora and thank you for the gift to sub. Thank you so much for the 13 months. You gotta watch Encanto. I want to. The music sounds so cool. I really like the music. I've, I've listened to a few songs. They're literally on the radio. So yeah. Yeah 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 yeah. I'm reading. I'm reading. I watch Arcane, of course I have. <laughs> it's on the radio? Yeah! I was in an Uber the other day and um, they had Encanto playing in the radio. Leprey Ra, thank you so much for the sub, for the prime! I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you! <clears throat> Do you love American Horror Story? What's my favorite season? What's my favorite American Horror Story season? Um. I don't know it's very close i think for me what it is is they are good seasons and they are bad seasons you know i I, ca I don't really rank them i'm just like these are good seasons and these are bad seasons i don't like the newest ones like honestly i'm, I'm not a big fan of the newest ones um but the first few like like horror uh murder house um the witch one um um the the freak show one um asylum like these are all good these are good i just don't enjoy the newer ones i feel like marvel i do like marvel marvel cool <coughs> i cannot drink marvel or dc probably marvel because i i've seen more marvel films than i have seen dc films uh, and I, I haven't read any comics. Uh, Moon the... Oh god. Moon the Arcanus Twitch. Thank you so much for the tier 1. I appreciate it. Uh, when's the artist stream starting? In about 15 minutes. Favorite horror game. Um, Layers of Fear. I really like Layers of Fear. Um... And Alien is a very good... Alien, like, the Alien films and the Alien game are one of my favorite uh, films and games. Have I seen Wilbur's Lure? I have not. I have not, chat. I saw it was live, but I didn't... I think I was busy at that point, so I couldn't see. <clears throat> Thank 
He's luckier than you. But it's tier one. I appreciate it. Um. If COVID will end, will you make another fan meeting? Of course. That's, like I like it. It is just about being safe for everyone involved. Um. So I'll make it as soon as it is safe for people involved. questions about if i have seen stuff i've seen i've seen a lot of like i've seen most things though like that you guys have asked me by now but i've it's always a question like i sometimes have a lot of time to what oh uh my sink is dripping thank you email on the email to the landlord's chat <laughs> we have so many issues in our apartment um, so we're emailing them about it. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've, it's always a question. Like, sometimes I have a lot of time to watch stuff, and then I don't have time to watch stuff. So it's like, you know. But right now, I do have time. I get a snake. If you know how to take care of it. That's always that's always the thing. Do you know, and can you take care of it? Because I, I was thinking about getting a bird, like, a few years ago. And I realized I have no idea how to take care of a bird. And I've never taken care of a bird before. So I should not get a bird. You know, that's that's what took that's what kept me from it. <laughs> Any opinions on World War 3? Okay, chat. This is so funny to me. First of all, it's not funny. <laughs> it's not a funny like thing. But I love the fit today. Literally the face. same thing happened a year ago. A year ago. We were like Oh my god, guys, World War 3 is happening. We're, we're all gonna die. We made memes ag about it. Or two years ago, not one year ago. It was two years ago. It, like, literally, like... <laughs> it's, it, is, it, it, it just gets, like, less... And, like, because we are so desensitized to it. Like, obviously, this is, a, like, this is scary. This is a scary topic. And, like, a scary thing. But we're so desensitized to it that we're making memes about it. Like, what is going on? <laughs> You know, what's going on with us? <clears throat> you know? Yeah. It's just, it's just, it, it's scary, but we, that's how we cope, I guess. But literally the same thing happened two years ago uh, on New Year's. Ooh, we have a we have a what's the best time to snap into a slim jam what's that multiplayer add poll i don't understand it uh, gaming we're gamers i i think oh nice cool i'm getting fit i this is confusing do you have those too are you do you are you getting the same thing Am I the only one? You can vote for something? I don't know. <laughs> no? Oh, okay. That's fine. I got 355 bits. Thank you, Twitch. I don't know what just happened. Oh, you do say it? Okay. Oh my god, three people at once in chat just asked me what I think about Poland. Chat, Poland's nice. I've been to Poland a few times. My step step grandmother mother is Polish and I've uh visited like I've visited her family a, a lot. Poland's nice. I like Poland. I probably wouldn't live there, but <laughs> nice. <laughs> Everyone I've met uh from Poland has always been very lovely, so I, that's all I can tell you. <laughs> do I have a lot of Polish viewers? I wonder. I wonder if I do. 
I, I think I have a few. Thank you, Sir Christian. 17 months, woo. He was 17 months. Sai, Sai Christian. Kirsten. I cannot read. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Okay, 10 minutes. I don't know, I, I... I think they're here. They're probably here. Artist, are you here? Wait, I left your other stream on and went, why is there another Neo 2? Oh my god. <laughs> that must be confusing. I think that's what people think whenever they see my old account just like pop up and they're recommended. They're like, why is there another Neo 2? You know, I get a lot of questions of if I am the real Niachu on my old account whenever I stream there. More Niachus, yay! Aww, that's a nice reaction. Chat, thank you, I appreciate that. <clears throat> You're from Russia, but you live in Germany. Ooh. Hmm. What's my favorite anime? Uh, the same as my favorite movie, which is Your Name. I really like Your Name. Your Name is a good film. Favorite song? I don't think I have a favorite song. Like, my favorite song changes a lot. I don't think I have one right now. I haven't been listening to just one song on repeat recently. I've been listening to playlists. It always changes. Oh my god, my mods are so quick. I just saw someone get deleted, like, instantly. <laughs> that took me off guard. I w it, w it wasn't, like, that bad of a message. It was just a different language. And you're only allowed to write in English here. But it was so instant. <laughs> Lily, thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. <laughs> Fast. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, chat. The reason why you are not allowed to write any other languages in chat, by the way, is not because I'm trying to, like, not have you 14 be months. yourselves, I'm but so I want everyone to be able to, to come back. understand also, you. Also, Nikki, Pomo! have you been able to see the movie Belle? It's a platonic no. take on Beauty and the Beast, directed by the same person who made Wolf Children. <gasps> that sounds so cool, Belle. I'm gonna look at it. Um... Hi, Pomo. Pomo, have you been in my artist streams? If not, we need to change that. Have a nice that. stream. Because you're an amazing artist, Pomo. Jill, thank you for the five euros. Um, but yeah, I just want everyone to be able to understand you. Obviously, when we're doing the German stream, you're allowed to write German and, and everything. Um, but I want you all to be able to understand. <clears throat> And then sometimes I do allow you guys to write German in it. Oh, what's Renaissance? Oh, okay. Um, you know, sometimes I, I do allow you. When, when we, whenever you stream with Felix, for example. Uh, Ruppels. How do you do your eyeliner? I always mess up. I just don't focus on, oh, what if I mess up? You know, my eyeliner is wonky. You know, you can see that. This one is a lot higher than this one. This one's looking kind of like there. This one's looking there. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. It's whatever. Eyes aren't completely symmetrical. And your eyeliner doesn't have to be. It's whatever. It still looks fine, doesn't it? I get a lot of compliments about my eyeliner. People are like, oh, your eyeliner is so nice. You know? Just don't focus on... On like, oh, what if I mess up? Oh no, now this is looking weird and this is looking wonky. Just go with it. If it's like really, really messed up, then you can change it. But I do my face base first. So fixing my eyeliner by removing it is just impossible. You know? Because if I do, my, my base would just get messed up. So I'm just like, ah, whatever. I'll wing it. If it doesn't look that great today, it will look better tomorrow. It's fine. And then obviously I've, I do this almost every day, so obviously so I also know what I'm doing. Like it's very easy for me now uh, that I've done it every day to just do it. But yeah, it's fine. 
chat. Mess ups happen. You can mess up. You know, people who judge you are assholes. That's what I'm saying. Why judge someone else if you can, you know, do it yourself? <laughs> you know, like judge yourself more than you judge other people. Let other people do whatever they want. And if other people judge you, fuck them. <laughs> who are they to judge you? For your wonky eyeliner? Okay. <laughs> if that's what you can judge me for, okay, have fun. That's, you know. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Kod uh, Kodzuken, uh, for the euro. I appreciate it. And Luca, I don't think I saw that, but thank you for the six months. <clears throat> oh, there it is. So Hi, true. Luca. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. You have a nice chair? I do. I like my chair. I've, s I've been seeing a lot more people recently having this chair and I like it. It's very nice. It's I, f I think it's very funny that we all have Minecraft chairs. <laughs> like Shovel got one. I think Scott now has one. Awesome. <laughs> very fun. <laughs> and it's very comfy. Honestly, I really like this. I wanted to give this to Jack first because I was like, oh, I have my other chair. I don't need this one. But then I used it like once and I was like, keeping this thank you Sina, for the sub i appreciate it thank you nikki with two k's or nikki with one k nikki with one k but i don't i'm not judging you if you write it wrong shovel and nikki content is she still in the uk i saw her when she arrived um i met her but i don't know if she still is if she still is in the uk i can ask her if she wants to come on a stream sometime I'm gonna ask her. Um, I'll ask her. I'll see. I'll see chat. <clears throat> I like the glasses. Are they real? They are real. My glasses are real. Uh, I can see quite okay without them. But... I get headaches and like sometimes it's really hard for me. It's mostly movement. That's why like reading chat without glasses isn't always as easy. But um, they're real. They're just not too strong. We're having a heart spam, heart spam, heart spam chat. Oh, do do new people remember even know what the heart spam is? <gasps> you can redeem a heart spam and everyone spams a heart. New people, we've had that for a while. Thank you for the sub for the no oh, cookie Kiara. Thank you for the five gifted. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Okay, okay, chat. I think I'm gonna start. I think I'm, I think we're I think we're ready. I think we're ready to meet the artists. I think we're ready for 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 the artist stream. Two more minutes, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start the call anyways and see see if they're here. Hello. 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 How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm just gonna let's just wait for everyone to be here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Are you guys excited? Oh, Chris isn't here. Yeah. Nihachu love yeah. have a year. Yeah. Team yeah. ASM really for the fun. stream. Yes. And hello to sub chat. Yeah. If Chris. Probably gonna arrive soon. Yeah. I mean, we we still have a minute, mm -hmm. and it's fine. <laughs> People can be late. I'm I'm not the one to speak <laughs> about being on time. <laughs> <laughs> I rushed my dinner because I was like, oh, oh my no. god, I have family who's left. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> but I was like, uh-oh, uh, might have to hurry a bit. Mm -hmm. That's okay. You could have you could have eaten in peace. Nah, it's fine. I will eat afterwards too. Okay. 
<laughs> Alright, I'm gonna... Oh, can I... Oh, how did I do it with a Discord last time? Let me remember. Hello! Hey, Chris! Am I an hour early? What do you mean? Am I an hour early? No, I'm um, not. This is what you told us. <laughs> yeah, Corey, I'm not an hour early. It is GMT, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> it is 8 p.m. Are they GMT. saying because you started the stream an hour early? Oh, like maybe. You started the stream an hour ah. before. <laughs> true. True, I did. Yeah, mm -hmm. I decided to talk to chat first. Okay. Um, let me... Someone's having... Some background noise. Oh, let me hold on. I'll go and push talk once. That's all good. No worries. I'm gonna quickly just drag everything up so people can see you better. There we go. And I'll change it once we go to screen share. But do you guys want to introduce yourselves first? Sure. <laughs> all right. Do we want to do it in the order of where I call you later? Uh, sure, so I'm starting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so hi, I'm Avian or Anna. I'm a 20 years old a French artist and I'm a game art student. Nice. Well, where can people find you? <laughs> like, what's your social uh, media? They can find me on Twitter and Tumblr mainly under the name Avian. So A V Y E N E. Nice. <laughs> All right, Chris. Hello. Uh, my name is Chris. Um, I use he/him pronouns. Uh, I am a, a twenty-year-old artist, animator. Um, I mostly post stuff on my Twitter at Chris Rin, and then the Rin is with two eyes. Um, and yeah. Nice. Um, Twig? I'm Twig, um, or Wello Twig is what I am on social media. Uh, I'm 17 and I do digital art and I'm going to art school next year. And uh, yeah, I stream on Twitch too. Yeah. Is, this, is your Twitch the same name? It is. It's Wello Twig. I do art streams, so. Ooh. Nice. nice. <laughs> right. Yeah. Droplet? Oh, hi. Um, can you listen to me? Yeah, you have a little bit of a, um, like a background noise, but I think I should be fine. It's not... Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know how to fix that. <laughs> but let me know if it gets too bad. Okay. Um, well, yeah, my name is Rebecca, uh, I'm 20 years old, and I'm a freelance animator and illustrator. Uh, but yeah. Where can people find you? Uh, my Instagram is Rebecca Droplet, just like that, but without the uh, line. <laughs> <laughs> and my Twitter is just like the one you uh, wrote. Nice. Yeah, so I, think I usually I post things on Instagram. Exclamation mark. Yes, you will also be able to get everyone's... Uh, social media and everyone's names so do that if you want to find them um do you guys wanna so what i what i did last time is i just had everyone like share their screen and just doodle but it's very much up to you guys hello um, everyone it's i have so some questions prepared for you which i sent you so um, the other day and Less then we're three. gonna go into um separate calls and i let chat ask you guys questions but uh, it's very much up to you if you guys want to doodle or if you guys want to just stay like this. I can doodle. Yeah? <laughs> I can do yeah. something. Yeah, sounds good. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. So where is Photoshop? Boop. Okay, let me... Oh god. I'm so scuffed. I'm such a scuffed streamer. It's fine. <laughs> We're all scuffed inside. <laughs> very true, very yeah. true. 
There we go. And I can just switch between those. Very nice. All right. Oh, should I share my screen? Yeah, if you want to. Okay. I have something I was working on, so I'll just keep working on that, I guess. <laughs> Sounds good. Very nice. Do you want you um, all. all of us to do it? And we can just kind of, you can bounce back and forth. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna work on this one. Ooh. If needed, I've got my two little Photoshop page. <laughs> so cool. Okay, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna write my questions on my yeah, I did write them on my notes, that's right. Um I'm just gonna go ahead and ask some questions and then I'm going to um let you guys answer probably in the same um order that we answered them like that we that I let you introduce yourselves so it's less confusing um okay. so i will uh, i will start with you avian avian is that right uh yeah yeah it's true <laughs> it okay. is. how long have you been doing art uh i think i've just been doing art like ever since i was a child because it has never been a question for me where i i like the there hasn't been a moment for me when I told myself I want to do art with my life. It was just something obvious for me. Mm -hmm. So I would say all, since ever. <laughs> it's kind of dumb, but that is, I had the luck to have like a family who was on the artistic side. So they always just supported me and let me do what I wanted. That's really nice. Have you yeah. been like, have you at some point switched from digital to, uh, from classic to digital? I actually don't like digital all that much. I've always been just a traditional enjoyer. <laughs> fair. That's fair. So much. Oh, you're more lagging. Fun to have just the actual paper in front. Oh, I hope it's okay. I think you're back. Uh, yeah, I, I think okay you're back now? now. You're back now. Okay. Um. So yeah, I've always mainly been drawing on traditional and i think i've like put more work into digital when i actually entered like school and game arts uh, school so about three years ago but i've been doing digitally uh, digital since like at least seven years ago something like that i see that's cool yeah um who was next chris i think you were next right God. Um, what's this? I have the right order. Sorry, say that again. Uh, were you next? Wait, I need to. I need to yes. find the order again. All right. How long have you been doing art? Um, so I've been drawing. Um, a kind of. Uh, probably since since I was really young. Um, but I started drawing digitally. Um, around 2016. Okay. Um, I got my my parents got me. Uh, my first drawing tablet um, for Christmas and it was this like really small kind of crappy um, drawing tablet and um, but it worked and and I was like you know this is what matters or whatever and around that time um, Undertale was really really big uh, and I was super 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 in Undertale I was obsessed with it and um, that was like the main thing that I would draw <laughs> my first my first piece of digital art was a drawing of Sans um, from Undertale and uh, and I still have it and every now and then I'll do like redraws of it and stuff like that but um, but it's kind of funny um, that I went from there to do more fan art stuff and um, I've kind of been drawing ever since um, and you know graduating from doing stuff in paint tool side to doing stuff in Photoshop um, and then eventually like doing animation stuff, um, which is what like I'm trying to pursue now. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, so it's been like five years um, that I've been doing this. Wow. I, like, have you, when did you start animating? Because you probably started animating um, like later, right? Oh yeah. So I started animating about, I would say a year and a half ago. Um, what I did was I used to make, uh, well, I still do. I make animatics. Right. So um, when 
uh, I started kind of getting into the Dream SMP is when I was like really into making animatics and I was kind of starting out and what I would do is I would draw everything in Photoshop and I would put it into like an editing program and just kind of edit things together. I didn't have an animation program yet. And then I got a hold of Toon Boom, which is this program here. Mm -hmm. And um, I started doing more animation type stuff and um, it's pretty much all been like self-teaching and um, up until uh, I started going to university um, for it and um, now I'm in school for it and doing that. But a lot of the stuff that I work on is all uh, personal projects for the most part. Um, but um, but it's been a lot of fun, like kind of learning how to animate um, and going from illustration to animation is it's two very different fields. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. That's really cool. Um, who was next? I think Twig, right? Yeah. Twig, how long have you been doing art? Um, so I, I also have been always kind of been doing art. Like since I was little, I was like... I always just like was drawing, um, but like with digital art, I don't remember exactly when I got an iPad because I draw on an iPad. So um, I don't remember exactly when that was, but I know I started doing it more consistently like three years ago, I think. And that's when I started like drawing more consistently and actually like trying to work on it and like considering it something I could like do as a career. And I've been doing that ever since, like since I started like posting on um, social media. I started out like on Instagram doing like um, musical fan art. Like I was in the Hamilton fandom and then like other musicals. And then, uh, then I was just not doing fan art for a while. And then I joined MCYT and Twitter and I've been doing that now. And then I started streaming and yeah, so I've always been doing art, but uh, it's just like changed what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. cool. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you, but thank you so much for <laughs> Ray Jack. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, Ray. We're doing artist streams right now. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, Rebecca, well, how long have you been doing art? Well, um, well I've also been doing art uh, since forever. Uh, when I was very little, I used to draw the walls. Uh, and my parents are always scolded me, but it never stopped me <laughs> from <Aww>. trying. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and yeah, uh, right now I'm really into animation. And I think I, um, when I was like 13 years old, maybe, I decided to search on the internet how Adventure Time got made because I didn't. Like, I knew animation wasn't real, <laughs> but I never wondered, like, how. <laughs> So I uh, um, I rem remember I saw like some interviews and some process on the storyboarding and all, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> that's amazing! And ever since then, I knew I also wanted to be an animator. So um, right now I'm doing I think illustration and animation equally, but yeah, that's that's like my dream job, <laughs> animation. Have you started those at the same time, illustration animation? No. Um, First, I went into digital illustration, like maybe six years ago. And my first animation, I think I did one four years ago, maybe it was really bad. <laughs> like I did not look any tutorials or anything, but I just wanted to try. Um, but yeah, now um, I think I'm like, I work more for illustration, but I'm studying a lot more animation right now. I see, I see. Yeah. That's very cool. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, next question, everyone, is what brought you into art? I know a lot of you have are drawing like ever since they were really young, but like maybe like what what got you into like digital art or wanting to pursue art or um, to get better at your art stuff like that. Art style is a is a lifestyle. You don't choose it. It's choose you. <laughs> it chooses you. <laughs> Do you have any inspiration then? Did you get any inspiration? Um. I guess like for any artist, you just get inspired by everyday things. Like you have to get out of your comfort zone and just watch movies, read books, watch anything that can inspire you and work with that. And it's really amazing. And as for well, what got me into art, as I said, I had a family 
with like loads of artists. So I think I mainly got it from there. And then it was just a question of, I want to express myself through drawing, to draw far not mainly, I think, at first. Um, and then we were just for myself, because I wanted to draw things that I liked and that passionated me. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Um, so I was a big fan of video games growing up. That was one of my really big inspirations. Um, for a long time I wanted to do video game concept art. That was like kind of my main thing. Um, because I grew up on video games. And, um, both video games and like movies and animated shows, that kind of stuff. But that was the really, really big one for me. And um, I had so much, um, like I would, I would go to all of these, you know, AAA companies and I would like look for the designers. Like I would go through the credits and I would like find the artists on the credits and I would try to like look up their Twitter handles and look up their information online. Um, a lot of the professionals in the industry will have like ArtStation is, is a really big platform for very like professional work. Um, and I would go and I would try to find like their ArtStation and stuff and I would like look and try to find inspiration or whatever from there. Um, but industry level concept artists are like insane. Their, their work is so... Really? masterful yeah. and so i would just look at it and I'd be like oh my goodness like i want to do this so bad and um it's funny how as i've kind of grown and changed as an artist i've like like my, my path has become more unclear because initially when i was first getting into art i was like this is exactly what i want to do this is exactly you know the path i want to go on uh and then i started animating and i was like well <laughs> I don't know like I could I could there's a lot of different ways that I could go with it and now I'm kind of like well I could do anything I just I'll, I'll just I just want to draw for a living I just want to get a job whatever it is um because for me at least now um like art is my life you know and I can't see myself doing anything other than it for um you know for 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 a job and i think that there are downfalls to that uh if you take a hobby and you turn it into what you do for a living mm -hmm. um and i've kind of like part of me a little bit deep down is like oh maybe i shouldn't have <laughs> maybe i shouldn't have done that you know maybe i should have like you know picked a different a different career path um but uh we're kind of in in too deep at this point i you know i'm going <laughs> to school for it so it's like well you know uh, there's not much i can do now um, so it's just about hoping that I, I made the right decision, you know, um, and, uh, and kind of just going from there. Um, but I think, I think that, um, that I'm really happy with, with what I've decided to do. Uh, and I'm, I think if you go into it with the anticipation and like knowing that you have to keep your head on like properly and, and that, okay, I need to make sure I'm balancing my work and my enjoyment and mm -hmm. like personal stuff or whatever, then you can go into it with a much better mindset. But it's all about having that mindset, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, I do say that if you enjoy what you're doing or work, you never work a day in your life, so. Yeah, you know? it's it's funny because I think that to an extent, it's kind, it is true, but it's also like, well, there are going to be some days that you're going to hate your job. Of course, there's, <laughs> like, there are you know, <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, it's inevitable where it's like, well, there are some days that it's just like, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to try. And it's, it's also difficult with drawing too, because it's like, well, like, I want to draw what, what I want to draw. Like, mm -hmm. I have personal work and personal projects, but when you're working for a company, you're drawing what the company wants you to draw. And when you're drawing for a company, it can be so different because while you can, you know, have passion for whatever you're working on, whatever project you're working on for the company, it's always going to be different you, yeah. than compared to like what your personal work is. You know, mm -hmm. there's always going to be a differing level of passion. Um, yeah, and it's just work. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. Cool. especially with like commissions and stuff. It's like sometimes I'm just like, I want to make money. I want to make this isn't these aren't my characters, but you know what? I this is this is my paycheck, uh, and that's that's enough motivation for me. But it's it's about balancing it between um, that personal work and that that actual work and being able to maintain that. So yeah, that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, as someone who plays video games for a living, I definitely yeah, do agree yeah. that like sometimes it's work and sometimes it's just fun. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Um, uh, who was next? Quick, I think you were next, right? Yeah. What did get you into art? Yeah, so, um, like I said, I've always, like, it's always been kind of like the thing I did was drawing. Um, so I don't really know exactly what got me into it. It was just like, like when I was like five years old, I think we went on a like cross country trip. So I had like a bunch of free time in the car and I was just like scribbling in my little notepad like the entire time. Um, but like wanting to pursue it, like what got me into that was definitely like posting on social media because I don't remember exactly what got me to want to do that, but I was like, this seems like it would be fun if I like shared my art on the internet and then like I saw other people sharing it and I was like, oh, this is cool and fun. And then like once I opened commissions and I was like, people were paying me to do it, I was like, oh, well, maybe I can just do this as a career instead of like, because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. But, um, but yeah, doing art and like, I, it does feel like work sometimes, but it also like, I like doing commissions, weirdly enough, is cause I like with art, I have a lot of trouble with like, like an empty canvas and like getting started is like the hardest part for me, like by far. And I like having a specific like assignment is is really good for me. So like with doing commissions and I know I need to do like a certain thing for somebody that's paying me, then it's like that's good for me. And I enjoy that because it's like problem solving and figuring out how exactly to do what they want to do. So I think that's what I really enjoy about art and doing is like trying to figure out the best way to portray something or, you know, like do what I want to do with the art, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Fair, fair. Uh, Rebecca, what about you? Is it okay if I call you Rebecca or do you want me to call you Droplet? I'm not quite sure. Oh no, Rebecca. Actually, Droplet okay. was like uh, a joke oh, okay. <laughs> that I kind of regret now because I'm in too deep with this name, but my brother <laughs> and I uh, came up with it. So, but no, Rebecca is fine. <laughs> Thank <Okay>. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, well, uh, I mean, like I said, I, I've always been into art, but I think what really made me realize that I wanted to do this for, for a living, especially animation and, you know, like drawing for other people was uh, high school, because when I realized what animation was, I... Um, you kind of, it kind of crashes with this idea that the artist is like an individual who is always like expressing themselves and, you know, it's all about your expression and your ideas. Animation, I mean, it can be that, it, it is that, but it's also like a lot of teamwork and a lot of communication and so much love from so many people coming to like one single movie or even just one single shot from, from a movie. And while I liked that, I didn't know if I was going to be like, um, about drawing all the time for someone else <laughs> but what really um, made me realize that no I actually really love drawing for other people was high school because uh, I was really lucky and I made like really good friends during high school uh, especially because uh, like in my other early school years I was really shy about my drawings and I never wanted to show anyone what I was drawing but when my friends realized that I like to draw, they never stopped asking me for drawings. Uh, they were lucky that I didn't know how to charge back then. But oh. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> but they always, always asked me for drawings. Even people that I wasn't like that close uh, to, like, oh, can you do me or can you draw like a bear? I remember someone asked me to draw a bear <laughs> or something like that. And I really enjoyed it. Like, I love uh, listening to people telling me what they are thinking feel like they aren't capable enough to illustrate it and then trusting me with that idea and trust me to like birth <laughs> to that idea in a piece of paper like that's awesome it's it's amazing like getting to uh kind of like imagine whether what other people are feeling or seeing so so yeah now that i do commissions i actually really like them because even though i don't get like that much time for personal art I really love to just uh, make other people happy with my drawings and uh, yeah, so if that's, uh, I mean, right, I, of course it could change and maybe eventually I get the need to like maybe do some more personal stuff, but right now I'm 
I don't know, I just, I really can't picture myself being happy, like, just doing art for other people and getting other people to accomplish their ideas. Aww. So yeah, high school was, like, a big help in that realization. Mm -hmm. That's really sweet. That's really nice. <laughs> it's a oh, really, that, that's, like, a really nice um, way to look at it, I feel like. Because cause I totally understand, like, Chris's thing, where, where I think I would be like, oh, but now i have this idea and i want to draw this and i want to draw this character not what like this company or this person is telling me but i also like the like the idea of like oh but they couldn't draw it and they asked me to do it so um i can like put this into a like this picture into a place that's really sweet yeah yeah i love that yes cool. um next question for you guys is what is something you would consider special about your own art was the question that I was dreading because I have no idea. <laughs> um, for like a long time, I've struggled with colors because I always made them too dull. And then I started doing things too saturated. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I don't know. I just enjoy drawing what I can and if it's satisfying for me at the end like uh i had a project that i didn't know how much i should work on to consider it finished and i told myself if that project can be good enough so whenever i see it as my background desktop then it will be finished and i think that's the only motivation i had for that project Aww. i didn't really know what i was doing for it <laughs> but i really loved it in the end it still is background desktop. <laughs> That's right, so you're drawing the um, uh, uh, Technos and Phil's village, aren't you? That's what it looks like, at least. Yeah. yeah. Procrastinated on that. Oh. So, <laughs> I told myself this is the best motivation that I will get ever to draw on it, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really nice. Hi. Thank you. Um, okay. Who wait, who was next? Chris. Chris. Hello. What do you um so the special? question was Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh I was I was also dreading this question, <laughs> uh, funnily enough. And <laughs> I'm not the only one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so it's funny, I because I, I also am a bit of um an overthinker. Uh, and so I'm going to give an answer that is a bit overthinking. Um, when it comes to, because when you say special, right? Well, well, at least when I think of special, I think of like unique, right? I think that's a, yeah. a solid synonym. Um, but the thing is, is like, I can look at somebody else's art and I can identify like, oh, I love how that person uses colors or, oh, I love how that person uses their composition or their character design or whatever. But that's because their art is something that I observe from the outside and it's not familiar to me, right? I, it's only familiar for me as a viewer. Mm -hmm. But with my art, it is the most familiar to me. My art is like something that I understand more than anybody, right? Because it is it is mine. So it's hard to look, right? If If you're thinking, okay, well, special is something unusual, something different. How am I supposed to like sit and like find something unusually special about my art when it's so usual to me? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I had a really hard time with this question. And it's kind of a, that's kind of a non-answer, right? Because it's like, okay, well, what what you're kind of really asking with that is like, okay, well, what do you value in your art? What do you think is cool about it? What do you think is is um, you know, good, what are you good at, whatever. And if I had to give an answer, I would say that I um, am pretty good at making like dynamic compositions. Um, I think that trying to animate, um, you want to, you have to take character designs that are simple and make them into something that can move really well and move really dynamically because you need to be able to take advantage of the uh things that animation gives you and 
take these simple characters and put them into situations where you can really stretch and pull them and and pull out all of the characteristics from them and um and i've been trying to work on that to make my compositions look really solid to be able to do that so if i had to give an answer of like oh what do i consider my like, special about my art <laughs> that would that would be it um but i think that at the end of the day for me personally i have a very hard time looking at my art at as anything other than like critically mm -hmm. um because that's just what I'm used to. And that's not like in a bad way. Like, I don't think my art is, is when I say that, I don't think that my art is bad in any sense of the word. I think that I'm a, I'm a very good artist, but um, it's just kind of a different way of evaluating. And there's like a different mindset to it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. So yeah. That'd be my answer. <laughs> yeah. No, I get that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I understand that this question might be really hard. Cause like, obviously you do look at your, yeah, you, constantly look at your art it's yeah, the same like yeah. with your face what's special yeah. about your face <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so yeah, yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. twig what about you <laughs> what do you think is special about your art yeah i agree that it, it is kind of difficult to um like look at your art the same way that someone else would but i do like get what um people tell me about my art um, a lot. Sorry, I just saw my friend in chat. Hi, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jesse. Um, uh, I but I do get what like people tell me about my art a lot, and also like what I see in other people's art that like I try to um, like replicate or also like include in my own art, which is a lot about like texture. Um, you can probably see in my art, I I really like including a lot of texture. It's but the way I shade and render is like very scratchy, which is which I enjoy. Um, which I think is something that's recognizable in my art. Also, I use a lot of like really warm colors, which I think usually makes my art feel very warm and soft and welcoming is what I, I usually try to go for. Um, so I think I think I'm pretty good at colors. Um, I, and I think I'm the best thing I'm good at is rendering um, and like shading and all of that stuff, I think is what my strengths are and what I get the most um, compliments on and what people notice the most when they they tell me like what they like about my art. so. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Yeah, no, I agree. It looks, it looks really cool. It look, it. Yeah. yeah. From what I've seen, like from your art, it does look very welcoming and warm. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely does. Yeah, it's very nice. It's, it's kind of terrifying, but I think it's what you were. Trying yeah, to this do. one, the one I'm working on right now, is a bit different. I can like show. Like it is this is this is amazing. little um a little more like the vibe I usually. It's beautiful. Go for. Like, this is oh my something God. I did recently, which is a bit more so warm. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. Um, Rebecca, what about you? Um, well, what Chris said uh, really resonated with me. Because, yeah, it's hard to... Like, I feel like you're always looking at your art. Um, I feel like it's going through puberty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially now that, like, you... When you start to study it and you start to understand, you know, color theory and... Uh, com how to do composition and all and you see that you're starting to get that right in your own art it feels good but you also know that you are in that awkward stage where you're learning but you but your style hasn't developed just yet because you know you can't uh, decorate the cake if it's not baked I think that's how you say it in English but yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, it, it's weird because uh, when I look at my pieces I feel like they're always changing and I feel like you know, I look at them one day after they're finished and I feel like, oh no, what have I done? They're, they're awful. But then I wait two weeks or a month and then they look, they don't look so bad. Like I, I am able to see the mistakes I've made, but I, but I also am able to uh, give myself a break and say like, well, you got that right. <laughs> and so, so between, um, you know, you qualifying yourself or, or disqualifying yourself is hard to find a unique voice because it's just you making progress. Um, so again, that's like <laughs> kind of a non-answer, but I, I, a thing that I'm, um, that I've always tried to carry along with my traditional and digital art, and I feel like it kind of shows, is like, 
uh, water motifs. I mean, this one is maybe too on the nose <laughs> because it's literally <laughs> like two whales and a mermaid. Uh, but but I don't know, like uh, whenever I think of, of colors or brush strokes, yeah, I always try to oh, feel like, how would this look underwater? Uh, it, out of, it just happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because I don't know, I, water is pretty, <laughs> of course. I've always liked it. Uh, as a child, uh, that was like my main thing to draw, just doodle splashes of water. So I'm between that and just fantastic motifs um, all over the place. That's like maybe my most uh, recognizable aesthetic inspiration. I think it's hard to tell, and I think it may change uh, in the near future. That's really cool, though. I like that idea of, like, how does it look underwater? Really cool. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, no, it's not the last question. The second to last question, though, is how much do you usually practice your art? Um, so, for my part, uh, with school and everything, I at least practice art like seven hours a week. Sometimes it can go like to nine hours if I have a project. I think the worst I've ever done was like 19 hours for like very short end of a project when I had to like wake up at 9 a.m. and just go to sleep at 4 a.m. and I had worked the entirety of that time. Oh my god. It was yeah, it, it was something, but I was really proud of what I did in the end, so I, I think it was deserved. But yeah, obviously, while I have my breaks on weekends, I don't always work like that because, Jesus Christ, it would be impossible. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So you, yeah, you just quite get, like, lot. practice from school? Sorry, what? So you just get, like, practice from school? Mostly, yeah, and then I just have my like doodles on the side if ever I feel like doing something else. Mm -hmm. Usually to just get out of the just work headspace. Yeah, that yep. makes sense. Is this is this for school, by the way? I'm I'm wondering because I know Corey. Um, you go to school with Corey, right? <laughs> yeah. And I know Corey did like Dream SMP, like <laughs> fan art. For we school. did. Well, actually, uh, well. Let me just get it. Uh, I had like a similar project for school. Mm -hmm. Though this is like uh, an art base on this. Wait, you can see it here. Uh, I think I have it here. Show this later. Wow. Um, <laughs> it was for this one. So this was the same subject as I got from, uh, as Corey got, which, that, which were that we had that 3D base that we had to respect and do something around it and so uh i did my project more like fan art more than anything and it's actually more enjoyable than just doing the work that you are asked when you don't have big expectation when you aren't actually working for a client at least having fun with what you're doing is so important mm -hmm. so yeah that was one of the projects that i did for like school and because I had so much fun with it, I actually did, well, the one I'm working on right now. Mm -hmm. And I had the same thing. I had oh, a 3D base cool. behind it because I wanted to at least try and replicate the technique that were, that, ha that I had learned. So... Oh, you're lagging again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> very... Um, so... Just as I was saying, uh, I had a very small 3D base under all of this, mm -hmm. and but it's not for school. This one is actually just for myself and my own enjoyment. Aww. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, very impressive. Uh, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Chris, how long do you, or how much do you practice your art? Um, so I think I'm a little bit... I would call myself a, a little bit of a loser, actually, that what? wakes up eats, draws, and then sleeps, and does pretty much nothing else. Um, so... I'm sorry, this is a very good lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just make one of those so... t-shirts. Eat, sleep, <laughs> draw, repeat. It's, it's funny, um, because uh, literally uh, this morning I woke up and um, my hand was hurting from last night because I pushed myself a little bit too hard working on a project, and so I was like, okay, I need to like not move so I can 
function for the stream later today. <laughs> um, so thankfully it, it faded by the time uh, the stream came around. But um, because, so I'm going to school for, for animation um, but I also, because of the situation that I'm in, um, financial aid, um, is able to pay my bills and I don't have to go to work. So I am very blessed with being able to draw pretty much like six to eight hours a day if I can mm -hmm. <laughs> and like able to do that. And I, I often say that, like I tell my friends, um, that I'm just trying to like take advantage of the time that I have, because I know that like when I actually get into the industry or when I start, you know, doing work, um, I'm not going to have eight hours a day to spend on personal projects. Right. And, you know, I only have this kind of opportunity, uh, for so long. And so I'm going to do my best to take advantage of it and like really push myself and push my art um, during then, which is why I, you know, start so many projects and I try to do so many things. And I try not to let it like, you know, be too overbearing because, right, that's that's unhealthy. Um, but uh, I've definitely gotten to points where it's like, OK, I, I need to I need to relax a little bit. I need to take a little bit of a break, but I definitely um am drawing um a lot so yeah that's what i would say <laughs> uh, sorry you had to restrict yourself then <laughs> <laughs> no, Today. it's okay it's okay i was like well because i was working on this i started working on a, a a pretty big animation project um and i was working on it like late last night and it was like 3 a.m and i was like crap i have i have the mickey thing tomorrow oh, oh my god so but it's 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 fine I'm, I'm i'm feeling much better today so i'm not too worried about it um but uh but it is definitely like there'll be times where i'm like laying in my bed and i'm like man i i could be drawing right now if my body just wasn't mortal and i could release myself from this the the shackles that hold me back you know <laughs> <laughs> wow that's impressive <laughs> the only the only thing that holds me back is is this is mortal your, coil. Is your own mortality <laughs> <laughs> exactly 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 uh, i wish there was more time in the day well, i um, saw someone in chat earlier saying that's called grind set you are on that yeah, grind yeah. i am i am on i am on the grind constantly wow. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Twig, how long? Uh, yeah, how much and how long do you practice? Uh, yeah. So I draw like every day, like a lot. Um, because I graduated a semester early from high school, so I'm like basically doing nothing else right now. Like I have work, but I don't work that much. So this is like the only thing I have to do. So it's like all I do. Like, um. For example, today I woke up and I was like, oh, I need something to work on for Nikki's stream. So I started this and then started I started today? another drawing. So I had multiple, so I had multiple options and then I'm drawing right now and I'll stream after this. So I'll be drawing that. And then after that, I have to work on commissions. So it's basically the only thing I do, um, Besides, like, taking small breaks, like, while I'm drawing, I'll just, like, take a break and look at my phone. Um because I could, there's only so long I can stare at a drawing before I go insane. Mm. So I do take like small breaks, but it's like, I, I draw a lot. So like most of the day I'm drawing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh my god! I remember. I feel. I think. I feel like last year it was like some people were like, "Oh yeah, I draw every day," and then some people were like, "I draw like once a year." <laughs> you guys yeah. just draw every day, all the time. That's crazy. No. I mean, it used to be like when I was in, uh, when I was like still in school and I was like working a bit more, and I had like I like play soccer, so I had like that. I was drawing. I was still trying to like draw every day, but it wasn't like nearly as much. And with like commissions, I, I kind of like have to draw every day to keep up with it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll give myself like little breaks. I'll like go on walks and I'll watch stuff without drawing. I usually watch stuff while I'm drawing too, because I'm like really, I'm a really fidgety person. So if I'm like watching something, I want something to do with my hands. So I'll just start drawing still. <laughs> so I'm just kind of always doing it, but. Wow. That's cool. That's impressive. I'm very impressed by you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Rebecca? 
How how much do you draw? Well, I think we've established by now that we're all losers <laughs> because I also draw <laughs> all day. What an amazing team! <laughs> yeah, very impressive. I to be honestly. offended, but <laughs> but now it's just true. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I I draw every day. Uh, in fact, I, last year I was like, I draw too much. Maybe I should change it this year because I don't really go out that that much. But then, um, well, the thing is, after I finished high school, I wanted to go to animation school here in Mexico. But it's really expensive <laughs> and there aren't like a lot of options. So I was pretty bummed out about that because... I, I, I really wanted to like hang out with other artists and stuff and most importantly because I've always liked art I've always been um, self-taught kind of but it's really like um, sometimes it gives you anxiety that the things that you're learning through the internet or through books uh, are not good enough because you don't have a teacher like personally telling you if you're doing right or not you're just following instructions mm -hmm. So at first there was like a six month period where, period, <laughs> period where I didn't draw anything at all because I was too scared uh, of trying keep learning by myself because I thought that I, was, I, I wasn't going to be like rigid enough that I needed personal advice. But then uh, I was really lucky <laughs> to have, uh, well I am really lucky to have like a family that always, um, you know, like inspires me and pushes me to try to be the best part of myself. So my mom really said, you should make an Instagram account and, and, and upload your drawings. And I did. <laughs> and like two months after that, I started to get a lot of work from uh, people that uh, knew me personally or a friend of a friend. And after that, I started to have enough confidence to like submit my art to, or, well, my portfolio to job offerings or just small commission offerings and stuff like that. Also reanimated collaborations. And yeah, so <laughs> without me noticing, I was like doing this for a full-time job. I am also really lucky uh, to live with my parents, so I don't have to take care of bills and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I am basically like taking care of myself <laughs> with my art. So right now I'm just I just draw all the time. <laughs> like and and now uh, I was able to afford some um, um, how do you call them? Like some classes. Mm -hmm. I think they're yeah some animation classes uh, and they leave a lot of homework so now I have to <laughs> uh, so yeah like, I was more. drawing all day before <laughs> but now I also have to do homework and uh, and it's for animation which is like 24 drawings a second so yeah, <laughs> I draw all the time and my uh, my arm also hurts pretty bad which oh. is why I always wear like uh, like protection around my elbow and my, my wrist I also go play basketball with my dad in the morning, which is very recommended because you have to move your arms a lot. It really helps. I can imagine, so, yeah, because yeah, you constantly like... I heard that a lot of like, especially animators have like very bad wrist pain. So I feel like make, doing like different like exercises or different movements can... Yeah, can help. yeah, because every now and then you're like, you wake up and it's like, okay, this is the day I get carpal tunnel and, and it's gonna be over for me. <laughs> oh, <no>. Yeah. <laughs> That's really oh uh, god guys i've i'm impressed i don't think i could do anything every day all the time <laughs> i should i should really like take some inspiration from you <laughs> <laughs> no don't do it <laughs> it's oh, no, we're all just cool. insane it's fun <laughs> yeah, <honestly. Yeah>, yeah. <laughs> <Aww. laughs> I like I'm flattered, but a, please don't. I think this is more of a warning to to not repeat. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> don't uh, stay the situation you don't end up like don't us. Be like don't us. Try it. <laughs> yeah, we tried to make it sound as unappealing as possible. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm in a lot of pain. I don't sleep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I barely see the light of day. Oh my god. <laughs> what are I people been outside in weeks? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like, all it's all worth it, Nia. Though. It's yeah, not worth I it mean, in the end. yeah, it is. It really is. I, I wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't worth it, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> I think none of us would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's very impressive, if anything. Um, wait, let me quickly adjust my. There we go. Okay, last question for the Ooh. round <laughs> is, 
uh what would you tell people who are just starting with art because i feel like i have a lot of a, a lot of people who watch the artist streams are like oh i want to get into art but i don't know what to do or like oh i just started like do you guys have any Next recommendations i want to get into art now <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, are you guys sure about that <laughs> I mean, we can try and give some advice but <laughs> <laughs> um what i would say i think i have some advice uh first of all don't be afraid to use references they are so important like just uh, my polar bear disappeared just for the polar bear when i was drawing right now uh i was kind of drawing it like on a whim i didn't actually know what i was drawing and my first reflex was to go and search for like references on google or anything and there we go i have some guidelines at least i know what i'm uh, what i'm drawing mm -hmm. so references are super important they're not cheating, they're just really understanding what you're drawing. Um, I think, yeah, understanding what you're drawing is so important because like, even when I draw uh, a human body, it's very difficult to draw it without any references. And one way of just leveling up as an artist is to understand how the muscles work, how the bones are working like together. Okay, uh, <laughs> like for the arm, for example, you know that uh, I'm just going to do the up arm pretty quickly. Uh, I would say something like this. Yeah, so here we have the basic shape of an arm. But the way I know how to draw it on a whim, and it is not perfect, but it is enough for the <laughs> for the, my example. Um, I know that the deltoid comes this way. So I will know that there's this line specially drawn here. I know that there's a tricep here. I know that there's the bicep here that make uh, a bump here and the tricep here. I'm just going to do four, do three. But just by knowing this, I can draw that arm in like any position I want because I know that this part will rotate here, this part will rotate here if I ever want to just rotate the arm. So it's super important to just understand what you're drawing. And I think basically just enjoy what you're doing. Like this one, for example, is a passion project for me. I don't work on it all the time, but it just feels super nice to work on it. And it's one of those projects that just makes me understand that oh, I you, really Anna. enjoy doing oh, art, no matter what I do. Um, so really just enjoy yourself and go get references for things that you like wouldn't have thought about. Like, I have a project on a story which was happening in Africa and never would I have I imagined that Africa had such patterns and such culture that could inspire my art. And it was really such a cool project because I had to get out of my comfort zone. I had to just search for references and like their costumes are amazing. Wow. Um, so yeah, uh, don't be afraid to use references, understand what you're drawing and love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I think that would be it. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, <laughs> next one, Chris, what would you tell new artists? Yeah, um, so my kind of main advice for, for new artists, um, kind of like, um, uh, what, Avin, um, Avin, Avin, sorry, Avian, yeah. <laughs> Avian, Avian, um, was saying was my main thing would be, um, you really want to find that passion, um, for what you're doing whatever you're you're drawing whatever you know you want to create you want to find that passion for it because that's like the thing that is going to be your rock while you go through like the fundamentals and all the learning stuff because a lot of a lot of advice that you'll see when you're starting out is like okay you need to learn the th fundamentals you need to learn anatomy and perspective and this and that and it's like okay well first of all before that you have to establish 
like why you want to and why like your love for it because if you don't do that going through and trying to draw like a hundred boxes to learn perspective you're gonna get bored and you're gonna not want to do it anymore you know what i mean you're just like why am i doing this blah 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 you want to find that that passion and then if you can find ways to practice the fundamentals and find ways to practice those essential skills by still implementing that like love or whatever you want to do so that's why i mean that's why fan art i think is so popular is because people will do stuff that is a part of like an established um media that they like and like if you want to do like practice perspective it's like okay well if you're let's say a, a fan of the dream smp um pick one of the environments or pick one of the scenes you know if you want to pick um the 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 room where where wilbur blows up lemanberg right like that that room with the button mm -hmm. put that into like make a grid make like a two-point perspective grid and practice drawing that and practice you know look at screenshots practice that based off that reference but do something that you're going to enjoy doing right find whatever passion it is because at the end of the day um art is about passion if you're not loving what you're doing and you're just doing it because you feel like you need to get good at art or you really want to but you don't like have a reason it's gonna fade really quickly you know what i mean and it's it's you're not going to be able to stick with it and you're going to feel burnt out um so i think that would be my main recommendation is find the thing you love and draw it a ton you know what i mean mm -hmm. that's what i was yeah that makes sense and sounds good i just want to quickly say chat i am reading you and i am listening to you i just want to hear out the artist so in, in case anyone's wondering like oh why is he not replying to us i just want to hear out the artist but I see you guys, just so you know. <laughs> I've seen a few people be like, do you even read chat? Yes, I am reading. <laughs> oh, anyways, um, Chris, do you have anything else or was that it? I'm sorry if I interrupted you. Um, I think, no, you're good, you're good. I think that's it. Um, I guess, oh, I do have one other thing. Um, if you decide to post your stuff online, um, and I could go into detail about this for a very long time, but I won't, I won't take up too much time. If you decide to post your stuff online, you need to not place your own value with how much engagement your art gets, because yes. that Super. will suck you Super important. and eat you alive. Yes. Oh my gosh. If you, if you're like, there's uh, like, the, there's a term in the community or the art community that's pretty popular and it's called um, flop or like flopping. And I hate it. I have it muted. And it's essentially what it means is you post a piece of art and it doesn't get the amount of engagement that you expect it to. Um, and you consider it being like a flopped piece. Like it didn't do as well as you want it. And I hate the term because it's like perpetuating this idea that you're you're connecting the way that you value your art and you value you yourself that. to how much attention it gets on social media. And that is so bad for you. It's mm. so bad for you because you, you should not be doing that um, because it will just absolutely like destroy your love for it because there's always going to be days where your art just won't get attention like the the tw twitter if you're post on twitter twitter is what i know most but twitter algorithm is so like inconsistent and you never really know and you know some things just might not pop up on people's timeline and it's like you can't put your value in that so i i i tell any any artists if you decide to post start posting stuff online it's like don't worry about it just post what you like and don't look at the numbers do your best to because it's, we can't help it but do your best to not look at numbers because it will eat you alive so yeah <laughs> that's mm. my other recommendation that's a really good point i think with every yeah. like with art and with like anything social media related yeah definitely yeah. yeah yeah it can it can get really toxic the moment you start like questioning you know and and putting any if you put any value in into numbers that are fa fake 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 you know hearts popping up on your little social media thing it's like you, you need to you need to take a break you need to take a break and you need to move away uh and reevaluate your your mindset um because it's very easy to fall into you know yeah yeah just to like add on to that um really quick um i think it's like it's like okay to be upset that like you're not doing that well yeah, on yeah, social yeah. media but i think what you need to do is like because after you finish your piece, you'll like 
have thoughts about it, you'll be like, okay, I'm proud of this, or like, maybe I could have done this better. I just like, don't let that change after you post it is what you have to do. So like, if you like a piece a lot and then you post it and it doesn't do well, don't be like, well, maybe, maybe it was actually bad and I suck at art and that was a terrible piece. Cause like, it has nothing to do with the quality. Like 90% of the time it's like, I'll, some of my like best pieces didn't do well. And I still like them the same that I liked them before. It's just like, oh, that didn't do well. That's kind of disappointing that it didn't do well, but like the art is still good. Cause like one of the most upsetting things like as an artist is like seeing your art like improve and seeing that improvement in your art and then like watching the numbers go down. Like it sucks, but it has nothing to do with the quality of your art. It's just like algorithms are weird, engagement's weird. And it, that's just like, that's happened. It happens. So don't yeah, let that destroy exactly. your passion for doing art. It sucks, but it is how it works. But um, to answer the actual question of my advice for um, artists that are starting out, I, I'm i like, I struggle with this question because I get this like question all the time and I can never think of like a good solid answer. I think that's just because like, I've been doing art for so long and it's been so long since I've considered myself like starting out. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know, but I can, I can never think of like a good solid answer. And I think that's mostly because there's not like a set thing that you do and then you're good at art. Like it's going to be different for everyone. It's going to be different like what you're good at and what you pick up quicker than other things. It's, it's like, it's not a universal thing. It's different. But um, one thing is I would recommend finding art that you like because um, that's like a lot of being an artist is looking at other people's art. So find artists that you like and then look at their art and consider like what exactly you like about it and then try to imitate that in your own art. And I think that'll really help people to like find their own identity with their art, find their style, which don't feel like limited to one style, but still like finding a style is good. And um, so I think there's like a big stigma around, uh, tracing, which is like, don't post traced art, but like tracing isn't like a bad thing to do it's to like so figure funny. out. It, it helps a lot, actually. Like mm. my begin, my early days of being a digital artist was literally like finding pictures of people and tracing over them. And I think that has actually like helped me so much in just like understanding facial anatomy because you get that muscle memory from um, from tracing over it, and you start to understand the stuff better the more you draw it, even if you are tracing. Don't rely on tracing, but it can help. So mm. that's. That's my advice is like find stuff that you like try to incorporate it with your own stuff and tracing isn't always bad that's fair that's yeah. it. <laughs> um rebecca do you have any advice for new art um well uh first of all i agree with absolutely everything everyone has said because yeah <laughs> those are just really important things and people don't tell them enough especially about the tracing and because it, yeah you, you need to um you know uh, are being able to um get better at art is like a collaborative effort between your hands and your eyes you can't just look at a picture and says oh this is what works for me your brain will remember most of the time your hands need to remember too uh, especially if you're like um, learning special shapes or composition you need to know and feel what it uh, it feels like to to draw that kind of style so so yeah definitely trace <laughs> i mean don't only trace but it's not a bad thing to do and it, it it actually can help yeah the problem is is like when you post that art and you're like this yeah, is exactly. my original art but you like post exactly. it someone else's don't do that <laughs> yeah be careful with that i feel it's kind of like um I don't know, when people post pictures of themselves with filters, but they don't tell you it's a filter, so then you <laughs> yeah, think right. like, oh, it's normal to right. look like this? And no, 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 it's not. It's okay if you admit it, there's no problem, you can do whatever you want, but just, yeah, do make sure that if you're going to trace or use a reference, especially if you're going to use like a really specific pose, credit uh, the, per the people who made the reference or the original art. Well, uh, <laughs> another really important thing, I think, is... Um, learn about your culture through art 
Because, um... Well, the thing is, a lot of the way we learn art nowadays is based on, um... Eurocentric perceptions of how art should be, which is not a bad thing. It's actually really amazing, <laughs> and and we have uh, like humanity has made some beautiful, extraordinary pieces through that knowledge. But you also need to keep in mind that a lot of the way we learn art, uh, even in you know modern industries like animation and that, is based on these very. Um, uh, yeah, specific idea the way uh, art is made through a figurative lens. I don't know if I <laughs> if I made sense, but thing is now uh, me being Mexican, uh, you no, know, you get to appreciate, you get to see that a lot of people appreciate. Uh, I don't know, Van Gogh, Da Vinci, um, and they are mm -hmm. they are amazing. You need to learn from them. Do you also need to take the time, especially if you are from a, a, a smaller country in the world? That there are people like you, whose art you've probably seen and has influenced you in your day-to-day -day -day life. Mm -hmm. but you don't get to learn to know uh, about them because they don't, uh, they didn't transcend as much as other artists in history did. So, uh, for I, I think I need to make myself clear. But for example, these uh, I don't know if I can show these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can see them. Well, yeah, <laughs> these are pieces that I made to celebrate uh, okay. Mexico's Independence Day. Uh, two years ago, I think I made them. And they are all based on really um, specific uh, arts in different parts of Mexico. So, for example, this little cup right here is inspired in a type of art that's called Talavera. She's from a part of Mexico called Puebla. <laughs> um, this, for example, is um, some canastas de palma, which is usually used for bread, pan dulce, and tortillas, and stuff like that. And this is from barro, pintado, which is for cafe, and uh, I don't know, uh, things that I've always known and I always consume and interact with in my day-to-day -day life, but you never stop and ask yourself where do these, like, for example, these flowery patterns come from, and why haven't I learned from them? Uh, same as this, for example, Talavera actually has like a really cute story of the way uh, Mexicans try to cope with, uh, like, for example, their heritage and stuff. So what I'm trying to say is that art can be really good. You, you need to encounter a good balance between your techniques, but also the soul of your art. And a really good place to find the soul of your art is in your culture and in the artists, you know, in history. Because a lot of the time that's really hard to um, like express, you know? Yes, I'm good at drawing horns and arms, and I'm really good at composition. But if you feel like you're not being fulfilled, and if your true self is not uh, transpiring through your art, even if it's a commission, even if it's just a small project, if it's not you, then it's going to like feel really lonely because your art is your safe space, and you need to make sure that it represents who you are and where you come from. So yeah, study <laughs> is basically what I uh, what I would recommend. You know, listen to other people and other artists. Wow, yeah, that's an incredible message. I know, <laughs> I'm so <laughs> <impressed. Love it>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Wow. Um, okay, I think those are all the questions I have for you. Um, is there anything that you maybe want to ask each other first? Uh, I think I'm gonna ask it in the Discord afterwards. But do you have art stations? Because I want to see more of your all of your art. <laughs> all so I, good. I don't have art station, but I do. I do have Twitter. Um, and it's just my, my yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love you too. Yeah, I mostly use Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And Instagram. I also post on Instagram, but that's I, I, I use Instagram really. a lot more than Twitter. Art station scares me. I feel like everyone's so professional there. Oh yeah, same. same. <laughs> it's a scary <laughs> place, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so like it's literally dark. So you go in there and think, oh my god. Hey, um, oh. Twig. I'm kind of curious because I, yeah. I'm. You use Procreate, right? Yeah, I do. Um, I, I had a, a friend DM me over Discord asking me to ask you what your um what brushes you use. 
Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I get I that question did. so much. <laughs> yeah, I, would, um, I would guess so, yeah. I, I, I'm happy to talk about it. 6P Pencil is the main one I use. Yes. I have said it so many times, and I'll say it again now. 6P Pencil is by far the best brush on Procreate. I love it so much. It's like 90% of my art process is 6P Pencil. <laughs> so definitely highly recommend that if you use Procreate, 6P Pencil is great. Um, and then I also use Plimsoll, which I uh, altered slightly to make like the texture bigger so you can see it more. And then I use Spectra to like lay down colors. Um, and that, those are the default ones I use that are on Procreate. But yeah, 6P Pencil, it's great. Use it. Gotcha. Yeah, I am. Um, I started using Procreate recently, and I've mm -hmm. I've also leaned into Six P Pencil. It's just yeah, I no like good. every time I see like other Procreate artists like list their favorite like default brushes, Six P is always there, and yeah. rightfully so. It's a great brush. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I do have a question. Uh, so, if you draw on, on iPad, do you like use a special? Um... Will you say like cover for the screen or a special um, like glow? Yeah, I, I don't. I know a lot of people do. Um, yeah, I know people have like screen coverings that make it seem more like paper. I thought of getting one for a little while, um, but I'm really used to it at this point, so I don't. Uh, it doesn't really make much of a difference for me. I've also heard that if you have a screen protector, it wears off like the 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 tip of the apple pencil a lot quicker and then you have to like replace it more i've like i've had apple pencils for a while i've never had to replace a tip and i don't use a screen protector so it's like okay. that's a downfall of them you mm -hmm. i think it's like you'll you'll get used you get used to anything with drawing so i don't think you need yeah. one but a lot of people do use them okay okay i was just curious because i see a lot of people use yeah. different things yeah mm -hmm. Any other questions? Otherwise, we'll move on to the like that like one on one calls. I guess I don't know. <laughs> Sounds good to me. All right. Um, oh, at the end, you are the first hey. person. Then, so chat for the people who are wondering what I'm gonna do now, because I I know there's a few people who haven't seen the other artist streams yet. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call every single one. Uh, every single one of the artists like individually and then you guys can ask them some questions and they can talk about their art more um so if you have any questions you can ask them now i'm gonna go ahead and call you avian um on like your discord like in a, in a private call um okay. and i'll let you guys all know in this chat like how much time left and like everything but if you guys want to stay here or go and get food or whatever um don't worry this usually lasts for like half an hour to an hour um so yeah i will probably see you in a bit sounds good That's thank you Nikki. Clear. yeah thank you guys thank you so oh much. my god <laughs> thank you're you guys. amazing oh my god <laughs> I, i'm very excited this is this is very cool you guys are very cool <laughs> you yeah <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you all in a bit. I'll call you up again. See you soon. Bye. Okay, bye bye. 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 All right. Hello. Hello. Uh, how are you doing? Are you good? I am good. I was. I want to admit I was stressed before, <laughs> but I'm slight the slightly stressed before things, and now I'm just. In a swing of it, so it's it's more okay. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad. I mean, everyone's so lovely. Yeah, they really are. Um, okay. Well, if you want to, uh, we can go into the questions right away. I've seen a few people already ask some questions. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. I've seen some people talk about your shading. They were really interested <gasps> in your shading. Um... I think if you want to share your stream again, then we can see. Oh it. yeah, I forgot about that. Um, like, how do you like? Do you have any tips on your shading? How did you like learn shading? I mean, you work with references a lot, you said, but like. Yeah, a lot of like references. That. Um, <clears throat> as for shading, um, I'm trying to think of my process, because well, 
a little before. I have a few problems with colors. It has gotten really better with like teachers helping me and stuff. Um, first, I would say limit yourself to a palette of colors. Uh, usually we go around three colors, not really more because otherwise it's just too much information on one image. So we usually try to avoid that. Um, otherwise for shading, I would say just for the base color, do whatever you want. Honestly, just go crazy. Just don't go on too many colors, but do whatever you want. You don't really have to search like for which color goes well, which what. Uh, afterwards, well, do you, oh, I don't have my base color on this because I drew on the same layers oh, every did you? time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Wait, I think I have like an old version of it somewhere around here. Uh, so yeah, just do whatever you want. And then the second thing that is really important to understand about colors is every colors, every color interact uh, with each other. Yeah, I have my, an old one. Who are you? Your hair. Oh, Go upward, please. Boop. There we go. So you can see, like, for example, between this image, which is the more ancient progress that I have of this piece, between this image and this image, the colors are way less harmonized between each other. And that's mainly because I'm just not trying to harmonize this color with this one. So Basically, what I'm gonna do in the end is just go over the whole drawing and just put a shade of this blue over this one. And it's gonna magically just <laughs> do this color. Mm. Honestly, it's kind of just wandering around the canvas and doing a lot of stuff. One of the advantages of digital is that you can do whatever you want. You have as many control Z as you want. Most of the time you have to be careful with that too. Um, another really good advice I got from one of my teacher. Uh, I don't know if I still have that one. Uh, well, I'm just gonna overdo this one. It would be um, to know what your point of interest is. So... Oh no! For it's lagging again, I'm so sorry. I'm full. We'll wait until it catches itself. Oh, oh there you are. You're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nice. Uh, you were talking it's about right. the point of interest. That's yeah, it, so no worries. point of interest is. So this one here is for the houses. So one of the, a very good advice that I got from one of my teacher is that your point of interest would usually be warmer than everything else. And it's kind of magical because... Oh my god, I can do it on this. It's kind of magical because if I want to like redirect uh, your eyes towards the house, all I have to do is take like a cooler color, so usually a blue or more like purplish blue, mm -hmm. to just a general shape like this. And I don't remember which one it is. I think it's this one. There you go. Now, the only thing that you see is the house. You don't oh, care wow. anymore about the trees. You don't care anymore about like the other beacon that is really bright. You only see the houses. And then there is the color judge that is like the most <laughs> cheap thing I think there is. Put color dodge on something and right. it becomes bright. <laughs> it's kind of cheating, but... Um, one of my teachers told me that art is about cheating and about making believe what you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. So that would be it. As for the shading, um, I would say just understand the 3D spaces of it. So for this piece, as I said before, I use the 3D base on it. But basically, if you know that like your light is coming from here, mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna just illuminate here, and here, and like just, well, I can't show it, but around the edges, that gives so much depth to your drawing. Like you can actually understand where this light is, what it's showing. 
um, oh yeah, very important tips for all the artists that are around. Uh, preferably, do not use very soft uh, brushes to, to 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 shade because it's it makes everything just. Oops, that's not the right color. I'm just gonna. Boop. It makes everything just less interesting to see because everything is just a blend of colors. From the moment where you use like a harsher brush, you understand exactly where like the shadow is. And immediately it's gonna become more appealing to the eye. Oh, so preferably that's just don't use uh, like very soft brushes, like with soft edges. It's not good to shade. <laughs> And, but afterwards, after you've done your base color and everything, you can use soft brushes. It's not forbidden. It's just, um, it immediately makes all of the depths of your illustration just pop out. And I love it. That's, I, I never heard that advice, but that's really good advice. That's very interesting. Yeah, same. When I heard it, I was like, oh yeah, I do use soft brushes a bit mm -hmm. too, <laughs> a bit too much. I am, um, by the way, so impressed about the Northern Lights. So cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Save references. Oh my god. Uh, well, wait, I lose. I lost weight. But before, beforehand, my Northern Light looked like this. And it's just not really defined. You have the colors, but it's not just as cool. And when you get the references, it's so pretty. And every time I open this document, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Shiny. <laughs> Wow. I had someone ask about how to find your art style and I think that's a really good segment into like looking at like some of your artworks if you've prepared any. True. I can show you my progression if you want. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Um, finding your art style is really hard, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, even today, I don't know what my art style is. I have a lot of teachers just telling us, uh, find what your thing is and be good at it. And I have no idea what it is. So finding your art style is really hard, but just practicing makes your art better and you get to a zone that you enjoy and that you enjoy practicing. So um, by miracle and also a lot of shame, I managed to find my very first drawing that I did digitally. Oh my god. One, this oh. one. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, honestly, the colors are okay. <laughs> Everything else. I couldn't even just put this on another layer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you draw all of that in one layer? I think I did, because I don't see any other reason why I would keep my color palette up there. <laughs> That's impressive, though. Um, but yeah, so that was my uh, very first drawing digitally. So I think it was about like seven years ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, I kind of already knew uh, not very well, but I had some basis on how to do traditionally. So it was kind of more easy to draw also digitally. But yeah, progression is going to happen. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. You can definitely see that you had some like traditional like experience though especially like in the hair and stuff i feel like yeah having some basis and telling uh digital and traditional is not that different it's just the way you work after your concept mm -hmm. it's just it's just that it's so cool i love i love both i love traditional a lot more i love mm -hmm. it but <laughs> uh, yeah um so that's a drawing that I did like for a cover of a book and I think that's not even the finished version but yeah it was like a long time ago uh, I wanted to make it pretty bright uh, I wanted to do a lot of things in it I was starting to get somewhere but you can clearly see for example that the character is kind of broken mm -hmm. why is there a mouse here I, I have no <laughs> idea I don't remember the book, I just... <laughs> That's really cute though, I like the mouse. <laughs> He's just so 
so contemplative of like stars and oh my god, again, I have to boop. He's seeing the stars and he's happy. <laughs> and then blood. Oh my god. I think there was like uh in the book there must have been something like uh, a dog was murdered and this little guy right here wanted to find out what happened. Quite honest, honestly a good book, but <laughs> yeah. Fair. <laughs> I promise you it was okay. <laughs> um so to continue with the fa with the progression. Mm -hmm. I really don't like this drawing, but <laughs> Thank you, Hello, I think it's important to look stop. back on what you've done and just go with it. And tell yourself that no matter where you started from, you're going to get somewhere if you just put a little time there and a little bit of passion. You can definitely um, already see improvement, though. Definitely. Like, I'm not going to talk about that arm that is broken because <laughs> it's definitely a broken arm. But like, at least for like, the shading, the particle effect. I don't know why the light is white. Uh, usually we don't use white light, we use well, yellow light if, if you're in exterior, prime. because the sun and etc. Mm -hmm. And but basically do not use white light. <laughs> it makes everything just, well, it makes everything ghostly, but I think that's what the vibe I was going True, through. true. It looks like the vibe. <laughs> uh, so yeah, improvement. The colors are slightly better. I do not think I did the background. Or if I did, I don't know why I did it. Just quite okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but improvement, improvement. Mm -hmm. um, this is a drawing that I made for... I think uh, we had a project at school to illustrate a book of poem. Like we had to choose 10 poems from Baudelaire. And I foolishly thought, what if I did all of the illustration, which was a very bad idea. It took me so long, but I was really proud of it in the end. Um, and this was one of it. So um, you can see that the light has gotten better. The texture has gotten better. The character itself has gotten better, even though like those are not the real bones of a human hand, but it gets the job done. Um, so clearly when you look at this, you're like, oh, wow, it's okay. It's all about cheating. <laughs> it yeah um, I, I i get improvement it looks mm -hmm. really cool i think the anatomy also already looks so much better yeah it really does honestly when i look back Very on impressive. this i'm like what i did that when i was like way younger <laughs> i'm but, very um, impressed I'm really proud. yeah i'm really oh it's from 2018 okay i didn't mm. realize i put my, my watermark there <laughs> Um, mm. I think this was the drawing that oh I, God. the first real drawing where I actually put time into it. Uh, I really wanted to do something that I would be proud of. Uh, so it has a bit of background, it has light, it had texture on the scales of the tail. Uh, I was really proud of this one, honestly. <laughs> one second, uh, I just got a message from oh. Rihanna. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, no, wow. <laughs> thank you. Very and I see nice. chat there is like, yeah, also, chat's wow. like, oh thank my god. You, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Again, the anatomy, like, the how quickly you would like improve your anatomy is so impressive. I guess that comes yeah. from references, right? Like, uh, learning how to draw with them. This one has a bit less of references, I think, though, has. There probably has been like a lot of drawing between the like all of the drawings that I showed. But at some point I told myself I want to do something that is anatomy correct. So you can see the beginning of the deltoid of the muscle that I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. It's not perfect, but it's the practice that makes it more realistic. And that's what I just try and go toward whenever I'm trying to improve. Mm -hmm. Have you um, one question? I don't know if I saw it in chat or if it just popped up mm -hmm. in my brain, honestly. Um, but have you drawn in like different art programs or have you always used Photoshop when you drew digitally? Uh, I've used like the one month trial of uh, Paint to Sale, I think. It was mm. a really cool program, but I never continue with it. I sometimes, 
I think this one was uh, on Clip Paint Studio. Mm -hmm. But since the school is... Well, well, we have a pack at school that allows us to have like a lot of different softwares. So I'm using Photoshop mainly because it's what I have to use for school. Mm -hmm. But it's not... Uh, from a software to another, it's not that different. The basics are usually always the same. It's usually the brushes that change, which can be a little bit... Um, uh, Confusing. Surprising, yeah. <laughs> because you, you kind of lost your train to use a, a brush that you all have always been used. <laughs> yeah, that Curry, makes sense. Curry, it's not free. We pay like 100 euros for it. <laughs> Is it um, just all Adobe things, or is it just like different art art things? Uh, um, we have a lot of Adobe. We lot of we have a lot of three D uh, programs. Uh, I, see. I do a lot of that too. Uh, we have quite a lot of softwares, uh, but yeah, the, the 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 Photoshop one is really really practical. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that that totally makes sense. Yeah. Cause, cause I would, draw, I haven't drawn in ages, but when I drew, <laughs> I would draw in Photoshop. Cause that's I, I already had that. It would be convenient. So I was just wondering if you had like any other programs you used before. True. I would recommend Paint to Sale. Uh, no, sorry. I would recommend Clip Studio Art uh, mm, because I see many people use that. Yeah, it's a very good software. It's really impressive what they managed to do. And like one of the s most simple ad uh, advantages of it is that you only have to pay for it once. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand what Photoshop doesn't understand with that. We want something, we just have to pay once, please. I know. <laughs> but yeah, Clip Studio Paint is a very good uh, software if you want to... Uh, to start drawing more seriously and if you want something that is free you can use Krita it is a free software and uh, and honestly it's also really good it's not as powerful as other softwares but it really gets the work done mm -hmm. I see you. Uh, there you go chat yeah. <laughs> I'm just doing a conference here on softwares <laughs> <laughs> um this one uh, is kind of interesting because it's uh, the first drawing digitally that I did when I went to actual game art school. Uh, just for those who don't know, uh, game art is like basically everything that is related to art in video games. So if you see something that is pretty, if you see a character, if you see a house, an environment, it's basically what I'm supposed to do. We don't code much, but uh, we do. We make everything pretty. <laughs> and this one is interesting because I really don't like it. Uh, <sighs> every time I look back on it, I'm like, the color, the colors are just. I I really don't like it. Mm. But it was a character that I had to do for school, which uh, had to be like really clumsy, really dirty, and um, it. Again, it gets the work, uh, the job done, but what I wanted to share with it is that you don't always progress. It's not just a curve going up. There are going to be moments where you draw something and it's just not as good as you want. Um, but it really doesn't have to stop you. You are always going to progress and that is super important to retain because afterwards I can tell you the the characters I did were a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> I I do what I realized is I I, I do see what, what you mean with like colors that you like mm. you know because these I feel like these colors are very like similar nothing yeah. really stands out except the shoes for me it's like for some reason <laughs> it draws me to the shoes <laughs> the only thing you see is the shoes that are slightly more saturated than everything yeah. else yeah, yeah. Oh but I, guess, I guess that's part of the journey exactly it never stops but sometimes you know you have to rest and just uh think of what you're doing mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, but as I was saying, the characters got slightly better than wow. the colors do. <laughs> uh, this was for another school project. Uh, I have a lot of school projects, honestly. <laughs> um, where I had to draw like uh, a Chinese sorcerer that was uh, half fox. 
Mm -hmm. And this was a character that was just was vicious. And when I presented it to class, I was I was just saying, this character, what makes her laugh is just seeing your house burn. And this is basically when I oh what I God. went with for her. <laughs> she's just mean. She doesn't care about anything. She's not grey. She's just black. She's just. <laughs> so I had a lot of fun just drawing her. And yeah, so. From there on, I had a really good professor that just was really inspiring and it really helped me uh, going forward. So, oh, there's another one. Uh, I think I'm almost done with them, but th yeah, oh that's, that's a, yeah, that's the thing that I did uh, like at the end of the year. Uh, when I was telling you that I did a project on Africa, this was part of it. Mm -hmm. And really, that the colors, the texture, everything is so it. interesting in just researching another another culture, mm -hmm. and it really gets you out of your comfort zone. It really gets you to create something else, um, and it's just really good in general because it means that you aren't stuck. It means that you are trying new stuff, and that is amazing. <laughs> wow! Very and impressive. <laughs> Thank you. I really like this one. <laughs> and the last one I did was actually a fan out of Awesome Dude. That was still oh a school God. project. <laughs> I do so much fun out of school project and always try to say, yeah, you see, this is a character that was inspired like from the Sphinx and from Centaurs. <laughs> Without trying to say, mm -hmm, it's a generally yeah, just it's a, a guy who, likes from... who plays minecraft <laughs> exactly you know <laughs> that is just so trying cool, to put up though. a face yeah we had to focus like on the uh special effects especially at the front mm -hmm. um and i was really glad to to work on this one but yeah you can see that from like this drawing i'm just gonna whoop, take all the art one I feel like From, for I feel yeah. like fan art is like when you when you have like stuff like school and stuff it can be really inspiring, you know. True, it really is. And what the teacher doesn't know, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, if you can pass, I have so many fan art put on art station with a like very vague <laughs> description oh of God. this is a character inspired from that, and just because I have to sell it to tell it actually uh i'm like yeah inspired by the event of the role-playing game of dream smp and i'm like please don't search it up it's minecraft <laughs> that's so funny it's, i mean if time, anything i feel fun. like it's even more impressive because you are inspired by a block game and you do this True. you know that's what but you like, do with it minecraft is just the best thing that has ever happened to <laughs> anything i think because Basically, it's just blocks, but you can do so much out of it. Like, uh, maybe like the concept that I was doing earlier, or this character design. There is just so much to take from from just video games and from Minecraft in general. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine. Very impressive. Anyways, yeah. what did you want to say? I completely interrupted just, you. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Interrupt me as many times as you want. I I will go on tangents and just speak um four hours <laughs> that's, that's all good that's not fine some. so yeah chat if you're afraid of never just um progressing just know that i started from this <laughs> and went to this <laughs> so <Wow>. it's possible <laughs> i swear <laughs> less than three thank you being back yeah so that's for the progression <laughs> wow all right chat now that we have seen some of the art what are your questions? What questions do you have about Avian or questions about their art? Let us know. I saw someone who was like, what art style is that? Uh, mm. I don't think it has a definitive name or anything. It's just semi-realistic because it has like kind of realistic prop proportion, but it's not supposed to be realistic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the That's, yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. Um. Ooh, does it annoy you how long it takes to do some art pieces, or do you just find it more re relaxing that it takes so much? Um, I think it depends on the art piece. 
uh, because there have been some RPs uh, with which I just spent hours and hours on it and felt like I was going nowhere and it wasn't just it was just not satisfying to draw them until the end where I actually just got to actually enjoy it uh, so for very big art pieces I would say generally that I don't enjoy that much how long it takes but the, you get at some point that's the reason why I actually keep so many save of my art like uh, for this one that I was showing I have like five other saves for this one but uh, the reason I keep my save is because it's because I want to go back on what I already did to show actually what uh, to, to to see by myself how far I progressed to tell myself okay this is fine I'm progressing it's not bad but mm -hmm. for smaller pieces it's it's kind of easier because you get something done in like a few hours that's a bit relieving <laughs> yeah that makes sense I think that's the thing, like, I, I saw a lot of people when you guys were talking about how much you draw, like, daily and everything, people being like, I don't think I could, like, have that much attention for that long, mm. like, I don't think I could hold my attention Ooh, for that long. Months. Yeah, and honestly, yeah. <laughs> I spend a lot of time on my, on my phone. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that procrastination <laughs> is a very big thing about it, too. <laughs> oh, someone asked, how do you face art blog? That's always very interesting, especially because you do oh. it in school. <laughs> yeah, um, <clears throat> honestly, I don't. I let it pass. Uh, I have been in like art block for the past months. Uh, that's one of the reasons why this piece is just advancing so slowly. I let it pass and I generally do something else to put my mind on something else. Go watch a movie, read a book. Uh, museums are very good for art block. Um, go take a walk, just talk to a friend, do something that is just completely different from art. And mm -hmm. at some point it will come naturally that you will just find something to draw and you will enjoy it. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that, that use of museums, I feel like that's that's a very smart thing actually. Like yeah, seeing other people's so... art. True. Or even like, I don't know, old artifacts and stuff that would I, th I feel like that's like a very good thing for art blog. definitely like well it's still about references getting references from art that has been made a long time ago is really inspiring you find patterns and colors and stuff that you wouldn't have thought to use and you're like hmm what if i tried this that's cool people are talking about your color palette and asking you um about your color palette and also Corey asked about 3d tips so we'll do the color palette first and then uh, uh Corey's question about 3d tips okay. uh, <laughs> um for the color palettes so i usually struggle quite a bit um one of my most easy answer would be go find a piece of art no uh, go find a photograph actually that's the best answer go find a photograph that you like where you like the colors on it and seal everything seal every color that you can find like usually what we're told to do is um i don't know if i would be able to do it here is to try to find a, a, an image that we like and do do, do where is it don't remember. Nope, that's this one. <laughs> and just pixelate it so you can find like the core colors of these images. Of this image. I don't remember to put it. Nope, I can't find it. But anyway. So okay. yeah, just find an image that you like. And steal the colors. And otherwise, um, if you struggle with harmonizing your colors, uh, I told earlier that like the colors just interact with themselves so this color is always gonna be next to this color and if you want them to be uh, more harmonized together just put a color like well it's very subtle like I I thought that like the contrast between the mountain and the like, the blue mountain and more orangey uh, violet house was too strong. Mm -hmm. So I just put the color orange behind the house uh, with uh, uh, an effect on it. Yep. 
Ah. Yeah, so I put this color behind the house and it just makes your eye transition more easily I from am. the blue to blue the orange. Pigment. And it's a very helpful tip. If you don't know how to, to make the colors just good with themselves, good with all of them, just mm -hmm. put the colors. <laughs> put it together. <laughs> Okay, Corey asked for three D tips, and I feel like Corey Corey knows what what you're gonna say or if you're gonna say uh, something good. So I'm interested. I think it's more of a setup because I don't really like three D. But <laughs> oh no! Oh, <laughs> it's no. I, I I like it. Um, just not as <laughs> Corey. Um, a three D tip. Um. Watch a lot of tutorials. The internet is an amazing source of just learning. Uh, there are so many people on, on the internet giving you like free, uh, free advice, free courses, free tutorials on everything you want to do. It's a bit hard to begin by yourself because you might be like a bit lost with what you want to do. But honestly, you can find everywhere anything you want on the internet. Um, I don't know what to show for this, Cory. What have you done? <laughs> I mean, Wait, I you already not. showed us like how um you had the the little block. Um, yeah, like, I can houses. show you yes, more like that. Yeah, so I had this one like for the uh techno tundra. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's really just blocks together. For more, oh yeah, I can show you that. For a more complicated one. Uh, so this one was a really more complicated base. The other one was just I wanted to have the house kind of correctly placed. Mm -hmm. um, but three D art can really also be used in two D, because like for example, I had this piece to do build for school, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not just a base under it. It's literally all the colors and lights and textures that we had to do on the 3D software and and we will told like do not go too far with it because you're going to draw over it uh -huh. so that's that's what i did but it really gives you a base of what you want to do and and afterwards so yeah when i was talking about putting blue uh, around your center of attention that is exactly what i did here yeah. from this to this you only look at the at the pieces in the middle I am so impressed. Like even the first thing already looks like a done drawing. And you did that in a 3D <laughs> software? Yeah, it was done in a 3D software. I have no idea if I can show that. I don't think it would be very smooth. That's all good. But that's impressive. Yeah. I can show you, I think, some... I'm gonna go on this one. I can show you like some props I did in 3D. Mm -hmm. Because, well, when you're a game artist, uh, even if you don't really like 3D all that much, unfortunately, you have to work on 3D. First of all, because it's a very helpful tip, no matter what I want to do. Uh, and it also just makes for amazing stuff. So I'm just going to drag it up. If you want to, like, that's one of the first projects I did in 3D, which was a very basic one, just blocks. And we were told, do, do, a, sh do a shack that is, like, kind of abandoned. That was very fun, Aww. but uh, it was really cute and stuff. Um, but it can go from this to having well, which one I'm going to say? To having like actual buildings. Um, that which already is very looks like straight out of a video game. <laughs> it was put immediately like in Unity, which is completely a game software. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if you want a really funny detail about game art is... As I told you, I cheat a lot <laughs> in my art. And it's even more funny when you start working on actual technicalities on video games. Because we cheat so much. Like all of this is just those pieces duplicated infinitely like if you mm. ever play in a game like with like a city or something you're just gonna have like three windows that's all and repeated <laughs> all the way around and it is really fun to do we got all the secrets here <laughs> exactly if you want also uh our 
like the sphere are never actually spherical. They're just a bunch of facets. And we tell the software, please do not show any edge so it looks like it's smooth. Mm. <laughs> We're really chilling here. That's really cool. Uh, yeah. As for like props and stuff i did like this sword which was first a 2d concept art and then i had to m well model it on 3d it was really cool to do it was like quite a early project but yeah props are really important too wow. and I have this door incredible door <laughs> no it, that is i find it so cool because obviously as a person that plays video games i just mm. see the finished pro uh, like project or a finished finished thing yeah. so seeing like you being like oh yeah i did this and i'm like i could imagine this in like any mmorpg <laughs> That's, it's True. so cool like now every time i go on thank a video game Pat, i can only see babies. like this, this part of machine. the object and i'm like mm -hmm, yeah analyzing <laughs> the object, analyzing the scenery mm, how is it done <laughs> wow is it it's, are you able to like play video games nowadays without thinking about the art behind it uh yeah i can okay. i had a lot of like people telling me yeah, i cannot do this anymore because i can just see like the mistakes or how it is done mm -hmm. but you get so much enjoyment out of video games i don't think studying will take that away from me i see yeah no i get that uh, by the way hello hello everyone hello techno raid unofficial techno hello. raid welcome we're doing artist streams right now we're here with avian avian yeah. oh god yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always, uh, oh god, oh, I always have to check twice. Not, it's not supposed to be pronounceable uh, any other way than in French, and I don't know why I thought it would be a good idea <laughs> to keep it, but I just got used to it. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Um, yeah. yeah, she's showing us some of her art and talking us through some of her art. Um, do you want to introduce yourself again? Just because like, I feel like there's sure. quite a few people here like who are new now. Absolutely. So, hi everyone. I'm Avian. You can also call me Anna. I'm a 20-year-old gay master student uh, living in France, and I am showing the wonders of working in 3D for video games. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> and talking about wonders, uh, one. So, I don't really enjoy 3D that much. But there's a lot you can do in 3D that isn't just doing a door or doing texture or doing like uh, anything else around it but when you finally get to put all of this in like a game it's really Ooh. just amazing so this is what a project look from afar so with all the object with like you can see the trees that is just one plane yeah. here <laughs> and one plane here and I, this is a project that i had to rush for the exterior because i had a partner who wasn't really working so i had to do a lot of it myself was it cory no 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 oh, cory <laughs> <laughs> cory you're safe for this time <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> it wasn't her. But yeah, but it was still fun to work on and it was a really cool project. But from this angle, it looks okay. It looks kind of cool. We had to do like a diner from the 50s. Mm -hmm. But when you get to actually get inside of it and play inside Ooh. of the own environment that you like literally put to life, it is a really just unique feeling. <laughs> Oh, so, I can yeah. imagine. We had like pretty lights and pretty colors and you can just walk around the place and it was Thank so you, cool. Bingo. <laughs> Do you work with like, because obviously a lot of coding is behind that too, right? So do mm -hmm. you work with people like who code too? Uh, usually uh, we do a lot of like project just inside the game artist section. Mm -hmm. But for example, we had two projects uh, i'm having one currently where we ha actually have to work with other section who are programmers and game designers they're the one who actually do most of the programming i'm doing actually very Three little of it months. most of my job consists in like putting the chairs Three and months, the, the architecture and the lights and just giving that ambience and that wow effect uh, whenever you get into a game, but it's a very like close uh, 
work relationship mm -hmm. because we have to like communicate so much between each other to be sure that everything is correct Hello, there is a lot of organization uh, behind Thank every you. video game because there is so much that just needs to be fine needs to be replaced constantly um, as we don't do all the same job we have to be coordinated uh, but it, at the end it's always just super fun project because there's a lot of people working behind it and you get to experience live uh, the video game that you did and work in, a, in an environment that you could have been working on for like months or weeks and it's really cool but mm -hmm. i don't really do a lot of coding we're we're um pushed to at least try to do some so we can understand it ourselves but uh right now no i'm not doing a lot of it i see you that's that's oh much. i feel like I, I, that sounds so exciting to like you know do your own art then work with like people who put it into the game and then seeing it in the game that's very cool it's by the way really hello tabo raiders unofficial tabo raiders welcome welcome we're doing art <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. That's cool. That looks amazing again, by the way. <laughs> wow. Thank you. I was really proud of this one. Well, as I said, like the my other partner didn't really work a lot, but I had to work a lot on the lights and ambience and colors. And in the end, uh, it's really pretty to look at. Uh, so uh, I told myself, you know what, this is fine. I'm at least very proud of how this project came out in the end. Mm -hmm. You can be, you can be. Hopefully next time Corey works correctly. It's a, it's a... I have <laughs> never worked with Corey. I really? have been all last year with her in class and never worked one project Aww. with her and this year we're not even in the same class so we're probably not gonna work together for Aww, a long time. that's so sad <laughs> it's so sad <laughs> Man, maybe maybe one day you'll work on the same video game that would be cool. who knows maybe but it's always fun to talk with other like students about their project and just interact and get help and just uh, generally just talk about our passion that is absolutely the same. So that's mm -hmm. really fun. That makes sense. Cool. Um, yeah. Chat for the people who are new here. Um, this is the artist streams right now. We're talking to Ariane. Um, and they're showing us their art, but you are very welcome to ask them any questions about their, their art or anything revolving around art. So if you have any questions, let us know, guys. Also wondered and thank you for the sub. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely. I will answer to my best of my abilities. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, Uh, I'm using Photoshop for those who are asking, uh, but I also use from time to time Clip Studio Paint, which is very good software too. Do you use, what do you use for the 3D stuff? Blender? Or? Uh, I, used uh, I used just a little bit of Blender to do 3D animation, but mostly I've been taught on Maya and 3ds Max. Mm -hmm. So they're both quite similar, they all 3D softwares work quite similarly a bit of uh, a bit differently but it's quite easy to handle just a bit of a hassle to go from one to another but that's not the subject uh, but yeah 3ds uh, max maya and like for this integration uh unity i see oh yeah unity i've heard i've heard some people mm. use unity i mean unity is the game um one right yeah. Yeah, like we use Maya and 3 ds Max to actually like make the object and mm -hmm. we use Unity to put, to put it. everything in it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I see. Uh, I'm reading you chat, I'm reading you. I think I need to put on my glasses though because <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to see. Um. How much time does it on average take you to t to finish one of one art piece? Um, when you're not in the art block right yeah. now. <laughs> I, I, 
it's getting better, honestly. Uh, for this kind of art piece, uh, it can take from like, see, if I leave it like this, I think I've been working on it for like 10 to 15 hours. Uh, but it can go to 40 hours <laughs> if wow. I really put my mind into it. Uh, as for like this one, I think it took me like um, less than 10 hours, I think. That's quite quick, I'd say. Honestly, though, that was quite quick. I was happy because I found quite easily what I wanted to draw for this one and was um, was like, okay, I'm doing this. Like, if you want, yeah, I have it. Yeah. I'm gonna go on this one. I had the step by step of this piece. Ooh. I'm just gonna. The bit cluttering the. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so yeah, basically, uh, I had one's some work before made, where I wanted simply. to, where we had to like experience the shape, what our character wanted to, what we wanted our character to look like, uh, what kind of weapon they have, what kind of magical power they had. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, well, I choose Awesome Dude, and I had my references as him being a centaur. I had lions as references i had a lot of armor made be human or four horses because i really wanted to work on the detail of this piece mm -hmm. and first it goes with like the composition of the piece so usually uh, there are a lot of um of basic shapes you use for composition so this one is just basically a uh, diagonal but usually you can have also a triangle you can have uh I don't know how it's told hey, in English, but you have- Sorry, my cats awful. are going crazy right now. I don't know if you- <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I, I, I heard it, I think. God, it's all good. <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> my cat has been put out of my room because I was like, I cannot focus if you're here. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Please forgive me. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, basically it was just composition and I wanted to have like a very strong perspective. So a very like, uh, Boop, boop. Mm -hmm. perspective going really like this because it's not something you usually do because they are really hard to do but trying new stuff is fun <laughs> and it, um, it looks so cool i feel like not always but i feel like a lot of the times like the harder it is to like pull something off the cooler it, like the, the end result will be true 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 and it's just really satisfying and Thank you, now that I have done this piece, I know that I can try myself on like really harder perspective mm -hmm. because I did this quite well. I'm really okay and proud of it. So it's uh, it's something that I learn out of this piece and that I'm going to reuse. So that is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, usually you have something just you don't have to go really really in depth with the detail you just want to have the form and the basic shape so you can see it actually changes a little bit so it could be more readable it could be more co coherent with just the pose in general mm -hmm. and then we have the flat colors the part that takes the most of time <laughs> but, yeah. i would have thought like the like details and everything would um, details were really long, but that because I work like <laughs> on just one layer every time I do something. Um, but flat colors, like, uh, at the easiest way, needs to be like perfectly put and placed. So you don't have to just redraw over it and just try to, um, like, for example, I had this silhouette of uh, Sam. Mm -hmm. And I had just a flat color full object. I think it was gray or something of some here. And so I just had to select it and I would never go out of my silhouette. And that really helps with being efficient with uh, this kind of piece. I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so then, yeah, just we have the light. Oops, sorry. We have lighting basic just light and i think i put the shadows here too before mm -hmm. and just the pretty image wow. <laughs> with a lot of lighting with a lot of details yeah you can see like the start of the visual effects 
everything is not done from like the beginning and we not just do uh, everything in one one hour or one turn it's actually a lot of revisiting what you've already done and to not be scared of changing things even if you love them not be scared of changing things to make the image better mm -hmm. that was for the step by step do you work with lots of layers or do you not tend to like change layers uh, I know at the I beginning usually... you didn't, so I wonder if it's like... Yeah, I usually work with very few layers. Uh, I don't know if it's... I don't know if this one is really representative. But like, my whole just uh, ground and mountains and everything is just done on this layer. Oh, there wow. There's nothing else. Oh, and wow. I, I, have, <laughs> yeah, I have one for the house with a bit of details put above it and like one for the trees. And apparently some lights. <laughs> and for the animals. Like, I uh, really enjoy um, painting digitally as if it was act an actual painting. Um, I'm more just... I'm not afraid of going over something that, I'm, uh, that I have already drawn. I'm just okay with basically just putting... Like, if I ever want to draw more of this snow here, I can just go here and do all of the snow in one take and if I'm not happy I'm just going back uh, to put more black it's pretty I think it's quite therapeutic to just draw something and tell yourself it's okay it's gonna come out fine <laughs> trust the process exactly you are, you are living the, the trust the process lifestyle <laughs> exactly. chat, why are you saying mango on a fork what's that about well chat's I never drew right a now. mango on a fork yeah. <laughs> what are you saying chat I can't tell. We're all so confused. <laughs> Pinzer said that. <laughs> fair enough. I don't know why, but fair enough. I have a fork here. I don't have a mango here, chat. If you want, if you want. I don't have mangoes, but I think <laughs> I have an orange somewhere. <laughs> oh, nice. We could. We could. Do that, recreate that. Chat, if you're okay, I can do uh, an orange on a fork. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get an orange on a fork. Wait, how do you draw a fork? <laughs> uh oh. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, I'm an artist. <laughs> I yeah. can do stuff. Oops. Okay. Very nice. <laughs> we're the we're the orange and the fork gang. You guys might be mango and a fork chat, but we we're orange and a fork. Orange on a fork through. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my tablet decided to No, it's fine. Oh. Ooh, what tablet do you use? I feel, I think a lot of people are always interested in like what, what kind oh, of like yeah. things you use. Um, if I remember well, I'm using a Wacom Medium Pro. Uh, it's one without a screen for those who have no idea what it is. Um, Wacom has, are usually just a very good brand of drawing tablets. But uh, usually if you search a bit, there are a lot of companies now that are finally just going up and making more interesting technological stuff with the tablets. So Wacom is good, but do not be afraid to use something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I could. I, I think for me, it would be very hard to draw without a, a screen. I always you find it very impressive. You get used to it, honestly. <laughs> I see. Like, uh, that's one of the reasons I enjoy drawing traditionally more. It's because I can exactly see where I'm drawing. Um, but the hand-eye coordination came, came, uh, comes with time, mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's become easier with <laughs> with age. <laughs> I see. How long have you been? Have you always been using that, uh, like a, a non non screen tablet? Yep, I've Thank always had this tablet actually. 
Uh, I'm probably going to change it for like a screen one when I get out of my study or if this one dies, please don't die, I love you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, they're really, really useful. And honestly, even the tablets uh, like uh, for beginners are honestly quite, aff I, I wouldn't say quite affordable, but they are on a smaller prices and they're just as good as this one would be. Mm -hmm. I okay chat do you have any other questions and otherwise do you have anything else to tell chat because I think we're nearing an hour right now yeah. um just gonna search throughout my my documents <laughs> I can very show prepared. you a bit. I'm very impressed how prepared you are <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I was preparing all my documents for this as if it was an interview, like for an actual job. Oh. And at one point I was like, eh, it's fine, I'm just going <laughs> to show a bit of everything that I do and oh. it's going to be okay. Um, I can show you if you want a bit of like a document uh, that I use for a final project to show a bit chat how it is to work in the industry of video games. <laughs> Ooh, I, yeah, that sounds very interesting. <laughs> Okay, let me just open it. I think I'm gonna have to chat. I'm gonna get screen. a mango in a second, okay? You'll get your mango on a fork in uh, a second. So but I, I need to pee first and I wanna hear out Africa. our artist first, I okay? Give me on, a second, chat. Uh, change window. Oh. There we go. Ooh. So the project was to do. Um, to illustrate uh, and do a book, a manual about a role play called a Bawari. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and the whole text was given to us by some game designers who worked on it like way before we did. And we just had like 60 pages of text given to us, given to us. And we were talking like, do something pretty out of it, please. <laughs> So it was quite a, a lot of work to read all of this, um, but in the end, it's, I think it's one of the most fun projects I had because the team of artists I was with were just incredibly talented and I was re just really lucky. So this was my project. Uh, quickly, I think, yeah, I had like a synopsis for Quickly, the synopsis was that we were in Africa in like a dark fantasy world, which I was surprised to find out that it's a very unusual subject for a game because when we were doing research for it, we had so much trouble uh, finding actual references of like games or stuff that had been done before because strangely enough, people don't use that subject enough. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically the story was that, um, yeah, the text is in French, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the story was that you were living in a dark fantasy world where um, gods lived among us uh, and uh, gave masks to mortals and gave them a part of their powers so they could fight uh, as their vassals uh, to other gods. And <laughs> oh, so yes. we had to draw like a lot of environments. We had to draw um, a lot of the mask of the characters of the story. And so when you start working on a project like this, you just have to really understand what you're working on. So you have to do a lot of research. Basically, the like first week or two weeks are based on on just research, purely research to understand where you're coming from. Because when you understand exactly and when you have enough references, you can just develop a whole word and make it feel really uh, realistic. So we had a lot of uh, references about the universe, about the art style that we wanted to use. So we went with like a really um, paintbrush kind of art style with not a lot of details everywhere was a really cool art style that one of uh, my friends found, I think. Uh, and then references about the environment, uh, about just photographs that you could find, about villages that lived in the area of the story, well, well where the story would have taken place, about uh, just landscape, vegetation, colors that we wanted to use. 
So that is what we call basically the Bible. Um, the Bible of the game is all of the references of that game that we are going to use in the future of this project. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, one of the quick illustrations that I did. The fun fact about this one is it's uh, one that I did last for the project and I had like three days to do it max because otherwise I, I would be late. Oh, no. And this is, this is three pages of like A4. This was a ginormous oh, piece wow. that I had to do in like three days. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I can do it. <laughs> and I did it. Wow. <laughs> so it was a really cool project. It was like the screen for the Game Master. Uh, so yeah, just really the ambience of the world with the mask, with the rocks, with the desert. Uh, the, all of this was done by another student. Um, and for the rest of it, it's basically the same process for everything. You have to do a lot of research of composition. Uh, this one was for a village uh, that was in the story. So a lot of composition and when you're actually, I think I would take this one, and when you're okay with what you want to do, just go full on, just give it details. Uh, I think I had more. Yeah, this one is uh, the one I had the most trouble with, I think, because I just didn't really knew what I wanted to do and nothing felt like it it uh, it struck me with, okay, this is perfect for what I wanted to do. So this was basically just uh, the idea of this was to do something dark, to do something that represented the environment that the player was going to be in when playing that role play uh for of the manual mm -hmm. so it had to be dark it had to be creepy uh this is a cursed thing i've ever drawn uh because it's it's eyes it's a void <laughs> but yeah again composition uh, color keys are really important because uh it's what makes uh the ambience at the first like glance Mm -hmm. Like, is it more sickly green? Is it more just concentrated on the fire? Is it day? Um, it's something that is really important to try and search about. Uh, because really, it will immediately give an impression to the person watching it. So you Thank have you, to ace it perfectly. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, this, so this was the final oh, wow. illustration. Yeah, I'm really happy with this one. And, is that the player uh, then, we... or is that an NPC or something? So this was the NPC, it was actually like the main villain, which at the end of the campaign it was revealed to well, be the villain and burn the entire village and you as the player had to try to save the village and understand why he did that. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. Wow. Um, what else do I have? So you, you have also small illustration just to complete the book because it has, it has to look pretty. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and this one is the same kind of research I did, but for characters. Um, the characters are also really important, and for us, it's less a question of how they how they dressed, how uh, yeah, how they dressed basically. Uh, it's what we search is the shape of the character, what they give as an impression when you first see them. So I had a lot of references, maybe just for the accessories that I wanted to use, for the mask, for the weapons, uh, for what kind of character I wanted to draw. So I wanted, so I had to draw a really strong warrior female that had really dark past. And so at the same at the same time, you begin with just sketches and ugly stuff, but when you see these characters, you understand that she is not gonna give you hugs. She just um, she just is gonna hurt you and attack you and is really ready to jump at it at any moment. And that was the vibe uh, that we always try to go with. Just make you, Angie, your first up. impression of the character what they really are. Mm -hmm. So again, some color keys and the final illustration that you saw earlier, I think. Yeah. And oh, wow. otherwise, otherwise I think it's just some more... Um, uh, secondary stuff like I had to do a lot of uh, schematics to understand the games or just small uh, patterns to put all around the book 
Woodrun is also really fun to do. It's uh, it gets you out of just doing big illustration like uh, like those, mm -hmm. just small little stuff. And mm -hmm. obviously, I had to do like a lot of uh, of um, wording and stuff for the book. I think that's yeah, that is. So that is basically how you work when you have to do something uh, for game art. A lot of research, a lot of production, and a final idea of what you like. That is immediately going to give the wow effect mm -hmm. for the viewer or the player. Wow. Give me a sec. Um. <laughs> Gonna go back on Photoshop also, I think. Um, well, yeah, no, that's really cool. Um, I think that gave us a very good idea of you as an artist and the art you do and what you study. Mm -hmm. I think, because yeah. I hear a lot of people who are always like, oh, I want to be a video game designer. I want to do video game art. And I think that very much helped them to see. So this is the process that you learn to do. And this is how you um Yeah, it's really... It all about the process if any of you in chat want to get into a game school uh just know that they're really looking for people that are just invested and passionate about they do and also uh they will care less about your finished piece that more than actually how you're working it's really important that way mm -hmm. very cool um, I am so sorry, but I really need to pee. So I think uh, we even we hit an hour <laughs> anyway. So um, yeah, sure. if you want to shout yourself out, uh, chat, I think if you write, I think it was, is it exclamation mark guest mod? Um, no, but yeah, it, it technically it is. But if you write exclamation mark guest, the first person, there we go. Thank you, exclamation mark artist it is. Um, you can follow Avian on Twitter. Do you yeah. want to say anything else? Shout yourself out. Uh, well, uh, for the last word, hi, I'm Avian and I do art. I try. Uh, but it was really fun to be invited here and just to talk about passion projects. And I think the other artists are going to be really amazing to listen to. Also because they do animation and animation is just the most fascinating thing ever. So. Yeah yeah <laughs> very cool yeah thank you so much thank for being you. here i really really thank appreciate you for having it. me <laughs> yeah, of course that was really cool thank you yeah thank you too um if you want if you i don't know if you if you're busy if you want to do anything if you want you can like go back to the Did call you? with the other people if they are there if not mm -hmm. um i i hope you have a good rest of your day um, thank you i'm probably gonna go <laughs> just to talk with them a bit yeah Happy one year. Uh, I'm gonna quickly message uh, the group chat and then go to the bathroom real quick. Um, <laughs> yeah, do take a break. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for for being here, for showing us your art, um, and for taking your time out of the day. Basically, I really, really, thank really you appreciate too. it. <laughs> it's such a cool event. It's such yeah, a cool event to have. <laughs> I'm glad. Well, if you need anything you can just message me um other than that i i hope you enjoyed this <laughs> i really did <laughs> thank <Yay>! you a lot <laughs> all right i'll talk to you later then sure have all a right. nice rest of the stream <laughs> thank you have a good rest of your day or evening <laughs> uh, it's gonna be evening <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right bye bye Ooh, i'm so sorry chat i had to like quickly like go because i really need to go to the bathroom I'm drinking lots of water um so i'm quickly gonna go do, go do that and then we're gonna go call chris um i will see you guys in one second have a zupo um for you guys and i'm getting a mango i'm getting you guys a mango okay you wanted the mango i'll get you a mango just give me a second wait actually actually don't have a you zupo three months too. thank you i'll see you in a second chat
Hello. I am back. I can now say hello to everyone who has joined while we were talking. I'm really sorry I didn't acknowledge everyone and everything um, while we were. I just don't want to speak over the artist. It's like a little bit hard to like manage the artist stream and then also manage chat. But hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining the stream. I'm so sorry for ignoring you for a little bit. Josephine, thank you so much for the 100 bits. I appreciate it. Chat. Is this what you wanted? Is this, is this what you wanted? I'm not going to bite into it because I didn't wash it, but I did consider it, but I didn't wash it. So I, I did, I, I'm not going to bite into it. Um, <laughs> anyways, hi everyone. Uh, we're doing artist streams, which is uh, basically a way to celebrate all the wonderful artists in this community, um, hear about them and their art, what they do, and ask some questions, I have to go, let them talk. But I loved Bye! Everyone's artwork. It was really inspiring to learn about how everyone got into art and their different art styles. Yeah, I I'm glad you enjoyed it. Art streams, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, I appreciate it. I hope you do too. Um, we're going to call Chris now, and Chris is going to tell us about their art um, and their experience and their everything, basically. And you are very welcome to ask questions, chat. Um, I always find us very interesting and very fun. Um, so let me go and call him. That's oh wait, I'm <laughs> I'm managing Discord. Why can I not do it? There we go. <laughs> Hello. Whoa, that was quick. <laughs> yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm right right on the dial. <laughs> oh, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I've been watching the stream so far, and it's been uh, awesome and lovely and so so cool. I'm glad. So, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so what uh, I I kind of also had what um, the previous artist had, where I have a bunch of my old stuff and can compare to some of my later stuff. So I don't know if you want to do that first, or if you have like if we answer some questions from chat. I can do some animating. I'm I'm kind of down for whatever. Ooh. Okay. Let's start with um with that. And then I think because I don't know if you were the only animator, but you're definitely one of the only animators here. So I think yeah. then talking about animation would be very cool. Yeah, I think I think it would be awesome. I, I also have a couple of my animations that I'm probably known for more in the Ooh. community, um, kind of more on the Dream SP side that at least have been posted on YouTube and stuff. Um, I have a couple of those ready and I have some of the later ones that you can kind of see my improvement. Um, so, uh, yeah, but um, I'm more than happy to talk about animation, animatic stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'll Very pull cool. up. I'll pull up what I'm currently working on and then we can talk about some of my previous work or whatever as well. All right. Um, all right. So I was kind of working on this while <laughs> while we were all kind of talking back and forth. Um, so, um, well, first of all, uh, hi guys, hi chat. Um, I'm Chris. Yeah, introduce uh, yourself use... again. We got yeah, a few yeah. breaks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Chris, also, or Chris Rin on, um, on Twitter and YouTube. Um, on Twitter, the Rin is with two eyes because the person who has the username with one eye has, uh, gone inactive in like 2009 and I, I will never that. get that account. <laughs> I will never get the account. Um, but I'm Chris Rin on YouTube, uh, and I do a lot of animatics and um, that kind of stuff leaning more in towards animation recently and uh, yeah I've been doing art for a while if you were here towards the beginning of the stream uh, we kind of went through the, the rough rundown but um, this uh, is Toon Boom which I use mainly for um, animation uh, if you've ever been curious about animation programs this is one of the ones that's mainly used in the industry um which is why i went out of my way to get it to to buy it and such um and this was actually a school assignment i had to do a walk cycle so um we can kind of just i'll play the the basic part rather than playing the the last bit but if i just have this on loop if i go here um I just have a, a character doing a basic walk side. This is one of my OCs that I kind of developed for school stuff. But um, uh, it's funny, I worked on this for a while and I sent it as a draft to my teacher and I was like, hey, does this work? And she was like, well, 
the assignment says you have to make the character walk from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. So <gasps> even though this is really cool, you can't use it. And I was like, okay, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I can't use it. So, um, so, but it wasn't, it didn't bother me that much because um, she was like, that's still really cool and you can use it for, um, for portfolio and stuff later on. And I was being extra, so I wanted to add like more of a, a flair to it um, by adding this little bit at the end. But um, something really neat in animation software that not a lot of uh, illustrative software has is you have this area outside the camera. So mm -hmm. this little line here represents where the camera is, which is why I can kind of cut off the, the top of the head and it's not a huge deal. Um, but this is using animation software because references will often be put like outside. And so you can draw out here um, because what you need to be able to do is you have to be able to take this camera so I have the camera at the very bottom of my timeline down here um, and I can take this and I can kind of move it around and it'll move it around and show Ooh. kind of the different areas. So I can make kind of camera movements. So if I want the camera to like lurch forward and like zoom in, it'll do that. And so I can kind of make that move um, as the, the animation goes. So if I play it, it'll just zoom in and it'll, it'll maintain that position. So that's something kind of interesting that um, other animation software or uh, animation software has to kind of, you know, keep and, and utilize. Mm -hmm. um, I have right now a, a very basic camera shake effect um, that you can kind of see that just kind of subtly goes, um, bounces the camera around. And um, that's just something you can do in, in Toon Boom um, because Toon Boom is a bit of a complex programmer. It's a, a very specific um animation program used for the industry um, the thing that most intimidates people is this thing called the node view <laughs> and um, it looks really confusing to a lot of people because it looks like and and this is actually pretty simple for what um, most uh, most animation has mm -hmm. um, or most like bigger projects um, because it gets a lot more spaghetti than this um, oh, let me see. Is it not appearing on the stream? Hold on. Let me see so. if I can. Let me let me do this actually. Let's see. Oh yeah, that looks very. Cool. There we go. Oh my god. So yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is pretty simple um, for what uh, in comparison to some things. But you can essentially um, this is how the layers are all kind of arranged together um, in comparison to stuff like Photoshop. So in Photoshop, you would have something on the side, right? And that has all your layers. Mm -hmm. But with Toon Boom, you can have it kind of arranged like this. So you can kind of move things around. If I put it, um, let's put it to the side here. So if I wanted to make the character disappear, I would just remove oh. the little thing that connects it and, um, it'll still stay here, right? So this layer isn't deleted. I can just kind of reconnect it. I can rearrange things, um, and move them around. If I get a project that's a bit more complex, um, which I can't show a ton of, you, you, you saw it a little bit when I was showing you in that one call, um, but I'll just show you how the, uh, I won't actually play the animation because it's, um, it's for a map part and I'm not allowed to show it all off yet, but this is how the, uh, <laughs> the node view looks in here. So it definitely gets a bit more confusing where you need to start, um, sectioning things off into their own little areas. And even within the, I have a particle uh, generator here where you have all this crazy stuff. So, but that's where you get into a lot of like complex things. Um, and you can do a lot with animation in a super simple program. Um, most of my early animation stuff was done entirely in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And what I would do, is I would draw the characters and I would put them into like Sony Vegas and I would just kind of move and pan them around. And, um, and it worked for what I did. Um, the, one of the, the animations or the animatics that I'm most popular, well known for within the Dream SMP community is, um, I did one using the song, um, the villain medley, which is a, uh, a song where they took all the Disney villains and they put it into a, this big medley together. Mm -hmm. And I took all the villains of the dream SMP and I kind of matched them to the roles and, um, and I made an animatic about it. And, uh, it's m my most popular, I think it's like my second most popular video, but it was all done with Photoshop character or characters drawn in Photoshop that I kind of arranged in, um, in Sony Vegas. Mm -hmm. And that would be kind of the thing I would tell 
if you're if you're like looking into doing animatics and stuff um and this is kind of for anybody in the chat who's looking to do animations and animatics you don't need like this this is all you know can be crazy complex and and more than what you need what you really need is you just need a basic um software and some some editing tools that's really it that's all you have to kind of do and um and you can make some really cool stuff um just throwing that all together um but uh yeah i i love animation it's it's my favorite thing in the world um i didn't think i would love it as much as i do but <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's so it's so near and dear to my heart now um, i can imagine and I've just i can been, get like, quite tedious like especially oh, yeah. like yeah. like with the tr little tree that you have there oh my god I yeah, cannot, oh, yeah that looks so that looks like it can be so frustrating <laughs> yeah yeah and it's it's funny because it's like you you look at it and you're like oh my because because when especially when i first got this program the the node view like it intimidated me i was like i'm never gonna touch it i'm never gonna mess with it i'm just gonna kind of leave it there and because you don't necessarily need to use it you Thank can kind of just work on the timeline and kind of draw down here and you're fine yeah um but you can't take full advantage of the program if you're not going out of your way to learn as much as you can yeah and so i was like i gotta find a way to to utilize this and so i started like looking up tutorials and i was like there's a couple really awesome channels specifically related to toon boom where um uh like super small channels that that maybe have like 3k 4k subscribers but oh my gosh just a vault of information that was just absolutely golden to me um and i went through and i watched like all of the videos and i was like all the stuff on on the no view and all the stuff on the different um like compositing tricks and stuff that you can do and i was like this is this is awesome and i want to keep learning and i got like addicted to just watching tutorials and um it was so so helpful and so that was that would be something that i would super recommend as well is like don't be afraid of like trying new things like if you think something like looks intimidating um play around with it and don't be like afraid to make mistakes and stuff because mm -hmm. like that's how that's how you learn that's oh, and that's how you learn with anything you. but um but yeah so but i can show um let me see if i can pull up one of my um early animations and we can kind of compare mm -hmm. um because i think that would be fun I'll, i'm gonna keep the audio muted so you don't get like dmc or whatever because <laughs> that that thank would not you, be good <laughs> it is a shame because the I majority of my um of my my work um i use um copyrighted music so i can't monetize mm -hmm. much stuff which kind of sucks but it's like well what are you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Let's I heard see. that a lot of people who animate. I think Sadas last time told us that mm -hmm. um, they animate after the music. So, like they listen to the music and then use the yeah. music to animate. It's yeah. Sad when stuff like that doesn't work. Yeah. So this was one of my really. This is the villain Medley. This was one of my really early animatics, and I, I, it, it makes me cringe looking back at some of this stuff because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so bad. And this was like, this is animatic, so it's like super limited animation, not much movement, just kind of getting character poses down and stuff, mm -hmm. um, and like learning how to kind of move the characters and all that sort of stuff, making things look. Um, interesting. I'm just gonna kind of skip around, mm -hmm. but I showed like Wilbur and I showed Techno and I was showing all this stuff. And then now, um, let me pull up some I think of I've my seen recent this things. One, actually. It looks yeah, very familiar. yeah, yeah. Um, and then if we pull up one of my recent ones, um, so here I have um, much oh, wow. more kind of complex um, character movement. Um, and, um, trying to kind of find ways to, to do clever transitions, trying to really nail character animation stuff. Um, but this is all, this took me, these, these projects are like a year apart from each other. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe a little bit less than a year, but yeah. Um, and then my most recent one, I have this kind of neat comparison that I did where I showed a story. So this is a storyboard that I did, and this is how the final came out. Um, but this recent animation, I used full color. Um, and this is just a really small clip from it. But um, That's so cool. But yeah, so yeah, it's always fun comparing the, um, 
the storyboards versus how the finals come out. Um, but um, but yeah, so it's super super neat um, to kind of show those comparisons. And then here's something else that I put together. So because I'm going to class for animation, mm -hmm. I had to do a lot of um, assignments, and so I threw them all together into a compilation that I put on my thing. So if you are interested in, as in high chat, um, if you're interested in doing animation, I recommend doing a lot of these practices and a lot of these exercises, um, stuff like, and because it's stuff that you'll do in classes. So stuff like ball bounces, um, stuff like animating with flower sacks is a big one because flower sacks can be really um, simple characters that you can learn how to use weight, um, learning how to animate like lip syncing and uh, that kind of stuff. Um, but just focusing on moving characters, even if it's with super simple designs, because that's the main thing that you'll be focusing on in uh, if you if, you're, if you ever oh, go to sorry. school or take classes. That's what they really want to emphasize is you need to be able to show characters um, that feel real. And so this was actually mm -hmm. the first draft for the uh, the animation. I've been working on it. Mm -hmm. But um, the second final that I ended up doing, I did um, a lot simpler, but it, it showed just the character moving from left to right. And I just had this kind of repeating. But, um, you know, having the secondary action of the backpack movement and all that sort of stuff, just having extra elements that you can use to um, elevate your animation. There's so many, like, fundamentals like that... Like, make it less stiff, I guess? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that a lot of people make the mistake of when they animate their characters, they will think like, okay, well, I need to make the arm move, right? The arm needs to move up. And mm -hmm. they will only animate the arm, the arm moving up. And it's like, well, take your actual body in real life and move your arm. You know, if you're doing that, your shoulders moving, like your 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 torso's moving. Like there's there's a lot of different elements, like your neck might move, um, because it's it you you use your whole body when mm -hmm. you move. Um and to do animation, you need to understand that and you need to make sure you're utilizing that. The only place that you'll really see animation that isn't like, that's that's like stiffer is um, when it's being like cleverly used to um, cut corners, like cut budget cuts. In, um, in anime, you'll see a lot if you pay attention because they're pretty good at masking it. But if you pay attention, stuff like that where I was just telling you with like, Oh, the, only the arm will move. It's like they'll do that, but they'll do it because they're trying to save money, and mm -hmm. they're good enough at hiding that that it's like stiff that you won't like realize. So like the camera will be moving at the same time, and right. so it's like the, just the arm moving will, won't look that strange. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, or like even like the when it builds tension, it's like just the one. Yeah, like, yeah. It's just like, it's just one still. And, like everybody's yeah, one standing. Still, yeah. yeah, yeah. They'll use so many just like stills and and you know with like simple camera movements. A lot of the times the camera movements can do a lot to um, say to make animations feel like very like alive. give give a more yeah give a lot more life to it. Like even just adding this kind of simple shake to the camera um, with this this character. Um, can do a lot now there's still a lot of movement if there is no shake right but but notice the difference between mm -hmm. the camera shake and just the camera staying still it's it's a different feel to it you know and it makes it feel more alive more more uh i think even more refined you know mm -hmm. but um but yeah so that's what i would say um, oh, very cool yeah, yeah. So, um, but I also, I also do illustration stuff and I can show some of my illustration stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, I will, I'll do that right now, actually. Um, I, I was kind of saying this a bit earlier, but, um, but when I first got my tablet, my, my very first drawing was, um, Undertale fan art <laughs> and I do have it, um, Ooh. still after all these years. So I have a, I have a kind of, I have a little timeline of like stuff from like old to recent with some dates or whatever, and I can kind of talk through them. So, um, so I can show, this was 2016 in December. This is the first, my first ever, uh, digital piece. And, uh, here it is. <laughs> so... I was um I was very 
I was very young and I didn't know anatomy and I didn't know anything. Uh, if you look on the on the left hand, his his thumb is broke. His thumb is on the wrong side. Um, so his thumb is on the the outside of his hand. Um, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that's not how that works. <laughs> Um, but it was super early and I was just trying to get, get with the program. Um, and then you can kind of, uh, so this was another piece that I did. I was kind of starting to learn like texture overlays and stuff like that. This was also 2016 and, um, just trying to figure out like color. I was like, oh, well, orange or gold and, and blue are on, uh, our complementary colors. So I'll do that. And that kind of worked, uh, trying to kind of figure it out. I was still really, really early. Um, drawing like super basic humanoid characters and just not understanding figures that well or whatever. Um, again, this is another 2016. That's already um, quite like a, a like yeah, a hard yeah, pose, you yeah. Know? It's starting. It's starting to slowly. I'm slowly starting to learn and stuff like that. Yeah. This was I did doing 2017, um, which it looks fairly solid until yeah. you realize that. If you were to take away that skull, the eye is like way up where the forehead should be. <laughs> like if you look at it and you're like, I don't think that's how human heads work. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, true. If you didn't say that, I would be like, oh, that's yeah, amazing. You wouldn't that's notice. Really you wouldn't even think toy. about it. Yeah. yeah, you wouldn't think about it. But then you, you take and you, and you notice it and you're like, that eye is <laughs> should not be there. That's way off. Yeah. Um, but it's funny because, you know, I, re I remember when drawing this, I was so focused on making the skull look cool. And, and like, I was like, oh, well, I have to fit the skull or I have to fit the eye inside the skull because that's what the point is. But I forgot to take into account the fact that there's like anatomy underneath where the head is that I need to take into account. I can't just put the eye wherever I need to. Yeah. And that's just a mistake you make early as an artist where you're you're so focused on the the. Um, like all the things that go on top and all the accessories that you forget about the fundamentals underneath you know what mm -hmm. i mean um and then we start getting into stuff that's that's better uh trying to kind of get line work and you know color compositions and you know still still really early and it's like this pose is kind of static or whatever um but uh then we start getting into a bit more interesting stuff i'm trying to figure mm -hmm. out how to render um, this is when I was really into My Hero Academia, so this is like anime phase, um, and then, um, again, continuing, this is now entering like 2018, um, trying to figure out lights, still trying to figure out characters, and I'm just gonna blaze through a couple of these still kind of early Ooh, ones. Ooh, I like that one, that was cute! This one's good, this one's good, I, I remember really liking this one, this one was, um, I think 2018 as well. I love the sword. Um, that's really Yeah. Cool. I was really happy with how I was able to put the sword in perspective because that's mm -hmm. that's what it is. It's like the it's called foreshortening. I don't know if you know that term. Um, but foreshortening is where like if you were to bring your hand up to like a camera, your hand is gonna look closer. Um like the closer it is to the camera or your hand is gonna look bigger the closer it is to to the camera, right? Mm -hmm. Um like if you and close to your face right it, it gets bigger as it comes closer so when you're taking into account perspective um things that come closer to the camera are going to look bigger mm -hmm. and so you kind of kind of keep that in mind when it comes to posing and stuff like that um and i started doing more character design this is when i was i mean i'm still into dungeons and dragons but i was really into dungeons and dragons so i was like oh, i'm gonna make this this fear bulg cleric character and it's gonna be super cute and trying to kind it. of Learn character design. I was really proud of this piece um, when I made it too. Um, I also started doing this trick, and you can see it in the one with Chris. Um, but I would take the character, and this is actually a, a pretty cool trick. So, so trick for for making kind of dynamic, almost looking shadows really fast is you take your character and you. Um, select everything like select the the insider all of that character right mm -hmm. so you were to to what i would tell artists is you use magic wand tool and you take all the white around and then you inverse it so it just selects the figure Hi, you make a layer put black on that layer so it just it covers it makes it a silhouette 
put that behind the character and then smush it down to the ground. So literally just take that transform tool and push it down and place the shadow behind the character. And then you can kind of adjust, you can skew it or you can adjust the, the, the opacity on it. And it takes the silhouette and it just places it on the ground. And so you don't have to by hand, like make the silhouette. You just have this nice detailed silhouette that you can just use as the shadow. Um, and you just place it down on the ground. So I use that trick a lot in some of my later pieces, um, and I can I'll point it out as we when we when we get to them. Mm -hmm. But um, going on forward, I started getting into the more complex stuff with composition, and um, I really like. There's this show called Critical Role, and it's a Dungeons and Dragons um, show yeah. that's like or live stream host on Twitch, and I was super into it. So I did this piece, and I was really happy with it when it came out or when I finished it and trying to be a bit more complex with rendering and stuff like that. Um, but still long way to go. I wasn't really sure how to draw faces. I think I, I still had a lot of trouble rendering faces. Um, the, the proportions look wonky in some areas. Um, and then uh, one more critical role piece and then we get into uh, Minecraft YouTube stuff. So this was another piece I did also critical role slash D and D related. Um, and it's interesting. So my growth at this point, because I've been posting stuff online, I had kind of rested online on stuff like Twitter at around, you know, 500 followers, kind of small, you know, fairly small, just making fan art for these um, smaller communities, but nothing had kind of hit yet mm -hmm. until I posted this piece. And this was, I made a banner of every single, um, Minecraft YouTuber that participated in MCC Season 1. Um, wow. I did every single character. And this this piece was like what blew up my Twitter account and what blew up everything. Because uh, Scott retweeted it. He Because uh, I tagged, I tried to tag a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Scott retweeted it. And you know, when a, if, if a big creator retweets your thing, it's like, well, that's that's a lot of attention and this was one of the first things that really set my my um my online kind of um art um off and so i was like okay i like this community and i was just kind of getting into i was really into mcc i watched um uh pete pizza hut who's mcc yeah. player i mainly i was like in his community i really watched him a ton i made fan art for him all the time Mm -hmm. And I was kind of like, ooh, Dreamhouse and Pete looks kind of interesting. Like, oh my goodness, I'm going to maybe sneak my way into there. Um, and then I started doing Dreamhouse and Pete related pieces. Ooh. And uh, and that was super fun. And this is also when I started doing animatics and stuff. So the my Minecraft YouTube community and like that fandom has been a big inspiration of growth for me because... Um, I'm, I, I work a lot. Like I'm, I'm so driven by like fan art. I think that I, I have a big need to, um, have like a community or like a media to base my stuff off of. Mm -hmm. And so that's what gets me to really push my skills as I'm like, I'm going to, you know, take this media and I'm going to do, you know, so like I'm going to push myself with it. And Minecraft YouTube was one of the big things that really set me to, to go um with it and um, i ended up creating a lot so um i'll actually skip to the first piece first but this was something i did that i'm actually really proud of i did these silhouette designs because i was trying to get more into character design stuff and really um cute. i made so I, I was kind of trying to be like okay i want to explore shape language because shape language is really important and stuff so this was the first version i did and then i took it and i was like well i want to improve on it so i took it and i improved and i made the silhouettes more interesting and i think that this is a really um like fun thing to do if you want to practice character design is character design is so much about like making interesting silhouettes mm -hmm. and if you learn shape language and you learn silhouettes you can make your characters look so cool um, because if you can make your characters distinct and stand out when they're just a black silhouette um, 
it, it shows a lot about how strong your character design is. And so that's if you got if like anybody in chat or whatever, you have like OCs, um, do some silhouette studies. So just don't draw their don't draw anything inside. Just draw their silhouettes and see how far you can push it and how how strong you can make it. What defines them? You know, like there's a lot of um, in in the art community. You know, using triangles and circles and squares and different shapes can signify a lot of different things for your characters and what it tells a viewer from you know just looking at it mm -hmm. and if you can learn that and practice it it um can really help uh push your art and your character design to be much more interesting i would say oh, no, Maddie, thank you for um, that. so yeah and then we keep going and um this is another piece that i i got really i got a lot of attention for but um yeah. i liked gravity falls as well this is very gravity falls based it, yeah it looks um, very gravity yeah falls. It's very yeah cool. so i took i took one of the in in gravity falls has this like those like books um where they have the different entries in them um and so i wanted to take the um the that like format and make it into a dream smp thing and so i did two versions of it where i have like the the, the light on it where they shine like the um the uv light and it has all the details and stuff but this is really cool and it was like me experimenting doing um another style right because i wasn't i had no idea how to do this. so i was like studying the gravity falls books and like trying to replicate the style and that's something i really recommend artists do is if you like a, a certain piece of media or if you like a certain artist practice it and like try to replicate it um i think i don't know who it was that said it but somebody was saying earlier like how tracing is is really useful mm -hmm. and i like 100 percent agree um we've had I, like going to art school well going going to university a standard university but for an art degree um you're taught to trace um like famous you know like artists like they, they teach you they tell you okay your assignment is to trace and to replicate um so it's very encouraged because it teaches you so so much about their process um but yeah i kept going i kept doing more this is more dream smp stuff um this was in this is now like 2021 like like 2020 2021 so um i was improving a lot and then i participated in art fight which art fight is this really cool um, I, I'm, I assume you probably haven't heard of it because it's kind of an artist community thing, but <laughs> Art Fight is this thing where you can like post your OCs online and people can, uh, you, you get assigned to um, a team and it happens every, I don't know if it's June or July, but it happens for one month and you get assigned to a team and you essentially fight the other artists on the other team by drawing their OCs. So you draw their OCs and they attack back by drawing yours. And so it's a really cool way for artists to kind of give back to each other by drawing each other's characters and kind of doing art for each other. It's so fun. And I love, I did so many this year or this this past year and um, yeah, last year. And I, I had such a fun, it was such a blast because it lets you like practice your character design and it was so 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 fun and um and it's also nice because you kind of get rewarded back because when you attack somebody they're kind of incentivized to attack you back like you can do revenge attacks and so it's cool because not only are you able to you know give somebody really cool art of their oc you're also usually going to get stuff back um and that's a nice feeling so you're not necessarily doing commissions for somebody but you're still getting something back in return typically Aw, that sounds really cute. That sounds yeah, really Yeah, and then this fun. is another one that I did. But yeah, yeah, it's super, it's so, so fun. And if, um, if, if, um, any artists in chat, like, I, I highly recommend you participate in Art Fight. Um, but, and, and it's, and it's nice too, because it's like, it's not all the time. Like, they just do it once a year, so you're not like, it's not like this constant need to keep giving and giving and giving. It's just like, nope, we just do it for one month every year and I do what I want and then I dip and then I come back to it um so it's really cool Thank you for um and then I kept doing MCC art this is one of the ones that I did that I'm really proud of I would do these like MCC team banners um where I would do do whatever the team was um and this was MCC 17 I think because this was 
Yeah, this is MCC 17, I think. Oh gosh, I'm gonna get called out if, <laughs> if I did it wrong. Oh, I wouldn't um, know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. I think it is. But um, but yeah, so this is MCC 17, and then um, then now we get into stuff. much more recent stuff, um, oh. where I've kind of transitioned from doing Dream SMP to to being more of a, a hermit craft um, and uh, and last life fan artist. Um, but I still, I still love all of MC2. Um, and like, this was, this was a recent piece I did where I'm, I'm so proud of how my character design has started and, and came out. It's incredible. Uh, Cause I've improved a lot. Yeah. I think inc I've improved a lot when it comes to my character design, I think. And I'm super, super proud, uh, proud of where I've come out with it. And I've finally started to kind of get into, a, um, a style that I think I'm comfortable with, um, and uh, I think when, when artists, when beginner artists asked, like, how do I develop my style? And it's like, that you, you shouldn't be worried about that because <laughs> your style will develop naturally. It's just going to be kind of how it is. You just need to draw a lot and stuff will come from it and you'll kind of get where you need to be over time. Then we think it's and you just need to take your time and, and, you know, enjoy what you're doing mm -hmm. and, uh, and it'll come to to pass you know when you get there but um but yeah so that's all i have this was the most recent thing i think i posted on twitter um but um but yeah you can kind of it's it's very cool to see going from um from this <laughs> to um to to this you know Wait, what i, I mean see the first one i need to see the first oh, let, one me see, let me see let me see let me see i, me I see. need to see the difference <laughs> let me that's see i wonder if i can put them side by side let's see if i can do this um oh gosh change window let me do my screen there we go wow you know so, what yeah. you know what you kind mm -hmm. of stayed in the same thing though where it's like character and it's oh like... yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean kind of <laughs> That's, that is crazy look at that it's like the character with like the leg out and one yeah, leg back yeah. oh my gosh and then the, the the other character on the side that's so funny that's so oh my funny goodness. <laughs> that's such a funny comparison i did not i didn't even think about that that is hilarious oh my gosh oh that's so amusing <laughs> Wow! If anything, that just shows us how much like you you improve. Oh yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And that thing I was talking about with like the foreshortening earlier, exactly. where like this foot is like much smaller, mm -hmm. um, being all the way back here, and you have this foot that's larger. So even in small ways, you can implement foreshortening and stuff into your into your work. And it's funny because I even I even knew how to do that a little bit here. Like this <laughs> yeah, shoe is much smaller than this one. I was trying even even really early on. I was trying. Um, but um but yeah so this was over the course of this was so late 2016 to you know early 2022 um so if anybody in chat is feels discouraged about if they feel like they're making improvement kind of slowly um this took me this took me years you know and um you you'll get there you know what i mean just take your time and and practice and you'll find You'll find it. Mm -hmm. Hello, so, yeah. Sorry. Hello, hello, ladies. <laughs> no, no worries. Um, but yeah, so um, I'm happy to take questions from chat. That was kind of my, uh, I went through all my stuff. But yeah. um, I can pull up the animation and keep keep doodling on it, working on it. I It's funny, I have a, I, I, I tend to work a lot slower when I'm doing streams and stuff like that because usually I just end up chatting with people. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, fair. Yeah. But um, but I will. Uh, I'm I'm happy to like if people have questions, I can show stuff. Um, I'm more than happy to do whatever. Yeah, chat. What questions do you have for Chris? Mel asks, what are your favorite? I'm gonna, uh, Mel, Mel's a friend of mine, so I'm uh, gonna. <laughs> yeah, no, you can take those, like, you, you, you Mel, you, you... hi, Mel. Hi, Mel, Mel Euler. Uh, what are your favorite colors to work with? Um, probably warm colors. I like red a lot. Um, red's my favorite color, so I like warm colors. Um, speaking of colors, oh, this is actually, this is a little, little tip, little fun tip. Um, for everybody that's, that struggles with color theory, I do too. Um, here's the tip that changed my life. Ooh. Use gradient maps 
Okay, I know that they exist in Procreate and they exist in Photoshop. Use gradient maps and just like pick a gradient map you really like and slap Thank it over top. I wish, maybe there. I can pull up. Hold on, let me pull up an example. Thank you. Um, let me see if I can pull up the Photoshop and um, pick an example of a piece. Um, Ooh, people are asking how long it usually takes you to complete an animation. Oh, an animation. Um, the last two that I've been working on. So, so the one that I did that is my um, my other side animatic, which was with Green Mumbo, um, Etho, and B Dubs. It was um, more of a simple one. Mm -hmm. That one took me two months or so to complete, and then my uh, the curses one that I did, which was um, that I completed later um was another two months so i would say anywhere from a month to like three months i would usually give my estimate of um of time but um let me see hold on really quick um i would like to show the gradient map trick because i think it's it's mm -hmm. super awesome um all right uh, stream change window so i just pulled up one of my pieces that i was kind of showing off earlier um so what you can do with gradient maps is um they uh in photoshop at least they're here um so if you go into your adjustments you click gradient map and you'll have this panel i wonder if it'll show up the panel correctly yeah, on stream it. let's see okay cool um so what i typically do is i go to this row um Photoshop usually has a bunch of defaults and you can pick it and what it'll do is it'll map the values of the piece to colors that are based on this gradient. And then what you do from there is you can take that and you can also adjust that gradient however you want. Um, I What I do is I just take this list and I just go through it and I'm like, okay, which one of these looks like, this looks kind of cool, it makes this like lighter out here, this looks... Um, you know, interesting or whatever. And I just cycle through them and I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe I want a different gradient. And so I go in here and I'm like, okay, how does this change? Ooh, it like makes the colors warmer. Um, let's go to overlay. Let's go to all of these. And I literally just take this and I will sit here and I will adjust and I will play with it for like, like 20 minutes. And <laughs> I will just sit here and be like, ooh, this makes it kind of warmer and interesting. Um, because what it does is it kind of makes your color palettes feel more um what's the word unified because it's all mm -hmm. kind of unified under this one gradient um and so playing around with that has saved me so much time and, and grief um when it comes to um putting uh art or putting colors together and putting color it's kind of like cheat color theory almost in a way so i know procreate has it i know photoshop has it i don't know if Clip Studio, I think Clip Studio Paint has it. I'm not sure if Psy has it, mm -hmm. but um, but those are the programs that I that I know at least a little bit about. Um, I saw somebody ask, what kind of art school did you go to? Mm -hmm. um, I am not going to art school. What I am going to is I'm going to a standard like state university, and I'm just doing an art program. Personally, <laughs> I don't recommend you go to art school. Um, art school unless you are getting a full ride or a very big scholarship or you are rich enough to be able to afford it without getting in very deep student loans it is not worth it um i i think that the, the main appeal of art school or the main thing you get out of art school is you get connections because you get connect because all of the big uh professors are there and everybody who's like in the industry is there and that's how you kind of can you know, make your money's worth is you get really connected to people. Mm -hmm. But if you just want to practice and learn art, you can do that yourself. You can you can practice that yourself. Um, it takes more work and more effort, but you can do a lot. The, the, the industry, for the most part, doesn't care where you went to school. What they care about is your portfolio. That's like the most important thing is, is what you have to show for work. Um, I feel like... If, even people who have a really good portfolio sometimes just don't get accepted. Like I feel like yeah. it can be very random. And yeah, it's 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 difficult because the industry is so competitive. It's so 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 competitive because so many people want to get into art, um, and like animation and storyboarding, especially nowadays, um, it can be very difficult. So that's why, like, if you can afford it, art school can be really useful because it is kind of like a shortcut to get a job because you you're able to talk with professors who have those connections but 
getting like a hundred thousand dollars into debt isn't worth like a job like like job security because you're not gonna it's just gonna be such a stain on you for so long of your life and it's not like worth it if and this is like school in america i don't know because school in america or college in america is a scam i don't know about other places mm -hmm. but um but that's why for me personally at least um i went to a community college for the first two years and then i transferred to a state university so i'm in a position where because of financial aid i have no debt and i'm going to graduate with zero debt um and you know i'll be able to to have a nice portfolio going into the industry and hopefully find a job um now that's a lot of hoping and luck and you know yeah. finding the right person maybe which you can kind of skip with art school but unless you have that money it is it's it's i i personally wouldn't recommend going to to art school just because it's so hard to pull yourself out of student loan debt mm -hmm. um so yeah, that would be my personal recommendation. But um, uh, t -t 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 hey, I'm learning art. How many frames do you use? Do you mean frames as in animation frames? Um, most animators draw on 24 frames per second. Um, if you're doing animatics, you don't necessarily need to follow that rule because you're just basic putting things out in a in a basic format where you're just putting things, drawing new frames where you need to. But 24 frames per second is is standard. Um, in um, the animation, animatic stuff. Um, I've seen a few people talking about anatomy. Actually, everyone's talking about anatomy right now. Okay, <laughs> anatomy. It's funny because I am uh, not, I, I don't, uh, I haven't, I wouldn't say I haven't studied anatomy. Um, at least like not traditionally i i've had art classes where we've had to like super, like draw like figure studies where we go really into detail and you're proportioning everything out with rulers and stuff and i hated that class because it was oh, five hours oh every God. weekday yeah. <laughs> every weekday at 8 a.m for five hours oh my gosh it was pain but i did learn a lot to be fair um but i i and i, I hate to say this but i just i just draw people a lot and I kind of just make it up as I go. I think that um, if you want to genuinely learn like proper anatomy and proper mus muscular structure and stuff like that, you go to like, there are great textbooks out there, like art textbooks. Um, there are great resources and stuff, but uh, I wouldn't ask me for advice because I just kind of BS <laughs> it and it, it, it usually works out. Chat will um, ask the other artists. <laughs> That's why we yeah. have four people. Here. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, let's see. What's your tip for drawing hands? Um, oh man, I have I have a great tip for drawing hands. Mm. Uh and um I am going to redirect um any artists in here to there is a YouTuber um named Ethan Becker and he is an animator in the industry. He worked on like Voltron, I think is one of the ones he worked on. There's a couple other shows. Um, Avatar uh, uh, Legend of Korra, he worked on. Um, and he has a couple videos on hands. And he is fantastic. I love his 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 comedy. He has a very specific kind of comedic style. So not your... Uh, not everybody will kind of enjoy his videos, mm -hmm. but um, but Ethan Becker's great. Just look up like on YouTube, Ethan Becker hands, and it's like the first three videos you'll find um, are all great tips. The main thing that he talks about is um, when you're doing hands, a great like way to kind of cheat it. And I might have done it a couple here, maybe not. Um, but a, a great way to kind of cheat it is you want to do the like one one finger out. So. If you're drawing a hand, um, you're going to want to have it in kind of portions. So you don't want to draw every single finger, you know what I mean, like individually. Um, but you want to kind of section fingers together mm. um, where you're drawing. Um, oh my gosh. Um, you're drawing one finger in. And so like this is the thumb here. But you have this like your your index finger is out and the rest of these are kind of in almost like a clump together um, and when you clump them together they just kind of become a shape and you can go from there and make like interesting shapes with it um, but you're not focusing on drawing every single 
like finger individually because when you do that um it can get really cluttered and if you're just trying to make basic shapes um you know you don't need to draw all the hands individually or all the fingers individually um and then from there you can kind of detail it and stuff like that you know you can draw like little parts in between the fingers but if you're from you know way back here um it's like passable you know and he explains it a lot better in the videos but um he usually says draw one draw one finger out of the rest um and then have the thumb and you can kind of pose your hands based on that um but yeah so look up ethan becker super recommend that and uh, i recommend all of ethan's videos um fantastic artist he's talked about uh he did this really cool analysis video on saddest work actually it was really really Ooh. neat um because she's just such a popular animator saddest is a huge inspiration to me um as i think with any <laughs> any animator in in the dream smc fandom um but um but yeah yeah when somebody said in chat when when in dowdy one finger outie that's what he says <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I actually, I paused my chat on this question to see it because someone asked, what should you do if your animation is too stiff slash the fluidness is off? And you you talked about it a little bit earlier of like, you know, look at yourself if your body moves, but I feel like yeah, you know, that's like an interesting yeah. point. Yeah, so something that I would, um, let me switch over to my animation stuff. Um, so I have... There are kind of two answers to this question from me, um, because uh, there is a very easy way to like cheat to to do. And I wouldn't say cheat animation, but if you want to make something look kind of bouncy and fluid without putting in too much effort, um, you will. Let me actually. I have a good example. Oh, good. Just let me know when your screen's back up. Oh, did it close? Okay, hold yeah, on for yeah. one second. Sorry. <laughs> um, I thought I switched it over, but that's Hello, okay. Chat. Share screen. All right. Okay. So um, this was a commission that I did for somebody. Um, and it's a solid example. So um, I'll play this through. So this was the little the little animation that I did, um, and uh, it's not the smoothest thing, but it's a good example for what um, what I want to show. So what I what I do to make animation look smoother, and you can kind of see it. So just like if you look at her hand here, um, when it comes up, um, what I do is each of these frames, I will just kind of. So this is just a little bit. Of a bump up right i'm just taking this and i'm moving it up by a few frames and um what i like to do a lot is i will take this and i'll stretch it and i will stretch it right before the um the next animation comes around so the stretch kind of will like lean you into the pose it's almost like you're making a smear frame without actually drawing the smear frame so you have that lean in and you're just kind of stretching and like squashing these animations it's it, it's an actual term in animation is you know stretch and squash mm -hmm. but you're just moving them by little increments without actually drawing new drawings and it kind of works enough to make it like passable where the um the animation will kind of flow into each other so even if i'm just kind of like i take this and i skew it um it's just giving that singular extra frame makes gives it a little bit more smoothness without me having to draw an extra in between mm -hmm. um because i like to cheat and draw as little frames as possible <laughs> um to make the animation successful so the less i can draw the better so you want to find ways to take advantage of every drawing that you can and if that means me just simply stretching the hand out before it moves to make it feel um, like an in-between, then I'll do that to, to do that. I don't know how clearly I explain that, but if that makes sense, um, just try to take what you already have and squash and stretch them. Um, uh, it, it, if you if you look up, um, oh gosh, I think it's the 12, 12 animation principles. There's um, 
a um, a video on it on on YouTube that goes through all the animation principles and squash and stretch is one of them. Um, I would highly recommend um, watching that and utilizing those those um, those tips and, and tricks. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what I would say. Um, any other questions? I'm gonna look in chat. There's an ad right now, so. Oh, there's an ad right now. Oh, there That's was okay. an ad, but chat, They're let welcome. us know when you're back and ask us more questions <laughs> or ask us your questions. I can't help you. <laughs> How do you find references if you do? Um, I, I take my own references a lot of the times. Majority of the time, if I'm doing poses or hands, um, I have a webcam that sits right on top of my computer and I will take pictures of myself and I will record myself and I'll I look like, um, I look very dumb. I look like an idiot, um, but it is so useful. It is so. <laughs> Mel knows. I've I've sent them. I, I've I've we've uh, found much comedy looking over some of my past references. Um, but I will um, often, very very often, take pictures of myself doing the poses. I have. It's funny. I have a uh, um, a fake a fake sword, like a replica sword, in my room that I just have. And it's very useful for like drawing weapons because I just I, I use it to like hold it to show the weapon. Then I'll actually they'll draw the actual weapon on top of it. Um, but that's super super useful for um, for getting exactly what I want because sometimes you just can't find the reference photo for exactly the camera angle you want or exactly this or that. So just take your own, you know. And as long as you don't mind looking at yourself for a little bit to just draw over yourself, um, it's super useful. Super, super useful. Uh, what program animation are, animation are you using? This is Toon Boom Harmony 20 Premium. Um, it is industry standard animation software. What does industry standard mean? Is there industry not standard? Um, yeah, you'll find um, that there's only like like specific, so like um, Flip a Clip, for example. Flip a Clip is a super basic animation program that you can find on like iPhone devices um, that you wouldn't see like an animation studio using. You know what I mean? It's still an animation program and it's a really good animation program for beginners. Like Saddest's early stuff was all flip a clip, mm -hmm. you know, on finger drawing, which still blows my mind. Um, I the, know. Uh, the, the Dream SMP War Animatic, the first one, was Saddest using flip a clip with her finger it kind of blows my mind um so and then and, and now she uses toon boom that's that's her primary program uh. um but um but um you'll find a lot of animation studios will use stuff like this they'll use toon boom they'll use storyboard pro they'll use tv paint is another one um yeah uh, if you want like free animation that software that isn't that is kind of like toon boom but it but doesn't cost no, as much as toon boom because it's expensive um unless you know where to look but that's not necessarily as as legal <laughs> um but you can look into things like open tunes is um a solid free animation software um if you want to dip into animation um a bit more advanced than just like like drawing frames and editing them together mm. Um, what apps do you usually use for normal drawings, like illustration stuff? I use a PC and I use Photoshop. Um, I have an iPad and I use Procreate a little bit, but I just got that like a few months ago and I'm not super advanced with Procreate yet. I'm, um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big novice, so I can't give my opinion on that very much. What kind of drawing tablet do you use? I use a Huion, uh, a Huion Canvas Pro 16. So it's a screen tablet. Um, it's not a, a Wacom is the most popular um, tablet for PCs, um, but they're the most expensive. Huion is kind of a like a secondary brand, like an off brand. I have um, the same one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. It's yeah. so good. I love this thing. I got it for like 350 bucks because it was like on sale or something on Amazon, and I got it for myself for like a Christmas present a year, a year, two years ago. Um, and oh man, I, it was the best. It was the best decision I made. You can still get pretty far with just a screen with with a no screen tablet. You can get very very far with it. However, once you make the jump, it's 
it's hard to go you back. You can't go back, you, yeah. <laughs> you can't really go back. I am, um, whenever I have to go, I go home to visit like my family um, up in uh, in North Carolina because I'm down in Florida. Um, I bring my, I have my old, my old non-screen tablet and I bring that home with me because it's kind of, I can't carry this thing around, um, but I'll bring it home with me and I'll try doodling with my mom's laptop using it. And I'm like, it's not the same. It's not the same. Yeah. But um, that's the thing that program... I get so impressed by people who like don't use a screen tablet. I'm like, how do you yeah, do it? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 wild. It's if you start with that, then you know that's just you know how it is. Um, but um, but people even like I I have so much respect for even like people who do like stuff on phones like the 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 phone finger artists in chat i have so i i give you guys so many kudos oh, yeah. i don't know i i am so reliant on my little tablet and my little pen um but uh but yeah somebody asked in chat um what program would you recommend for animators graduating from flip a clip um i think open tunes is solid um i haven't used it much but um i if you can get a hold of it which it's it, it, it's depending on where you look um but if you're able to afford it toon boom is i i love toon boom to death i love it to death but open tunes is a solid alternative um i'm not really sure about many other animation programs but i'm certain you can probably look online um for free animation programs but open tunes is the one free one that i know is pretty solid um how do you find commissions um i i was gonna put... ask that wait i'm gonna extend that how do you find okay. a commission how do you know how to like how much money to like, yeah um, pricing yeah, price um so uh how do i find commissions um i get a lot of i get i get i don't get that many commissions i'm not um huge into where i have people you know like I'm, I'm doing commissions in and out all the time um but i will typically get people who will dm me and like asking you know hey can i commission you or whatever because i'll just advertise that my commissions are open um but uh putting yourself out there and like making a post that's like hey here's some examples this and that but my prices the way i price my art and my commissions are usually all based on uh time and how much time i put into stuff so um you want to be, and I recommend this for, for any artist, because most artists undersell their work. The majority of, of artists that I meet um, are underselling their stuff, and they need to stop. <laughs> you need to stop if you're underselling your work. You need to be charging. So let's say you, you, um, you take three hours to make a piece, right? Let's say you take three hours to make a full body um full shaded now and this is this is actually we'll just say let's say okay hold on let me back up a little bit let's say it takes three hours to make a, a piece that you want to that somebody wants to commission you we'll just say that we won't we won't put any qualifiers on it you need to be charging more than minimum wage for your work right so if it takes you three hours you need to i would say you're charging at least ten dollars an hour for your work so that piece whatever it is is thirty dollars at minimum and you're charging more based on how much you value your work but you should not if you're if you spend 10 hours on a piece and you're charging 50 bucks for it you are underselling your stuff you are underselling it and you need to charge more um if you're worried that artists are that that you're not going to get commissioners um because you're charging too much um it's it's difficult because like i i can understand that if you're just not finding people however i think it is more detrimental for you to be undercharging your stuff because you're putting less value into your work and i think that that's that can be I, I, I really hate seeing artists who should be valuing their work so much higher, putting themselves lesser because they're just not finding an audience. Because if you're able to find the audience, there are people who will pay a lot of money for your work. Um, there are people who will pay you the correct amount for your work. It's just about finding those people. And if you lessen your prices, you're not going to be finding that audience. You're going to be finding the audience that will only commission you if your prices are cheap. I don't know if I think that that makes sense. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. Someone yeah. said undercharging also makes it harder to do set higher prices. Yes. Yes. Wait one second. Yeah, so... Brianna? What's wrong?
Sorry. My chat. Uh, host me. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. You're good. You're good. Uh, okay. Um, we have reached hours. I would say like, oh, okay. if there's like anything yes. you want to tell chat more, or if there's like one or two more questions that are quite interesting, uh, we can answer those. All right. I will. I will answer another question or two and then uh, wrap up. Um. What's the most important slash helpful thing to keep in mind for designing characters? I was talking about this a little bit earlier, but um, having characters that have clear silhouettes. So establish your character silhouettes and go from there. Um, the clearer your character silhouettes are, the stronger the character design is. Um, oh, did Mel ask a question? Oh my gosh, Mel, oh, I'm no. sorry. Mel, Mel, ask it again. Uh, is Adobe animation good? Adobe animation is pretty pretty solid. Um, I don't use it much. Pete, daycare for the end. I can show the daycare piece. Um, but that is not a question, Mel. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> that's that is that is not a question. Actually, um, so you've wronged me. I would say in this uh, in these final moments. Um. Oh wow, that was voice. <laughs> Am I watching another live? No, Chris is actually on this stream, guys. Yeah, I'm here. Um, okay, I'll show off this little piece. This is a piece that I made for um, for Pete's uh, stream, and I don't know why people want to see it, but I will show it. Okay, <gasps> look at it. It's so cute, oh y'all. I made it for FCC stuff, but yeah, shout out to 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 everybody that's coming over from my Twitter and stuff like that to vibe and watch. So cute. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Awesome. Well, I guess this will be a great place to uh to end it. But um <laughs> but yeah, so um you can find me at Chris Rin, the R with two eyes on Twitter. Um, and if you want to look at more of my animation stuff, uh, you can find me on YouTube. I'm working on a very, very big project right now um, for uh, the Hermitcraft season eight finale. I'm doing this big old animation thing. And so if you want, if that sounds something that vaguely interests you, uh, you can subscribe to my YouTube and uh, it'll probably be a few months before that's up. But um, yeah, but I am, thank you so much, Nikki, for letting thank me come so on. This was so fun. On. I'm so glad you've carried this, this so by fun. the way. You carried thank this you. section. Thank you. <laughs> I do, I do like talking. So I'm, I'm sorry if I, if I, if I was maybe talking a bit much. No, but, I'm very glad. Uh, I, honestly, I do these streams so you guys can introduce yourselves and to, just appreciate you guys so i am like you. you know the more you talk the better yeah yeah awesome all right well i hope you have an amazing uh rest of your night thanks chat Thank for you. being so nice um and uh, yeah also also quick note if if any of you guys do have questions that i wasn't able to ask you can actually hop over to my tumblr account that is also chris rin and you can just send me uh, an ask and i will be more than happy to answer it um but yeah so thank you guys so much uh hope you have a, a lovely you, rest friends. of your night i hope bye, you do too Nikki. bye you chris too. Bye, thank bye. you so much for joining them <laughs> thank you ah oh, bless them very sweet chat okay quick uh i'm gonna quickly message i think twig is the next one um let me quickly add twig um i will call you in a um but chat how are you for quick check in is everyone fine i know i know i'm not talking to you much right now but i do see you i do read my chat uh i just don't want to interrupt those people um, and I feel like this is like a, a, a nice like way to just, you know, listen to them. Um, but that's why I did the one hour just chatting before this, you know. And I probably will do that on future streams too. I'll like chat to you beforehand. Uh, so, but, but just so you know, I do listen to you and I do see you and everything. I just don't want to interrupt anyone. Um, I hope that's okay. I hope you're all on the same page here, chat. Um... But yeah, I hope you're still good. I hope everything is fine, chat. Um, yeah, you're good. Having a chill day. I'm glad. Glad, everyone. Very cool. Very cool. You got here at least. I'm glad. Welcome. Yeah, we're gonna call Twig now. 
um oh sorry i have something in my eye let's go ahead and call a twig hello uh oh twig hi <laughs> uh, hi how are you doing i'm doing well how are you i'm glad i'm doing well too hearing lots of interesting things <laughs> I've been watching. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, so what we can do is, uh, if you, like, prepared any yeah. of your art, we can talk about your art. Otherwise, I can uh, just let yeah. chat ask you questions. Let me, let me do my screen share again one moment. All good. All right. All right. There we go. There we go. Have you been continuing it, or have you just been? Uh, no, I've. It just. That's I just fair. opened it back up. I've just been sitting and watching. That's fair. Yeah, so I do uh, have stuff like in an album that I can show, just like a bunch of my art. Mm -hmm. Um, so I can show some of like my older stuff. I don't have like super old stuff in this folder because. Like, I didn't get Procreate that long ago, so it's, like, and I only have my digital art that I did on Procreate. Mm -hmm. But I can show, uh, so this is an old one. I don't remember what this is from, but um, clearly my style looks very different than it does now, which I think is very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, how, like, styles develop and such. Yeah, so this was January... Oh. Wait, never mind. This doesn't show it. I made, I duplicated the canvas, so it doesn't show when oh, I made it. Oh, good. Well, how, um, do you do like you a have few like years ago? Yeah, uh, like a few. I think. Hold on, let me. I know which album it was in. So it was, uh, May or July 2020. That's when, like when I got Procreate. So, this is all stuff from, like, when I first got it. Yeah. What did you draw with before that? Or, or what did you do before Um, that? I had, like, like, a free Adobe app. I think it was, like, Adobe Sketch or something. I don't remember what it was. It, But it was, like, some free app, and it wasn't the best. Pro I like Procreate a lot better. I, I enjoy Procreate. I think it's, um... Mm -hmm. a good program and it's like it's like ten dollars like one-time payment so i it's like a lot more affordable than a lot of other art programs are mm -hmm. um so i recommend it but yeah and then this is so i'll just like swipe through them so this is again this was like from sometime 2020 and then here's a little more recent one but these are like similar styles but you can see mm -hmm. how it's like developed into like using more texture and just like i just got like better at drawing and then this is actually the next one is my first ever um minecraft youtube um area fan art which is actually of you so <laughs> um yeah uh so you can see there's like a big jump here though um because i wasn't very happy with my style at this point and i was like i felt very stuck which is um, I guess some advice, if you feel very stuck with your style, that's okay, it happens. Just don't be scared to try something new. I tried new stuff. I stopped using line art because I, um, I hated doing line art, like, with a passion. I don't know why, I just hate doing it. So I was like, I scrapped doing line art from the process. And, um, but this is, I was still using, like, a bunch of layers at this point, which I don't do anymore. I just, I basically draw on one layer. Wow. So this is a similar style to um, the the one of you, but like a little bit more developed. I do like this style a lot, but I don't I don't use it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and then I really like this one. This is one of my favorites that of um, that era of my art style. I love um, the colors. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, this one was very warm and bright, and I I was really proud of it at the time and I'm still really proud of it even though my art looks pretty different now um I think it still looks like my art but I've just changed so much about like how I do it mm -hmm. you can definitely see okay. like the texture already 
Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've always been a fan of texture, so I've always tried to include it in my wow. art. And then this is when I got into more like painting with my rendering, because I would describe how I um, how I draw as as more like painting than than other styles are. So this is when I got more into that, because it's basically it's like all on one layer and just like a painting would be, and it's just like layering colors on top of each other and stuff like that so um i'm really proud of the hair in this one i haven't been able to do hair like this since i don't know what i was on when i was doing this but i haven't been able to do it since uh because um, i was just gonna say i was gonna say once you get into questions you yeah. don't have to show us how you do hair <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm still like proud of how I do hair like currently, but I spent like hours doing this hair, which is like, is that a sustainable thing to like always spend hours just like rendering the same piece of hair over and over again? But okay. I'm still like super proud of like how this turned out. I, I love this one. Um, and then he, this one's older than that one, but I just wanted to show a comparison because this is about like the same like about the same time as like the first one I showed mm -hmm. and um but I redrew this one really recently and I think it's really cool because you can see like how much I've changed and like how much I've improved which is really cool so this is the original one and then that's the redraw of it which wow. I love this um it's like it's like one of my favorites of mine I love the way I did the waves and it's like the colors are so much better than in the original and I I just love like the more painting kind of vibe that it has compared to the original. I, I was just, I think it's a really cool comparison to see how much I've changed. So don't be scared to change, um, to change your art style because it, it has really good results when you're able to push yourself out of like what you've always done and like try new stuff. It's, it usually has good results, so go for it. And then, okay, I love this art. Um, this is funny because um, I don't know if you recognize who these people are. This is um, Ace Race and Sally the Salmon. I see. I, <laughs> I recognize Sally and I was like, that's yeah. not Will though. No, the f okay, so yeah, this is all Wilbur's fault because I did art, um, I thought it was funny that he was like flirting with Ace Race or whatever, <laughs> so I did, I did art of him with Ace Race, uh -huh. and then, and that like blew up, it was really funny, it did really well on Twitter, there was a bunch of really funny replies, um, to it, and then he was talking on stream about, um, about how people were like doing stuff with um sally the salmon and like and ace race how they were like competing or whatever and i was like no what what if they got together so i drew this wow i love that that's Which, the best timeline yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the best this timeline the best right timeline. um but the the funniest thing about this is i submitted it it's like it has that um that weird background and i submitted this in a college um application portfolio and i got in so nice. um, they must have been a yeah. little bit fun yeah <laughs> i did not explain the context and i changed ace race a little bit because i was like yeah maybe i should mm -hmm. un ace raceify it a bit before i send this to a college um and i did not explain because i don't i don't know how i would explain that to a college admissions person but I, I'm really proud of this one. It's like very warm and nice, and I, they look. I like the way they're looking at each other. I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, I, it's very nice. I yeah. love Sally's design. Thank you. Yeah, this is the only time I've ever drawn Sally, but I love the way um I did the hair on yeah. this one is really cool. I don't draw like super curly hair a lot, but I love the way that this turned out. Yeah, you will and definitely then... have to show us. <gasps> I know this one. Yeah. I've seen this one. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, this is um this is Bear S and P Snifferish. I'm a big Snifferish enjoyer. I draw Sniff a lot. So um yeah, so this is uh I'm really proud of this one with the background in this one, because I used to not do a lot of backgrounds because backgrounds can be intimidating. But um I was really happy with this one and like the colors and like the overall like atmosphere of it feels like very 
gray and ominous, but also still like warm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Hi, Blods. Sorry, I'm seeing people I know in chat. Oh, Hi, good. Blods. <laughs> um, and then this is Rambu. This is some uh, Dream SMP Rambu art that I did. Um, I don't have much to say about this one. I just thought it was cool. It looks very cool. I thought the perspective was cool on this one. I ch I altered the perspective a bit. This is also a life hack for if you want to make something feel kind of like, um, like unsteady or like, eh, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> of like, um, it just like curving it, like, um, not curving it, but like slanting it, making uh it's slanted instead of like because it'll look stable if something's like parallel or perpendicular um with like the the edges it'll make it feel more stable and then if you just like tilt it it makes it feel like really unstable so that's a little life hack and that's what i did here so instead of it being um him just like standing straight up it's just like a bit to the side yes unsettling thank you that's <laughs> that's it <laughs> yeah, i'm really bad with, with words yeah. i don't even try <laughs> Yeah. Um, this one's uh, Tommy. Dream SMP character Tommy. I really like the texture on this one. I did. Uh, I did really well with the texture on this one. And I was really proud of that. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. I'm so speechless. Your yeah. eyes are so impressive. I love the hair. I love. Oh, I just you. love the way you draw hair. It's yes, very thank cool. you. That's my favorite thing to draw, and it's a it's a lot of what people notice in my art is always is I that's like the thing people compliment me the most is always um, the hair, which makes me happy because it's my favorite part in my art, uh -huh. and it's also my favorite thing to draw. <laughs> I love drawing hair; it's so fun. Um, and Tommy's hair is really fun to draw too because it's very like wavy and poofy. Mm -hmm. And here's Wilbur. This is art I did for um, Wilbur's merch drop. This is like one of the pictures that they released. So I also draw Wilbur a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I like this one a lot too. Uh, I, I use chromatic aberration, I believe is what it's called in this one, which I've like recently been using so much because I, I feel like it adds like a nice touch, especially with like the vibe that Wilbur was going for with his um with his merch was very like 90s mm -hmm. um so I thought it made it look like low quality video to have like a lot of the noise and the chromatic aberration so um I I like I like the effect that that adds and then this is art that I did of this is me and my two friends um for uh this is art for like a Minecraft server that I'm on. Is is uh, us in our like nation <laughs> um, with our uh, polar bear. That's what it's called. It's called a polar <laughs> bear. Uh, whose name is Karl Marx. Um, we we have a communist nation, so we I named see. our polar bear Karl Marx. Yeah, <laughs> and this is us just having a fun time. It looks very cozy. Uh, yes. I love how cozy yes. it looks. Yes, that's that's what I was going for. Aww. So glad. This is a uh, snifferish and poo waddle. Um, as Howl's Moving Castle, if you know that movie, <laughs> that I redrew them as a frame from it, and because I thought it was cute, and I it it turned out really cute, and I really like it. So. Oh, it's so cute. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And then uh, recently I've been getting into doing a little more like horror stuff. So this one um, is a bit out of my comfort range usually, but I I really like the way it turned out. I think it's really cool. And I've recently discovered that blood is really fun to draw. <laughs> <laughs> and I had so much fun just rendering this blood just like everywhere. It was so much fun. That's impressive. I love it. Yeah 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 wow mm -hmm. and like the way like the um the hand, the hand is, is kind of trippy because it kind of like goes into the neck and it's just 
Very yeah. cool. Yeah, this was super fun to draw because I know like horror art is really cool and it's never been like the thing that I did, but I horror art is like awesome. Um but I I like I like this kind of horror art because it's like it's like disturbing, but it's also pretty and like I would love to do more stuff like that because I think it's really cool. You should. Um, you actually Yeah, should. I had this so much so fun cool. with it. It looks very because as you said, like it's 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 very horror but very pretty, but it also really mm -hmm. looks like your art you know that's like your right, art style yeah, yeah, yeah. into heart it's, it's so cool because because your art right. is very cozy but then that is obviously mm -hmm. very creepy and like it's like cozy and creepy and your brain's like what what am i thinking yeah it's yeah so cool. i love i love that kind of like horror though where it's like something that it's like that should be comforting but then it's like eh. yeah um like for example midsummer like that movie is kind of like the same vibe where it's like all these like flowers and it's bright and pretty but it's also like terrifying mm -hmm. so i think that that's a cool vibe yeah I <laughs> jesse like jesse bug live just said this one scared my mom not gonna lie i'm <laughs> oh no <laughs> i'm sorry T jesse tell mom. your mom i said sorry jesse <laughs> <laughs> um uh, here's some here's a much cozier thing um it's just some sheep in a field which was just like i saw this picture of sheep in a field and i was like i'm gonna draw these sheep in a field Wow. <laughs> in a field the funny thing about this was um like i said before i guess i forgot to introduce myself again oh. um oh, i completely <laughs> forgot that too <laughs> yeah i mean hi guys i'm twig <laughs> um but i stream art and um i I drew the the one before this. I drew this on stream and I had I put like a trigger warning for blood in my title. Mm -hmm. And then I forgot to change my title in the next stream I was drawing this. <laughs> so I um everyone's so like just what left. is going on? Everyone was like what are what are you going to do to the sheep? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that's that was the funny little thing about this one. Um, Twitch, and then another. Is it the what same? was that? What's your Twitch? People oh yes, it's Wella Twig. It's um, the same as in the title um, with my name. It's it's the, I am the same everywhere. I am Wella Twig. So um, you can find me on Twitch, Twitter, or Instagram. I'm also technically on TikTok, but I've only posted two like three months ago and I haven't done anything on it since. But you know, if you want to follow me, <laughs> <laughs> um, this is some generation loss art for uh, that's like Rambu's horror project because I wanted to do more horror stuff like after I did the first one. So this is a similar vibe, a bunch of lots of blood, but still like nice mm -hmm. to look at i don't know <laughs> yeah definitely yeah i i had a lot of fun with this one as well i i really enjoyed it mm -hmm. i also backlighting which is what the lighting is called when it's like um it's it's pretty self-explanatory it's when the lighting is behind you so like the edges are lit up i love drawing that kind of lighting so much so i had a lot of fun with this one because mm -hmm. i think it looks so cool because it really like um outlines it it really like oh what's the word um uh emphasizes emphasizes like the silhouette because it um it lights up like the edges so i think that's really cool and i really like drawing lighting like that so this was really fun and then this is a recent one, I think I showed before, of, um, yeah, it's just, it's me, it's my Sona, just like lying in a field, and, uh, with flowers and a nice tree. We, just, we love the contrast. Very, it's, it's very cozy. <laughs> yeah, no, I really went, I really, like, alternated between, like, horror and blood and then, like, nice cozy fields. So that's the duality of Wall of Twig art, I guess. That's amazing. I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, and that this is what I was working on. So that's all the art I had to show. I have other art though, so um if there's any specific things people want to see, I can show other stuff, but very cool. Um, 
yeah, I guess I, I can take questions now since I went through all the stuff. We need to know how you draw hair. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll try. <laughs> um, I Yeah, I get this question a lot. <laughs> Um, and I, I don't, I never know, like, how to describe it because it's something I just do and I've been doing and, um, I'll, I'll try my best. So I'll go back to drawing this and kind of, like, show what I was doing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, but definitely a lot of contrast is important. So you can see, like, I have the lightest parts. The lighting is quite harsh in this drawing, so like you could definitely see it here. How like these um, light parts are very light, and then the dark parts are very dark, because um, I, that's just like the with hair. It's just like very. Um, it's not really like round usually. It's usually like flat, more flat. But with I don't know how to describe this, but it's like layers of flat objects instead of like a round, like one round object, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So it's like, um, I, th for myself, I like to use a lot of solid blocks of color when I'm drawing hair instead of like more smoothed out stuff, which um, I think gives it the look it does. So I'll like, see, this is like a solid color right here. And then there's another very different solid color next to it mm -hmm. which um gives it its look and then also the way i do texture um the way i do texture also adds a lot is like very prominent in how i do hair because it works very well with hair in general because i do when i like render and i add shading and stuff it's like very sketchy and which works because hair is like a bunch of individual hairs. So it gives it that texture and then I'll add like little strands that are fly away, which I think adds a lot to it as well. Mm -hmm. um, but generally making it very like... Um, like blonde? Kind, kind of, I call it yeah, yeah, yeah. And kind of like um, weightless. Like, making it look, like, kind of light and, like, floofy and flowy is what also what I go for. Um, so, like, how you can see these hairs are up here are bangs, so they're, like, floofing up more and they don't have nearly as much weight on them, so you can see... You can see how they, they, they're, like, poofing up more. And also just thinking of the general flow of the hair, the general shape of the entire hair like all together as one thing um is also very important i'm not very good at describing this i'm doing my best <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah doing great i understand thank it, you and i you know i haven't drawn I'll it look, in a year i'll so. to show it more on like past art i've done i'll go i'll show the the sally one because i i really like how i did the hair mm -hmm. in um for sally but oh, you can see how it's kind of just like a bunch of solid like chunks of hair all put together and then all in like one general shape mm -hmm. is kind of um what what you want to aim for so you have like a shape up here where um here i'll go in a layer on top to kind of show what i mean so you have like kind of this shape up here and then you have like another shape like right here and then another one right there and then this one and then that one and then all together that has like the the entire shape of the hair and then you have little ones in inside it like it's <laughs> it's a lot of shapes and a lot of um altering the colors a lot um i i like to change not only like the value but also like the actual color that it is so you can see like here that looks more purple and that looks more orange and i think that gives it more like depth i also change like the saturation which gives it it just like makes it more interesting to look at i guess is the best way to say it um just changing it up and making it look it's making it look nice. Um, <laughs> let's see if I can look at Tommy's hair. Uh, yeah, you can see it here too. 
change the colors, add a lot of texture into it, and just making it look like bigger shapes and then also smaller shapes um, is important. So it's like you'll have like the little strands and then you'll have like bigger strands and having like not all of your like chunks of hair should be like the same size, if that makes sense. So like, um, here, if we just get on like a new canvas and I'll kind of like sketch out hair to show it. Mm -hmm. um, How long do you usually sit like on just coloring the hair because <laughs> it I, looks like it, it goes honestly back and forth depends. it yeah it honestly depends i'll usually i usually kind of like render everything mostly at the same time because if i like stay rendering one thing i get like kind of tired of it but you um, for the four months? but i have a lot of uh, high mickeys in chat right now are we getting a rain yeah. chat what's going yeah, on <laughs> <laughs> hello everyone hello? hi <laughs> Hi. Hi. Ooh, I don't know. Two months smiley. Face. Okay. Uh, Hope you are doing hi. well. Hi. I, I, I just, know, I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> oh, oh is it an unofficial? Uh, okay. Oh, I didn't know Manatree. That makes sense. Streamed. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Over to I Art think stream. today was his first stream. I saw people I talking about God, it. Today Twitter. was really the worst time to stream, right? Dream is MPL or in the Manatree stream. Good job, Nikki. Uh, no, there was a lot happening. Today. <laughs> Good job, Nikki, for picking the worst time to stream. Yeah. I'm so sorry for like keeping you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Okay. Um, but back to what I was saying. I'll just sketch out like the shape of a head. Hope real quick so the the there we go months. that's a that's a head and i'll just give it hair so if i were to like give it hair and i was just like like that that was the bangs i did and they were all just like the same size that doesn't look great compared to like if i well, let me undo if i do like a big strand there and i do like a smaller one and then a smaller one, and then like a medium one, and then like another big one, or another big one like that. See, that um, looks a lot better, and it, it gives a lot more variety because hair is not going to be like really super consistent when you're drawing it. Mm -hmm. So that's important. And then, that yeah, just sense, like the yeah. general shape. I think adding flyaways adds a lot to, to making hair look nice. And I love adding bangs. I like I struggle to not give characters bangs most of the time <laughs> because I like to have something going on around like the top of the head. I just think I like the way that those shapes look. Mm -hmm. So it just gives the character little fun ears. Um, Cute. Just to... I have seen like in like I've I have noticed in, like the art artworks that you've shown us that you like to draw like little elf ears. I guess or like yeah I do. <laughs> it's very cute I really elf, like it it ears makes are very it cozy fun. yeah yeah both like elf ears and like horns or something mm -hmm. I end up adding a lot to my art um just because like I I guess I like fantasy art is pretty cool so I guess I've had some of that influence but also like just in this fandom there's a lot of artists that will just like add horns and um fun ears to things and i like i like the way it looks mm -hmm. it, it's just like a nice i feel like it's a very simple thing that just like adds a lot to a design mm -hmm. so yeah that's about <laughs> the best i can describe hair so if people want to ask other questions <laughs> yeah chat now now you are mm. allowed to ask your questions i just needed to okay. know i had to know <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> what brushes yeah oh yeah obviously there's yeah MP brushes pencil. i i did go over this um earlier but 6p pencil and the program is um procreate i just saw, just saw someone ask it is procreate on an ipad um, so 6B Pencil is the one I use um, the most. It's what I use to sketch and then it's also what I use for the majority of my um, of my uh, rendering process. So that's like my favorite one. It's a great it's a great um, pencil. And then there's also this one which is called Plimsoll and it looks like this. It's a very nice texture. Ooh. I'm a big fan. I use it all the time. You'll definitely see it. 
in my art. Um, the only- I did make an alteration to this brush, which is actually like a super alter- easy alteration to use. So if you go to grain and just like change the scale, so it's usually like farther down, but you- and like you can't see it as well. So I just made it bigger so like you can see the texture better. That's like- that's the only change I made to it though. Besides that, I think it's just like the default. And then, um, Spectra is the one I use to lay down colors. So basically the way I draw is I'll do a sketch and I'll make that sketch like fairly clean. And then I will put a layer under it and I'll add all of my colors on one layer and then I'll merge the sketch and the colors. And then I'll just paint on top of those mm -hmm. on one layer. So this is the brush I use to like put colors down underneath my sketches. And I like it because it's like, it has like a bit more texture in it than just like a normal like flat brush or something would. And yeah, and then there's one more I use, which is called Thin Ink. It's like in a brush pack. So this does not come with Procreate. It, I got this somewhere else and it's like a paid brush pack, but it's, it's this one. This is the brush pack. It's called Pro Brush Z 2.0. If you want that one, it comes with a bunch of brushes, but this is the one I like to use. Oh, this, I selected a different one. Whoops. Uh, there. Yeah, so those are the brushes I use. Very cute. Um, we have the standard questions of how do you deal with art blocks? Ooh, um. <laughs> I, I'm like not going through much art block at the moment. I've been pretty motivated. Um, but doing like I've found in the past doing stuff like drawing challenges is super helpful because the main place where my art block comes from is, um, is basically just like not having any ideas or not having the motivation to like come up with ideas and like no ideas are working for me. So if you do stuff like draw this in your styles, which are super big on like Instagram, mm -hmm. um, where it's like you have something that you're already basing your art off of, those are super help. Those have been super helpful for me in the past because it gets me over the step of like, shit, what do I draw? I'm just staring at an empty canvas and I don't know what to do. So that's something I would recommend is like drawing challenges, but also like if you really can't draw and it's like nothing's working like take a break um and don't draw for a little while and it'll it, it'll be better um i saw someone say what's your twitch by twitch is well a twig it's the same as um, my twitter which is in the title mm -hmm. um well i saw another question but i forgot it now oh yeah um how did you learn to do anatomy? Oh, I'm not very good at anatomy. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but what I do for a while, I would like literally only do like, um, like, oh, my dog is barking I downstairs. <laughs> I don't know what he is freaking out about, but, um, uh, for a while, I would find references for like literally anything I would draw and then what I would do, which I think has helped me out a lot, is I would I would take the reference picture and I would lower the opacity on it and I would trace over the anatomy and just like get the general shapes, the big shapes of the anatomy and then I would use that, I would use my drawing over the anatomy um, as my reference to then like copy that anatomy and like figure it out so that's my recommendation and then after you do that like a good amount you'll you'll get an idea of like the general shapes of how things work the general proportions of how things work and you just kind of like get the muscle memory down so um yeah that's my recommendation is find references of like you, trickier time. anatomy or like anatomy you struggle with maybe like angles or perspectives that you struggle with with anatomy or like poses that are difficult just draw over them and then use that to try to like replicate it and then you'll get the recipe what did i just say you'll get <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> i don't know oh, um 
and you'll you'll get the muscle memory um, down, and it'll be a lot easier and um, in the future. Because I don't need I still use references a lot, but um, I don't rely on them as much as I used to um, with anatomy. So that yeah, that's my recommendation. Do you oh, have yeah. a specific place to find references? I use Pinterest like all the time. I just scroll on Pinterest like whenever I need something to draw or I need references. I just scroll through Pinterest and I usually eventually find something. Pinterest is always good. There's just everything yeah. on Pinterest. Yeah, basically. Or but if I do have like a specific thing in my head, then I um I also take pictures of myself. I have a lot of weird ones. <laughs> it's usually awkward, but especially with hands because hands are difficult. Um, I take reference pictures of hands all the time because I usually ha so will much. have like the rest Thank of the pose planned out, and it's really hard at that point to find a specific reference that you need to like fit into that pose. So I just take pictures of my hands all the time to find references. Mm -hmm. Um, I was yeah. wondering because obviously you do have like a very like soft and cozy color palette mm -hmm. how do you like go with like painting and and with like you know your color palette what are your thoughts painting on like uh how like i choose a color palette yeah yeah, yeah. so um i usually use like very warm color palettes so um here's a little fun tip here i'll go back. i i'll go back to the canvas i was on to show this but um, I usually use very warm color palettes. And the thing that m many people may not know is you can use cool colors like blue and like purple, and you can still have them in like a warm color palette. And the way that you do that, and this is a fun little color theory thing, is you just desaturate it. So if I have like, like a yellow background or like a orangey yellow background, and then like I want to use a blue, I can like do that and then really desaturate it. And then this will look blue. Oh. But it's like a warm blue, so it'll still fit into the color palette. So if I like show some um, places where I use like cooler colors, like for example, in this one, this is a blue shirt. But if I color pick it, then it's like it's like this green it's like this greeny gray, not, it's like mm -hmm. not actually blue. So that's, that's um, kind of what I do. I also, um, the wonderful, wonderful thing about digital art is you can change colors basically whenever you want to. So um, something I do a lot to make my colors look a lot warmer and brighter is I'll add an overlay. So um, basically, you want it to be like in the middle gray. It'll, you want it to be the same um, value as just like neutral gray. So it doesn't like make the colors darker or anything. Mm -hmm. But then you just choose like, oh, hold on. You choose like a warm gray, like kind of like that type of color. That's like brownie, yellow type thing. And then I add that and then I set it to overlay. And you can see it makes it a lot like brighter and warmer. And I'll usually do this like towards the end of my process, just because it just like, I think brings the colors together really nicely and just makes it look very bright and warm. So I, I usually do that. And then another thing, which I think is prob I don't know if it's on other programs. I'm sure it probably is, mm -hmm. but you can edit the, my dog's barking again. <laughs> oh, <please>. um, <laughs> uh what's it called the curves the color curves so so here there's gamma which makes it darker or lighter and then and you can do it like that or like that I'll undo that um and then you can do like the red or green make it more red or green like that and yeah so you can edit colors afterward using that so that's another tip for color palettes, but generally I just, I just like eye out colors and see if they, I try them next to each other, see if they look good and then I'll edit it later if it doesn't look good. And yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Any tips on composition? 
Ooh, compositions. You, you did like icons uh, a while, like you started a while ago, right? Mm -hmm. always do that. Yeah, composition is not something I know a ton about, but um, doing like thumbnail sketches is always a good thing if you're trying to figure out a good composition. But the good thing about digital art is I'll basically... Thank you, Ariel. Like, when I'm sketching, I'll usually sketch, like, fairly small, like, in the middle. And then I'll move it around later to figure out exactly, like, where I want a character to be placed or where I want a certain thing to be placed. I'll just, like, I'll just, like, move it around because you can just select things and move them. Which is the great Happy thing about, move. um, Hope digital art. Nice but, early. like... Uh, rule of thirds is a pretty basic thing that you can learn, which is basically like placing the character like instead of in the middle, like putting them in the two ones. The the like a little bit to the side. It's like if you split it into thirds, then they're like in the middle of like the two. Um, Thank you for I don't know how to describe it, but <laughs> Yeah. It's like it's like a little to the side, which usually looks good, which I think Tommy's kind of like placed to the side here. Um I mean when you look like at all of them, most of them do like even Will is like he's very much center, but I don't know actually yeah. maybe I'm not wearing my glasses, maybe I'm not seeing it. Yeah, but he's yeah. centered in that one, but like in this one, the snifferish one, this one is like placed more to the side. Um, with like the background in the background. Um I think the rule of thirds works a lot better to put a character to the side when there's a background. So uh, if there's like not really a background, there's not really a reason to do that and you can just put it in the middle. But yeah, mm -hmm. composition isn't really one of my strengths, <laughs> to, to <laughs> be mean, honest. Yeah, it's yeah, something I could improve at. Good, so, you know. Reach the sub gold yeah. chat, yeah! Thank you so much yeah. everyone! Yay, thank you everyone, I yeah. appreciate it. I made it a little higher this time because I was away for so long and I feel like people just could renew their subs, but thank you everyone! Mm. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel so yeah. bad interrupting you guys. No, you're good, you're good. <laughs> uh, I'm looking for more questions. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like some people are asking about backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Um... My recommendation, because this is something that I get, um, that I fail at a lot because I get lazy, is if you want to do a background for a piece, plan on it before you draw the rest of the drawing. Because plenty of times I have, like, like drawn a character and I was like, I might give this character a background. I'll decide after I draw the rest of it. If you don't draw like an entire drawing with the plan of like a sketched out background and you know exactly what it's gonna look like, 90% of the time it's not gonna work. So include the background in the sketch if you want a background or it, it doesn't like, the only time it really kind of worked out was this one. And this one's a pretty simple background, but like I didn't plan out a background for this and I'm sure it could have been better if I did um, because this was kind of just like something I was sketching. But generally I would say like, like this one um, was you, the like I had already YouTube. planned for this it. background. I sketched it out. I moved things around to make sure to look good. And yeah, so mm -hmm. that's my advice. Foreground and background, it's important to make sure both. Um, and this is like something you have to like kind of balance out, but both that like your character looks like they are like in the um, environment that you're putting them in, but also making sure that foreground stands out from background so it's like clear what you're looking at. So I'll give a good example of that one, I think is the snifferish one, um, mm -hmm. the bear and Peace sniff one, because um, a good way to make something stand out is with the values. So for example, in this one, the foreground is snifferish sitting on the sitting on this log. So the colors of that are a lot darker so that it stands out from the background, which has a lot lighter values, a lot more faded background. So you can like, you can see what you're looking at and you can like 
distinguish the character from the background that they're in. But it still looks like they're in the background because the colors are very cohesive, so it makes it look like they're still in this environment, but you can separate them from the environment and see like what's happening. Mm -hmm. So that's really important with backgrounds. Um, tips on coming up with your own art style? It'll happen. Just draw. <laughs> like, um... If you just if you just keep drawing, it'll like it'll just like come on its own because you just like naturally have your own style like as an artist. Like even though my my art has changed a lot over time, it it's still like recognizable as my art even when it's changed. Like it's still mine. And you can tell that it's mine because you're just gonna naturally have your own style. But what I would recommend is finding artists that you like looking at what you like from their art and trying to incorporate that into your own style is super helpful because like naturally your art style is basically just going to be like an amalgamation of is that the word i don't I think, think i so. said that word right no, it, sound, it sounded <laughs> correct it's okay. a hard word um, I, my um, thought my brain was like that's a hard word but i think it's hard. yeah i don't i I know what word I'm thinking of. I don't know if I said it right, but um, it's just going to be like a combination of all of the stuff that you like. So like identifying the things that you like and you think would look good with how you draw is um, very, uh, is what you want to do. Uh, Twig, do you get overwhelmed by commissions? And if so, how do you deal with it? Um, sometimes... In which case, I close them <laughs> and don't take any more. That's Fair, that's what yeah. I do. <laughs> I um, need to. You can keep talking. I I do this like funny messages video thing, and I just got the funniest message in my chat, so I could be had to copy it. Okay. I'm back now. I'm back now. But if you feel like a white right. thing, okay. Um, um, <laughs> Can we see a Nikki fan art? I have this one. I have this one, which is a really old one, but I have a more recent one. Um, where is it? It's in here because it was just kind of a doodle. But there, I've there's this one. I've seen this one. I love it. I don't think I liked it because I wasn't active on Twitter, but I love it. Yeah, no, I I was mad at myself because I actually didn't tag this with Niachu fan art. Ah, <laughs> so I was like, oh, Nikki's not even going to see this. I, I This was silly of me. But Twig. yeah, I'll, I'll like it now. Oh my god, my Twitter <laughs> just completely bugged. Um, um, but while you're already talking about uh, commissions, mm -hmm. how do you price yourself for commissions? Yeah, commission pricing is, is very difficult. Um, because it's just like so inconsistent um I, like i'll see someone with like super cool art and i'll look at their commissions and they're like super like high prices and i'll look at someone with like the same skill level and I'll look at their commissions and it'll be like super cheap so it's it's definitely a really difficult thing to do and um so definitely time is something that you should definitely take into consideration of how much time you spend on your art and it should definitely be over minimum yeah, wage for the amount of time that you're spending so like where i live um the the uh minimum wage is 13.50 so i charge like over that for how, about like how long something will usually take me the issue is it's there's like a lot of variability most of the time and how long stuff takes like sometimes you're just like struggling with something so like don't focus too much on that the main thing i think is like if you're worried you're overpricing if people like even one person is willing to pay for it then you're not overpricing mm -hmm. um so don't worry too much about that but like underpricing definitely happens a lot look at people that you think have like the same amount of skill level as you look at their prices um think about how much time you spend on your art and if like if this were a job would that be like a profitable job to spend the amount of time that you're spending on it and make the amount of 
money that you're making from it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, but also it's like when I opened commissions, I was definitely underpricing like a lot. I, which is funny because I recently found that commission sheet and I was charging like $30 for like a full body full render and I was like what was wrong with me um, because that's what I charge for like that's my lowest price now is um, an icon it's $30 so it's funny to me that like because I know that took me so long and I know I was charging way under um, minimum wage for that but it's like um, so you have to consider all of those things, but also as you grow, raise your commission prices like to fit the demand message. that you have. So if you're getting a lot of commissions and you have to be like closing them all the time because there's too many or something, mm -hmm. then raise the prices because you'll get less of them and then you'll make money from doing the same amount of work. So if you're like getting so many that you don't have the time for, only thirty dollars. That's like a headshot. <laughs> I know. I, it was bad. I was like fifteen, and I didn't know. Yeah, that's and the thing. I, like I, when I try to commission, I, I like for like, like thumbnails or, or 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 icons and stuff. When I try to commission artists, a lot of them didn't uh co take commissions, and I would never know how much to like charge because I because I oh or, it's, or, it's or hard. Pay, yeah, I would be like I, I'm not an artist. I wouldn't know. So I always felt really bad mm -hmm. or like I've always feel really bad when it comes to like artists and their commissions because I know that like, yeah. it's so underpaid. Yeah, it's definitely difficult. I know I had like the the good thing for me is like I a while ago I did like a I did a commission for like a book. Um it was like a children's book. And then there was a few other ones that were like more commercial things and I'm so glad I have my parents have a friend who's like a freelance artist and she was like a really great resource because I was like hey what am I doing <laughs> like what am I supposed to be doing here because I was like 16 and I was like illustrating a book and I was like I don't I'm not a professional artist what am I supposed to put in a contract I don't know mm -hmm. so if you have someone like I know not everybody has that um I was really lucky that I had somebody that I knew that could help me and was like super excited to be helping me but like there's like online guides and stuff but um yeah so if you have someone like that then, then that's great but mm -hmm. yeah uh looking for more questions are you okay with people I think using your I... art as a profile picture? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, as long as it's um, for personal use, like don't sell my art ever. <laughs> um, but if it's for personal use and you credit me, then it's totally fine. Just like put in your bio that it was by me, especially if it wasn't a commission, then you definitely need to credit artists for anything. So um, how to start art commissions? Basically, figure out pricing, do a little sheet with your prices, and advertise the hell out of them. Is basically all you have to do. Um, set up like an email for your commissions, that's what I did. Because um, mm. even if like you're doing commissions through DMs, I would recommend emailing um, like the finished art to people. So, um, because it's like a... Uh, it'll be higher quality because Twitter like both Twitter and Instagram like destroy the quality when you send it through DMs So you should set up like an email and Get a commission sheet so that you're consistent with your prices and Yeah, just advertise that you have them open. It's basically all you have to do I feel like email is a lot safer too because like on Twitter, yeah, yeah, you know, they can just take it mm -hmm. and Run with it, I guess Right, yeah I've seen a bunch of people ask how I draw eyes, so I can like quickly show that. Um, uh, Joey, Joey, I'll go back so into this canvas. Um, and just quickly sketch one. So basically, I draw mine as kind of like a quadrilateral. There's like a big... There's so many different ways you can draw eyes and like people stylize them in such different ways, but I can quickly show like how I do it. So I 
we'll do like that kind of situation for the top and then like that for the bottom. Um, so this is like, imagine there's a nose there. <laughs> and then I draw like a circle like that and then a little circle inside. That's the highlight and then I like shade around it. That's just a super basic um, tutorial on eyes. It's just like that. And then I'll usually add shading like right there and right there and then like a little eyelid like right there. Yeah. Nice. That's that's a super quick um, demonstration of an eye and I'll usually make the top a bit thicker. And then maybe add some like shading, but yeah. Pretty simple. Someone asked, what was your very first damn, I just did legit good art moment. And I thought that was pretty oh. funny. <laughs> oh, that's that's a good question. Um uh hmm. Let me look through like my older art. Or that's not that's not what I wanted. Um I mean, all of these are a great. Yeah, thank you. Um, oh, this one. I loved this one. I still love this Ooh. one. My style has changed so much, but like, I was so proud of this at the time. And yeah, I like the lighting in it, and it's very like warm. The colors are nice. Yeah, that one. I've gotten a lot great. better since then, but like, I feel like this has the same vibe as like my current style does mm -hmm. with this yeah. current stuff i draw i like i like the way that they phrased that question though yeah i know <laughs> <It's> funny <laughs> that was a good question yeah yeah um oh whoops <laughs> uh what program do they use i use procreate What's your favorite artwork? My favorite artwork changes all the time. Um, of mine, I'm guessing? Is yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I guess I mean, that you could be also show someone yours else's. In, yours in general, yeah, I, yeah, I don't think I have, like, one, um, a specific one. I have, like, a lot of artists that I really like. And, um, I have, like, favorite artists, like, pieces from them. But I don't have, like, one that I keep looking at or anything. But this is my favorite one currently of my own is this one i like that one yeah how do you stream procreate um i use a, a program called uh, mirroring 360 which just mirrors my ipad screen to my pc and then i just stream that window as a window capture um I've seen a few people ask about noses. Like hmm, noses. noses. Okay. Um, oh, I'm in the wrong folder. Uh, here we go. Honestly, I also draw noses pretty simple. <laughs> um, it's just kind of like I'll I'll usually I usually draw in like 360, not 360, um, a three fourths kind of view of a face. So I'll use that and then like. So that's one nostril, which kind of combines to be like the edge of the nose. And then I draw the other nostril like that. And then it connects like this. And then like that. And that's a nose. And then I usually shade the nose like darker than the rest of the face. And sometimes I'll add like a little highlight if I feel like it onto the edge. But yeah. I mean, it depends on the face, though. Obviously, like, noses are very... There's a lot of different kinds of noses, but, like, that's just a basic one. Yeah. Any advice for shading and lighting? Uh, remember your light source and just, like, figure out, um, both... 
Using like overlay layers are super helpful for like adding highlights. And then using multiply layers are, is, is really helpful for uh, shadows. So I would recommend using those if you're like having trouble with it. How do you draw lips? I don't usually draw lips, <laughs> but what I do, um, like most, like you can see uh, most of my characters, I don't draw with lips. See, I don't have lips. Oh yeah. I have a mouth, but um, that one has lips. These don't, these don't, that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't. <laughs> But I can show how I do when I when I do end up drawing them. Is um this is how I draw mouths, is you just draw like a little thing on each side and then kinda connect it. And then I just I'll add like a shadow to the top lip and then like a little line at the bottom. And there you go, those are lips. Aww. Yeah. I think you. check. Yeah, I think we've reached an hour now, so let's take right. like one, two more questions, or if you have anything like to explain or to say to chat, but then mm -hmm. like slowly wrap it up. So does chat. your art style look wait? Does your art style look like the art you like? Yeah, mostly yes. <laughs> um, like if you if you guys want to see the artists that I like, um. If you go to my Twitter, and then like there's three dots in the corner, like when you go to someone's Twitter account, and you can click. Oh wait, let me look. Hold on. <laughs> let me look at Was what the like button the, looks the like. Group thingy. Uh yeah, so it's you press view lists, and I have a list that's called um, fave artists. There's like twenty something people in there, I believe. Um, let me look at the list. Yeah, so it's called Fave Artists. There's like a picture of a cat as the as like the thingy. And there's 22 people on it in the members. So those are my favorite artists. If you want to see um, who my influences are on my art, though, that's them. That's most of it. Um... Uh... How do you draw clothes? People want to know about clothes. I'll go through and look at some of- Clothes are definitely pretty difficult to draw, especially like clothing folds is something it took me like a while to get a hang of. But if- here I'll show like this one. Um, so there's gonna be drawing a layer over it. So this- this kind of shape Use this shape a bunch. Like it's just like a triangle. Mm. Triangles are great for folding shape for for um clothing folds. So there's gonna be a lot where the elbow bends, and they're just gonna start from a point and just kind of like go outward. Same like where the shoulder is. There's gonna be some like right there, as you can see. Um, and then just like bigger ones when like the the um fabric is kind of laying flat it'll kind of like come in on itself like you can see like right there but think about how like the um and then up here you can see uh the the fabric kind of folding over itself because it's bunched so just like different it's kind of like the same with hair as like different just like kind of clumps of different sizes next to each other to make it look natural but um think about like the body underneath the clothes and how the body is turning and where things would like would bunch together versus where things would just like kind of lay flat and how the fabric would turn based on um based on like how the body is turning um i don't know if i have a good example of how that works in this album, I can look. Um, hmm. I guess you can kind of see it here, but like how the, I don't know how to explain it, but <laughs> especially like with arms, it's like when I usually will even like, if I'm wearing something that's good for it, I'll just like turn my arm the way that they are and just like look at the way 
like the clothing folds are turning and to just draw that um is a really easy way to pick it up but just like anything um uh references references are great tracing things is great it works it helps you get the muscle memory and understand how things work better so use a lot of references and you'll get better at it because i used to be terrible at it and i'm like pretty solid at it now so <laughs> yeah very cool a lot of people are see saying hands guys i'm not the right person to ask i that's like the thing i'm worst at <laughs> I mean, I think they look great, but... Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's a lot of artists that are better to ask about <laughs> hands than me. I'm, like, I'm just not the best at them. We'll ask Rebecca, we'll ask Rebecca. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remove that question yeah. on. <laughs> hands are hard, they are hard, and I think I will forever struggle with them until I eventually crack the code, hopefully, <laughs> but... I guess again, yeah. just references. <laughs> Yeah, references. I use references for hands all the time, so... Yeah. Sorry, my cat, like, halfway through you talking, decided that a, a paper bag is the best way to play. Um, no, so no. if you hear, <laughs> you heard anything in the background, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Alright, anyways, I think... Um, I mean, we, we went... We, we got the whole hour, so... Um, uh. We, I think we can wrap it up here if you want to shout yourself out. Uh, yeah, definitely. Right, so I'm I'm Willow Twig um, um, on all platforms. I mainly post on Twitter and Instagram, and I also am a streamer. I stream art on Twitch. I will, in fact, right after Nikki ends, I will be streaming some art. So if you want to art stream, check me out. We have a fun time. Um, and you, if you want to learn more about my progress, it's a great, um, it's a, uh, I think I find it really helpful just to watch someone draw. So if you want to learn more about how I draw, you can just come watch me do it. Cause I think you can pick up a lot from that. So yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for being here, Twig. I really, really yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for it. having me. Yeah. I know it, it. It was a lot, a long time. So <laughs> thank you for taking that time of your day. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. I'm glad. I will talk to you later then. Again, thank bye. You so much. Bye, 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 Twig. Ah, I'm so bad at saying goodbye. Chad. How do I say goodbye? Oh my god. Okay, let me message uh, Rebecca. Uh, Very cool. Chat, I'm still I'm staying. But by Twig. Um go and follow a Twig if you want. Very cool. <laughs> Sorry, I got I like halfway through got got, got um distracted because that boy there he thought that playing with a paper bag would be fun. You see him? Look at him. <laughs> Just standing. Oh no, you can't see that. Uh, oh, uh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hello. You can just see like his little, <laughs> his little white lines. <laughs> I know exactly what facial expression he's pulling right now. Okay, well he's gonna stay there. Let's go ahead and call Rebecca, our last artist of the stream. Pride Jess, thank you so much for the four months. I appreciate it. Again, thank, thank you so much, chat, for reaching this up goal. I really, really appreciate it. Very nice and very sweet. Thank you, chat. I hope you are enjoying the stream. Uh, oh. I just saw the syndicate chat being very active, but I can't read it right now. Let's go ahead and, and, and call Rebecca. Let's go chat. Hello. 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 How are you? Fine. I know you've been waiting a while. I hope that's been okay. Oh, um, this dream is amazing. I've been learning so much. Oh. The other artists are super talented. And 
super fun. Yeah, so it's glad. it's been amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad. Oh, wait, let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. Um. Hold on. Ooh, have you been continuing to draw or have you just been sitting? Oh yeah, uh, I'm doing homework, but, um, ah. but not this. <laughs> this is just... Um, to be honest, I did this over another drawing, you, which was my self-portrait. But I really liked the um, mm -hmm. thing I did in the background and I knew I had to explore it more, which is why I was doing that during the stream. Ooh. But wasn't planning to <laughs> so yeah i'm going to revisit this but maybe later because i like it <laughs> i see no that's really cool i love that idea well, thank you cool. yeah no this is supposed to be the original piece so <laughs> yeah I see. um okay wait let me okay so what should i do i I also have some of my first digital drawings here, and some of the animated clips I've made, or maybe answer some questions from chat. Yeah, I'm happy to, like, at first, like, have you show me and talk me through everything, and then uh, okay. after that we can answer some questions. I'm really, really interested in, uh, uh, like, like you like explained earlier, of, like, mm -hmm. um, how you, like, implement your own culture into it. That's, like, I think that's so cool and so interesting, so I would love oh, to have thank you, like, you talk about that. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> well, yeah, um, I think that's been one of the, um, like, some of the earlier, no, later uh, steps into my art process, because at first, uh, this is my first drawing, <laughs> my first digital oh. drawing ever. Uh, oh my god, I, I mean, I like it, I think it looks good to be the first one but there's so much wrong with it oh my god um well as, as i was saying my first drawings didn't really had a lot uh to do with mexican culture because i mm, thought i wasn't good enough <laughs> to implement it and i also wasn't really uh actively searching to do so until i uh, started I, I really like like history and uh, I, I got uh, along really well with my teachers <laughs> so <laughs> they I, I don't know like uh, as I grew I started to get more and more involved in my culture and my, my heritage and stuff uh, talking with my family uh, which has also had had a big um, left a big impression in my art but this uh, these first showings were not that in fact I think they like like so much personality, but I was just trying to figure everything out. Um, and here you can see that, uh, which is something that I still struggle with a lot, but especially I think in 2017 was uh, when this was made, mm -hmm. I was really afraid of colors. Um, because one of the first things I learned as a, uh, you know, to understand art is that colors, you know, um, they can be saturated or desaturated mm -hmm. and if you have a piece where all the colors are just like you know these 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 <laughs> they clash so much they look really bad and it's really hard for the eyes to distinguish uh, all the tonalities so ever since i learned that you can just put a little bit of gray and it may look a little bit more uh elegant mm -hmm. I was really afraid of getting out of that, um, uh, yeah, of that uh, opacity because, I mean, saturation. Because then I thought that if I added just a little bit of color like this, even if it looks good, I was doing it, I was being like too loud or maybe too uh, unprofessional, even if I was like, what, 16 years old. <laughs> So, so yeah, like, I, f I feel like that, that's something that you can really tell in these first drawings. I was really afraid of uh, implementing color. And of course, uh, I mean, <laughs> the, fa the anatomy on the face is just, like, the nostrils are completely unexistent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the ear, oh my god, this wasn't supposed to be a fairy. I like fairies, but they weren't supposed to be a fairy, and I don't know why this happened, but okay. Uh, and also you can see that example there's a lot of space between the cheek and the eye because this i mean technically it's like uh three quarters but i was also doing it 
full face frontal. Thank you, bunny. So I, I mean, I guess I couldn't decide, and I just did both, and now it <laughs> looks like <laughs> like his eye is going inside his face. But okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if this is a him or a they. Uh, this is actually not like not a character I've ever went back to. This is just like my first drawing. Oh, or, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let me close this. Oh. Oh, yeah, <laughs> this is also one of my first digital drawings. I was going through some stuff. I can see that. <laughs> I, I I didn't remember I did this until yesterday. Yesterday that I was um, picking which drawings to show. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I I mean, I think this one is really interesting because it was my first attempt at doing something with texture. Because I uh, I use Clip Studio Paint, which is, which is just like the best tool I've ever used for illustration. It's really good. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, it's better than Photoshop, even if Photoshop is more of an industry standard. Uh, Clip Studio Paint is just... Because it's not that Photoshop is bad, but Photoshop is, uh, first of all, a tool for photo editing. Mm -hmm. Clip Studio Paint and other, uh, like for example, Krita, are specifically specifically <laughs> made for artists. Oh my god, English is so hard. Oh um, good, no worries. You, you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, like like Lip Studio Paint has such an amazing feature, so many amazing features. Uh, it's a lot more intuitive, I feel, and it has more variety in brushes. So I remember that when I first discovered this brush that looks kind of like a marker, I was like, I need to use this because I really like uh, to draw with markers. Mm -hmm. uh, and these umbrellas, I remember they were my first attempt at trying to draw without line art, which I was is something that I heavily, heavily relied on in my first years as an illustrator. I still do, but I feel like I uh, I I have more control over it right now because it can be really restraining, uh, especially uh, if you're used to traditional drawing and sketching. The first thing you do is use a pencil, and then you go from there. Mm -hmm. So when you go into digital and there's so many uh, different ways to start the ro a drawing, you don't want to get rid of line art and I feel like this drawing specifically specifically could have benefited from looser lines maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean of course better anatomy and stuff but yeah. This is like one of my <laughs> most personal drawings. Um, like I, I, I don't really know what it's about, I mean I do but uh, I don't know it's such a weird like, I never do things like this anymore. I feel like they're too abstract, but I don't know. It was <laughs> interesting to see. <laughs> um, oh, this one. <laughs> um, well, of course, uh, I did this while I was... I had, like, a big, big obsession with galaxies and just uh, sky aesthetics, which, again, I still do, but... Uh, well, the thing is that I thought this looked really cool because I... But the only thing I did was like play again with the brushes, and of course, if you grab a really cool brush like this one, <laughs> it's gonna look pretty no matter what you do, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, uh, this was just like a practice, and of course, again, anatomy terrible. I was really struggling with doing uh, profile faces, and as you can see, like, wait, let me use white. Uh, I mean, Oh god, no, this is horrible! <laughs> like, there's no brain! <laughs> the bridge of nose is going absolutely nowhere, again, no nostrils. But... I don't know, the, the, these past three drawings have all been like experiments I did with, mm -hmm. with my first tablet. Um, they weren't for anything at all, it was just... I, I, I wouldn't even qualify them as personal art because... I mean, they maybe said something about me, but it was mostly to like try and see what I can do because I was just so um, blown away by all the possibilities that digital art introduced mm -hmm. but I just had to do like whatever <laughs> but yeah um, oh okay Ooh. this <laughs> yeah this um, this is the first drawing I did to um, li like with a purpose so, I don't know if it's too obvious to tell, but I was a big overachiever in high school. <laughs> and whenever we got, like, an assignment that required the minimum piece of art, I went all out. 
uh, I love to do it. Um, and I, 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 again, I grew up around really uh, supportive people and friends and teachers. So everyone was like, whenever I got into a team with someone, I always did the art and everyone was like, yes, we got Aww. the artist in the team, <laughs> which was really sweet. Yeah. Uh, so this was a story I, we had to do to write like a fable. And the one I did was about nymphs, because I really like nymphs, is that how you pronounce it? I think so. You know, yeah. the little water fairies. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't even remember, like, a lot of what the story was about, but I think, like, I don't know, some guy found, like, a river and... I don't know, it contained nymphs. And since there were so many characters, I thought that this was a good opportunity to try and do correct some character design. Especially because, um, well, I remember back then I was really, really, really obsessed with Frozen. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the movie, I mean, it had come out already for, um, like, I think, three years ago. But, but I was still really obsessed with the process because it was the first time I ever got to see, like, in real time, like a Disney movie being released and being able to use the internet to search all of the behind the scenes and so and and yeah mm -hmm. but I do remember that one of my biggest problems and I, it's still one of my big, biggest problems right now is the way they designed female character faces um, you know this doll face structure yeah which I liked I mean the characters are really pretty of course but someone who has always struggled with a little bit of uh, you know body image <laughs> and stuff, mm. uh, especially in the face. I, I started to notice that my drawings were also doing that, like all women look, this, like, look the same in my drawings and had really specific uh, features. So I wanted to use this story to try and force myself to do different uh, types of faces, which, I mean, for <laughs> back then where I was really afraid to exaggerate some features because I thought they were going to look because the thing is, uh, our faces are really different. They're all really pretty, but we also um, we have a lot of, of, of exaggeration, and things don't always match, and that's yeah. okay. But when you learn art, you are usually um, they usually teach you a very specific composition of features, um, and when you deviate from that, you feel like you're doing something wrong or something ugly. So yeah, um, I feel like uh, that's what I was traveling here because I mean they, I think the three of them look different enough, but in the end they also look kind of similar. Mm -hmm. The only difference was maybe the face shape overall, but the eyes and everything is just the same. Uh, and the hair, of course, is different. That's that's the easy part. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's yeah, that's a really good point though. Um, of like especially like cartoons and like, princesses and like anything like animated most like yes. you know obviously like now with like Encanto and then how them having like you know oh more, yes. like, yeah like mm -hmm. I th like especially like nowadays we luckily have like at least some diff more different looking animated people but especially back then it was all the same yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, and and at first I had I I understood it because you know, they had to look a little bit uh, samey in order for the audience to be able to connect with them. If the pro yeah. I mean, the protagonist always has the most, uh, let's say, boring face because then you can see yourself easier. Uh, for example, I don't know, Ursula or other Disney villains have these really strong features because they're alien. They're supposed to look really exaggerated, while Ariel and Belle, they're easy to see, they're pretty, but they're also really easy to... So it's, it's an easy face, it's what I mean. Mm -hmm. But uh, just like you said, uh, films like Encanto, Moana, for example, which have just these, yeah. all these characters with different and beautiful features. Uh, I, when I saw Encanto, it blew my mind how I saw people that I knew. Like uh, you, you really don't see how important it is to to notice those things. But when you you see a movie where the characters look like your family or your friends, you obviously can still relate to them because. That's just the way a face works. It, it's amazing. So, so yeah, I'm really happy with the progress we've made in animation in mm -hmm. that regard. Yeah, I totally um, agree. Well, this is from the same story. Oh yes, uh, the nymph befriends a deer in the in the forest or something oh. like that. Yeah, she's the main character, of course. <laughs> um, I remember uh, I was really scared of this drawing because it. Um, 
um, animals are not like my my forte. Uh, they're really hard and they're really different. And even if deers are like super cute, and I've also tried to draw, draw them a lot, back then I was like, just the face, not even like the ears, just the face. <laughs> I don't want to try to do anything else. Uh, but I think it, it worked out because it's, you know, they're too close, it's kind of like a cute moment, mm -hmm. so it works for what it is. But also another thing that I really um, struggled with, or I mean, I guess I didn't even try, was to add more texture to my, my drawings. Uh, because after I got used to the pen tool, this one, mm -hmm. um, I really like this because it has a lot of, um, what can I say, personality, and I could control a lot of the uh, shape of my lines uh, according to my how much pressure I put on my tablet, which is cool, and it works just super clean, but it's really bad for... <laughs> and everything else that's not a line so the colors and just um, everything inside the characters looks maybe too plain I tried to fix it, this is supposed to be hair but of course, I mean I guess it works but it just looks too plain, it looks too um, too graphic mm -hmm. um, I like the way you like um, painted or colored the deer though, It it that's really cute oh thank you <laughs> thank you so much yeah, uh yeah, again, I, I mean, I guess, um, I'm, uh, I think I'm being too hard on myself because I really like this, I mean, I like looking back at this and saying, well, I was trying and, um, I was doing this while in school, like, this wasn't a priority for me, but I still really wanted to, because, um, I mean, when I turned this in for Spanish class or literature class, of course, the teachers weren't going to rate my art, mm -hmm. I still was, like, expecting a lot of myself because I had this new talent and I had to use it as much as I could, so... So yeah, even if, of course, I find a lot of things wrong with it, um, it's, I think it's cute. <laughs> so... This is another drawing from the same story, I think this is the final scene. Uh, because I think it was supposed to be a play, I, I don't know, <laughs> that was like four years ago. <laughs> but... <laughs> I really like the pose of the, I mean, even if, of course, the elbows are really wonky and everything, I, I remember I like this piece a lot. But the most important thing of this piece is that it made me realize that I really, 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 really enjoy doing backgrounds, which is something that I did not expect from myself at that time. Mm -hmm. Because I, I always saw character design and I was like, that's so cool, I mean, you get to create a whole person and their personality and their clothes, and that's amazing. I still like it, I like it a lot, I do a lot of character design for commissions and stuff but I also do a lot of background work and and, and I think I, I enjoy it even more because um, I mean especially when it's indoors you get to describe the personality of someone who owns a house or a room or whatever uh, without them being there, you know so, for example, in this piece, uh, sh this is not her house, this is like a human's house and she just snuck in the window, I remember. And this is the first time she, the first time she saw fire because she was a nymph and she lived in the river. Aww. But I remember I, I, <laughs> I spent a lot of time thinking of the human who wasn't even a character in the play and the way they... Um, their house should look, and of course this is too plain, I mean it's, it's just a cup and, and the candle and these like theatrical um, are they, uh, curtains, uh -huh, yeah thank you, <laughs> and the balcony you know, but but just for those like four things I spent so much time wondering and studying and how, how did houses work in medieval Europe and how and what kind of cup would he have, I remember I, I even like um, drew the cup a little bit broken a reference to Beauty and the Beast at first. Mm -hmm. Then I thought that the person who lived there had to be a very tiny, per a tidy person and a very clean person, and that they wouldn't, for no reason, have a, a broken cup. So I discarded that idea <laughs> for no reason at all. And and yeah, I just um, this looks really wonky, but this was a drawing I do remember a lot because this is a drawing I, I rem remember a lot because um, it made me realize that there was something in design and backgrounds that really uh, struck a chord with me. So mm -hmm. yeah. Aww, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. 
I hope I'm not talking too fast or if no. I'm being clear enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. I'll let you well, know if you like if there's like anything. But ah, please. Yeah, well, right. I already told you, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, when I, when I get too nervous, it's, it's like, oh my god. <laughs> because I can write and I can read and everything is perfectly in English, but when I talk, it just... Mm -hmm. It gets really awkward, but well. Um, also, <laughs> I find it really funny that... Uh, hours ago in where when we were all talking i said that water was like a motif uh, <laughs> yeah. in my drawings but literally everything i've shown you has water in it so it's not like just a motif or it's not subtle it's just there That's water true, I, yeah. I, I just like to draw water <laughs> yeah Aww. that's uh, nice though. i feel yeah. like that's very unique i feel like not many people like include water that much into their art you know oh oh thank you I don't know. I I, I love it. I, I really like it. Um, yeah, this was another personal piece. I think this was this wasn't for any um, work or project or anything for school. I just wanted to do. Why did I do it? I don't know. But it was cute. Oh, I remember because I just saw a really cute movie which is called Song of the Sea. It's an animated movie. Really good. I recommend it a lot. <laughs> And it has the most beautiful, amazing art style. Uh, it's about a little girl who turns into a seagull and... No. Uh, what do you call... Mermaid? Like a sea lion, maybe? Oh, oh yeah. Um, like a seal. Yeah, the, yeah, thank you. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> seagull. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, a sea lion. And the scenes underwater uh, have like these beautiful glowing bubbles and and everything looks so so amazing. So I, I, I tried to replicate this with like um, a funny story I came up with. But yeah, again, this is also just very experimental. This was all kind of for myself. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so... These were, um, well, let me show you this one first. I had to censor some of them because, as we know, boobs are really dangerous. I know, they're, they're terrible. So, <laughs> yeah, no, you never know what they'll do to you, so <laughs> yeah. we, have to, we have to hide them. Yeah. <laughs> so these were my some of my first posts on Instagram. Uh, I did this during lockdown. I know it's a big jump from the last drawing because the last one was like for... Um, 2007? Seven, I mean, 2007. <laughs> wow! Uh, <laughs> sorry. No, no, no. The last one was from 2017, I think. Ah, yeah. 16, 17. Of course, that's a, the that's a number I wanted to say. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, and this one is from 2020, but um, there's like a really long gap between my drawings because uh, after that, I got into a special program in high school that was really... Uh, stressful so i really couldn't um draw a lot mm -hmm. so when the pandemic started i suddenly had a lot of time and i wanted to do uh to revisit some of my old pieces so yeah, this is something i did i did in 2015 uh hand drawn and i wanted to try something new in my digital art i've always liked fairies but i also wanted to experiment with new um expressions and poses and of course colors so yeah, this was also one of my uh, like the first draw, some of the first drawings I shared with the internet, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think I still struggled a lot with colors, especially for the skin. It may look a little bit too um, like too quiet. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have like that uh, a lightness that the skin has. But I also remember I didn't really like the wings. Because, well, this is a tip for any digital artists, if they need it. Um, when you discover that you can do opacity digital art, it feels amazing because you can't really do that in real life, at least not with colors, maybe with watercolors, but then you can't just, I mean, you can't change um, the way you draw or, or the density in which you draw things. So whenever you want to do something transparent, the, you're the first thing that comes to mind is to use opacity, which works sometimes, but it doesn't really give it that flair that transparent objects in real life have. Because, yeah, this may be transparent, but it's a lot more uh, expressive if you just draw really hard contents and then... 
some light. And then it's transparent. <laughs> There's no need to put anything inside and just lower the opacity because um, that's not the way it works in real life. So when I did, the I don't know if I made myself clear but during that. Happy <laughs> but um, the gift itself. when no, I did the wings for sense. this, I yeah. wanted them. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, I wanted them to look, look like bug wings, so as you can see here, there's a lot of opacity that then I try to like um, correct by adding more depth, but because it was all in the same layer, it was never going to look bright enough compared to this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I learned a lot during that. I, I still like this. I like the textures that I did on the skin. Um, I like the way I drew the hair and everything. Of course, some of the anatomy is still very wonky. I, I wasn't really like studying a lot of anatomy there, but um, it's uh, it's still it yeah. looks really good, and it's a it's already a big improvement from like the prior one. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank Actually, you. I'm really happy I did this uh, because I, again, I ha them. back then I didn't do commissions or anything, so it was just like personal art. I'm really angry, however, at myself because this was supposed to be a Quetzal, which is the best bird to ever exist. <laughs> and they have this really cute um, hairstyle <laughs> in real life, but I don't know why I didn't put that in, in Aww. this drawing, even though it's like the best part of the bird. Just, just yeah. keep it that way, just leave it that way. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it like that. This yeah. is a new version. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, oh, but they're so pretty, and they do in real life have like these beautiful long wings, and they're amazing. They're the best bird ever. Aww. No, this one is the best bird ever, but they are the second best bird ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is another one. Um, I, I made all of these drawings in 2015, I think the same day. Mm -hmm. It was just really into fairies. Ah, because um, my mom got me a book on how to draw fairies, so I was really excited, and I drew like three fa fairies the same day. Aww. Um, I really like them, I really like fairies and just fantastical, fantastic animals and creatures and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is like another another try. I'll, I also wanted to do like uh, different body types, even though this, they are still pretty thin. I wasn't like comf comfortable enough to try and expand myself more. Um, I was still trying to you know, do a little bit of diversity. I got really better at, uh, at that later, but here I was... Because, again, everything that deviated from the norm of what an ideal body type was you felt don't wrong. See like, it. I was... Yeah, 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 you don't see examples of that, and, and, and you feel like you're doing anatomy wrong, even if it's not the way the real body works. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah, I also really like... Again, uh, I had the same problem with these wings. With the opacity. I like I... the little like um, textures in there though. They're really cute. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, these were based... Oh, here I was already like uh, studying... Uh, this is specifically Mayan um, like patterns. They do a lot of this in their art and their um, architecture. So this is based on Mayan, which is uh, the part of Mexico that's Cancun and um, southern Mexico. Um, yeah. So it's time from there, so <laughs> I was trying to reconnect with my roots. That's nice. Um, this is the last one I did. I like the wings from this one a lot more because then I just didn't bother with opacity. I just wanted her to have cute autumn leaves. I really like the way they turned out. I also like like the texture they had and everything. Yeah, I think this one was my favorite, even if. Oh god, <laughs> the anatomy on the nose is super wonky, there are no nostrils and it feels like this and this are the same muscle. <laughs> but other than that, I really like this one. I think this one is the best of three. Oh, did you add stretch marks? That's so cool Oh, too. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember I, I did that because... Um, well, this... Uh, 2020 was like a really weird of the year because after I got out of high school um, okay this is going to go a little bit um, this is a changing the subject but um, the feminist movement here in Mexico took a lot of uh, power and 
a lot of my friends and myself included started to investigate more about that because while I didn't really have like a lot of problem with other girls in high school, it was still a pretty hostile um, environment mm -hmm. because I mean, it, it, um, of course, the world is um, may have some say. Um, our cultures work different so for example things that maybe in america or in europe were already like pretty well known and accepted and you knew what was wrong to say to women those things usually take longer to come to other countries mm -hmm. uh which sucks for a lot of little girls but oh yeah the thing is back then uh when feminism was started to really gain traction um I started to listen more about body positivity and how we shame women for the type of things that they do to their or they have in their bodies. So I remember I did this because I noticed I had <laughs> some stretch marks and I really didn't have a problem with that. I think they look fine, but I was all um but I knew that I didn't have to like them. So when I did this drawing, I wanted to just you know tell myself that it's okay because hell yeah. I mean, <laughs> they're cute. They've been fun to do because you get to like so a specific brush that blends well with the skin, but with just uh, a little lighter tone. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're really fun to draw, actually. <laughs> they look so real too. I'm looking at them like. Oh, thank you. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really like that about this drawing. Um, yeah, that's amazing. I'm so impressed. Very cool. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> um, okay. Let me close this one too. Okay, this was also in 2020. This was the last rowing I did for um, October of that year. Um, I still can't believe that I managed to do a whole Inktober, especially in 2020 because, I mean, no, uh, 2020 was actually perfect because it was lockdown, uh, otherwise I wouldn't have had time. But still, it was so it was hard. <laughs> I can imagine. I, uh, yeah, I don't know what I was on, like, if I tried to do that, I would, I would die, it's impossible. I, I, I don't know how that happened, but I'm really happy I tried because, um, well, I'm not going to show the full 20, uh, I mean 31 drawings, but, um, Every 10 days, I did a digital drawing. This is another one of them. Wow. Uh, but then the rest of the days would be just like this. Um, traditional ink Aww. drawings. This one is my favorite. I think it's really cute. So this one's traditional? Yeah, this is uh, Sharpies and... Cute. Just pen. Like pen, yes. Wow. And yeah. Uh, this was like a very uh, specific challenge what you had to do you had to draw uh, witches every day so it was just you know, witches and every day was like mushroom this one was axe the first one was pumpkins I don't have all of them because again some of them are mm -hmm. pictures um, but yeah I really really like this and I was really proud of myself when I got to the last one because I did it <laughs> I drew for uh, 31 days non-stop I wanted to cry. I was super tired, but I was also really... <laughs> yeah. Um, again, really I really impressive. recommend it. Um, I, I know it's hard. You don't have to be too hard on yourself, especially if it's just like a personal challenge. But if you feel like you're going through a, a, an art block, or if you don't have, if you feel like you don't have enough original ideas, push yourself to do one of these challenges because uh, you do have a lot of original ideas in you. Maybe you just need like some prompts and some pressure to get them out, but they are there. So, and in the end, you end up with like this amazing, super full portfolio of characters or concepts. And yeah, it was just amazing to do it. I am so impressed. I love the axe one. The axe one, I think, is my favorite one. That one's oh. so cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. The only thing is that the axe, and I didn't notice this until I, it was done, because again, I had to do this in like a day, is that the axe is backwards, or it's... Um, oh, really? Yeah, I mean, if she was uh, going to swing an axe... Of course, The yeah. axe would be facing <laughs> the other way. Uh, but okay. Uh, it's fine, she I mean, spins I it in the, in the yeah. uh, flashy <laughs> swing, she also spins it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
She doesn't know how to use a knife, but that's part of her character. I love you. Wow. Thank you for existing. <laughs> Thank you, oh, Molly. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um. Oh, this. This is a drawing I did for a friend. Um, he is a musician, and I. He asked me to do a lot of uh, cover art for his music. So this was for us one of the, one of his songs. Um. I don't know, he just played me the song and this image came to mind. Uh, I also wanted to do more, uh, to play a little bit more with uh, lights because all of my drawings have either no specific light or were like in the dark. So I wanted to do something really bright. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. Even again, if there's a lot of. Um, because I wasn't really good with anatomy back then, mm -hmm. but I was good at, at hiding it. <laughs> so, uh, kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see, like, probably some of her nose would ha have shown in this angle, maybe. I think that looks right. Mm -hmm. But I still like really like this piece. I also um, I rem remember that uh, to do this, I was looking a lot of uh, pictures, uh, cottagecore inspired Pinterest uh, <laughs> uh, ideas. And one of the things that really struck with me was the way your eye reacts when a picture has like a little bit of blur. Because in real life, you can't focus um, on all the things like, uh -huh, yeah. So we did, uh, uh, I tried this with this drawing and it, it just adds like a lot of depth and I was really happy with the way it looked. I think it looks cozy and realistic. Mm -hmm. Well, I really like the way the plants yeah, turned out. Yeah, I too. was just gonna say, the plants, it looks so cool. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I haven't looked at this in, in a while, like I, I don't revisit my drawings enough now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I like the like, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but like, it's like, grainy even like when you like especially the window yeah. you know i really like yeah that. i was trying textures yeah that's very cool oh thank you um oh this one um was also in 2020 i did this the very next day no no i did this the same day i did my last witchtober drawing because i knew that the next day dia de muertos which is the next day uh, after halloween mm -hmm. i wasn't going to have the time to draw so i did this incredibly fast I, I can't believe how fast i did this one um like maybe it took two hours which again i, I think i wasn't to something there because That's it's impossible crazy, for me yeah. to do this thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how this happened, but, um, well, Dia de Muertos is one of my favorite holidays. I mean, it's not really like a holiday, but one of my favorite time of the year. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so yeah, I really, I, because I was about to say like, okay, I did like an entire month of Halloween. I can just leave this alone, but no, I had to do something for Dia de Muertos as well. So I did this and, and I, I mean, I can tell that I was really in a hurry because for example, this part with the, um, uh, beer and the cigarette well the cigar uh, is really wonky because you, you can't really tell like how the perspective is working here if the cigar is over the beer or behind the beer no no no, uh, no. I just like the beer is it. smoking the cigarette oh my god yeah <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> oh my god I fixed it <laughs> God, yeah, oh my god, that works so well. I mean, this can even be like the eye. Yeah! Like smoking, oh my god. Okay, well, yeah, you fixed my drawing. Thank Very you so nice. much. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, other than that, uh, <laughs> than that perfect detail, um, this is supposed to be like a close-up of an ofrenda. So, so, yeah, I like this one. I like the colors. Um, I was really starting to get out of my comfort zone because I usually do a lot of blues and like cold colors but ofrendas aren't that like they they have to be really uh, warm and full of orange and stuff mm -hmm. so it was good to like have the, mo uh, the motivation to do justice to this day so I could like push myself to try bolder colors um <laughs> I don't know if you can see this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So these are together because they are both uh, 
covers for the same musician another musician it's not my same friend <laughs> um but i really like them because again this all, all of these are inspired by music so he first plays me his um singles and then i come up with everything you know uh, this was all kind of my idea after he gave me some of the like insight on his work and yeah uh -huh. so i don't know i really like this one <laughs> um I was trying to go for like kind of a comic book style in terms of lines. I wanted to look like very juvenile, uh, very inspired. I don't know if you know him, but his name is Piccolo. He is an artist who draws Teen Titans yes! art. <gasps> I love Piccolo. He's one of my favorite yeah. artists. He's absolutely amazing. He's awesome, and I think I grew up with him because uh, before he did Teen Titans art, he also did like uh, art about a. Uh, girl who Icarus I think Icarus and that's my favorite art like like thing oh, it's so yeah, cool yeah he's I, awesome yes. I grew up with that yeah. too I'm it, it's very cool <laughs> oh I'm glad yeah no he's amazing and I mean of course this is nowhere near as great as he did but I remember I was trying to uh, be inspired by him um so I did my lines a lot bolder and a lot um more prominent mm -hmm. but i also wanted to have like sound perspective and um for i wanted everything to be to feel open especially because this is a small room but uh you know that's something weird, weird going on with all the water and you know mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's a fantastical scene so i don't know i wanted to play with that um i don't know i don't know i'm really happy with the way this one turned out i'm really happy with the shapes i chose to do even though it's a little bit messy now that I see it close. I think but... it's still like, even though like it, it is messy, but it's like good messy, you know? Like it, it, it very oh. much like, like that's how, how that's... you want it to look. Oh, you thank know? you. But yeah, I'm going, I can say it's, it was an intentional and then it'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, because you can still, yeah. you still focus on the character because the character kind of has different colors, but um mm. i don't know i feel like if it was very clean it wouldn't have the same effect yeah maybe yeah it would have looked maybe too um like it you wouldn't understand that things are floating in mm -hmm. water for example i think yeah maybe yeah um oh, and i wanted to show this one in contrast with this one which has no lines <gasps> this is also some art for the same artist um I remember I was really scared of this one because, um, again, it had no lines, but also, like, I didn't know how to uh, bring all of the textures together. And now that I see it again, maybe I could have done added a lot more elements, more nature, more plants, even more animals. But also, um, I think it turns it turned out really peaceful, which was the main intention for this piece. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Um, that I feel like I feel really guilty because um I mean as you can see like my art is all over the place. I haven't really stuck with one single style. Oh, I'll come to this one later. I mean and I also you know, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, no. Um but I also think that it has prevented me for, from trying something because I was going to say uh regarding uh, the other artists is that I don't really do a lot of fan art, for example. Mm. But I really want to. You have no... <laughs> when you first started in Origins and you were a mermaid and you mentioned how you wanted to live in like kind of an Ariel's cave and everything, I was super inspired by that. And, and I have this notebook where I write all of the things I want to draw eventually. And I said, I need to do some art artwork, on, some fan art on Nikki. Uh, because that's just amazing, it's perfect, but I never make time for myself to do that, which, um, I mean, it's really bad. I mean, it's it's okay, because I have a lot of commissions and I like doing them, but I don't really put a lot of time uh, into fan art. When I do, I'm really shy around, uh, like, I don't really interact with fandoms because I'm really shy. <laughs> I don't know how to enter them, so I just look at stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that's something that I wish I could uh, put a lot more time and effort into just fun art of things I enjoy. Mm -hmm. That's fair. I mean, maybe, you know, you will find some time between commissions. Yeah, maybe this year I think I, I'll try to do that. Aww. Um, 
Okay, these are all <laughs> three different pieces uh, for a children's book that another one of my friends is writing. About a chihuahua who falls in the um, sewers and meets a, cro a crocodile. Aww. And I'm just really happy with this one. <laughs> I love this story, I think it's so cute, and I've, I have so much fun doing these little uh, illustrations. That's so cool. That's so cute. I hope this is not too creepy <laughs> for kids, but never mind. No, I'm sure it's not. I've seen some creepy children's books. I grew up in Germany. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have okay. scary bedtime <laughs> stories. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> okay. Um, Oh well, yeah, th this is uh, more of my recent work. Uh, I think I've gotten a lot more comfortable with my style. I, uh, I'm trying to emulate more of a traditional vibe uh, with like color pencils and all. Also some cleaner shapes, some more defined um, shape language and composition. But, but I, because, if, because it's a children's book and the text is going to be really small, I have a lot of space to work with uh, so, I don't know, I, I can just come up with these crazy um, ideas for for just images in general and they will work because you can just put some text here. Mm -hmm. it, it's been really freeing to work on this one. And I, I'm really proud of the way this expression turned out. <laughs> um, I want to see the book when it's, when it's done. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll make sure to, to share that. Oh, yeah. I don't know I'll when it's going it. to be done. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, he's going to post it on Instagram. Oh, oh sorry, on Amazon Books. So, oh, nice. yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, oh, well, yeah. This is from that. I think it's... Oh, and these are the drawings that I showed you before. Mm -hmm. um, again, censored, because boobs are dangerous. Um... Yeah, I already talked about this. These are, are I think, some of my favorite uh, pieces. Even though they are two years old, um, and I, I, I do have a lot of problems with them. Like, there are some things I'd like to fix. I really like the way uh, I designed these characters, and I... Oh, I'm proud of them. I, I'm happy about them. <laughs> I like them a lot. And they were also, like, the first attempts I made into doing textures, with, which is also something very important for me to... Uh, for the drawings to feel, I don't know, alive. And I remember these breath uh, were really like good exercises for me to practice shapes, but most imp importantly, like texture and volume into object, uh, abstract objects because breath doesn't have like a really consistent shape, mm -hmm. except for donuts maybe. So, I mean, the, I mean these are all like uh, traditional pastries in Mexico. So when my friends told me that they could recognize them, I was like, okay, uh, I made it. That's the most important part. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I think that's like one of the most like impressive one. things um, I've seen about you, which is like, like I said already, and like I'll probably say a lot of the times is like, in, <laughs> including your, your um, what is it called? Your, tra your tradition? Like your traditions and like everything like um. that into your art. I really like that. That's very, very cool. Aww. Oh, thank you. I, I love I love to do it. Uh, and there are amazing artists here in Mexico as well who just do it in such creative ways. I'm, all, I'm always so inspired by them. Yeah. Uh, it's been... I'm really happy with that about my art. I think it's... Because, uh, for example, the first drawings I showed you, it was during a time where I was really... Uh, unable to take any sort of compliments about my art and I remember a lot of my friends who were supporting me and everything th everything said that it's cool that I know how to draw but I also need to learn to take compliments but I was like no my art sucks it's so bad <laughs> mm -hmm. and and now I'm a, at, a, uh, at a really happy place with it because I can recognize that I still need to make improvements and I know which improvements uh, which kind of improvements I need but I still like what I do um, and I'm proud of it, so that's something uh, that I'm really happy with right now. That's very nice. Yeah. You deserve well, this it. Is you, like... you should be able to, you know, take oh. moments and recognize your art for what it is. Thank it you. Is very good. 
Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, well, I think this is the last uh, thing I wanted to show. Coming back to backgrounds, this is some work I'm doing for an independent animated pilot, which is going to come out soon. This is the... it's, it's called Wildcard and it's amazing. <laughs> it has amazing writing. And it was also my first... Uh, the first job I ever got into because of my portfolio, which I was absolutely proud of. Mm, and it's cool. also one of the only things I can show right now because other stuff is under NDA. Mm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is the apartment of the uh, main character. His name is Jack. And I had to do to, to design the layout. As you can see, he's not very clean. He has a really messy life. I, I had so much fun doing this one. It took me so much, like two months <laughs> of planning, wow. but but it was it was uh, such a joy to do this one. It was amazing because I, uh, again, um, one of the best things about creating backgrounds without characters is that you get to imagine the way l the world would look around them. So you know, if they come in, I mean, how do they fold their clothes? Are they clean? Uh, like, what's their morning routine, and how would their house be affected by their morning routine? So, yeah, you, just like pondering all of those questions is really, and then getting to draw them is really satisfying. So, I ha I'm happy with all, all the little details and stuff. That is so. I love the colors. Love. The colors are. Oh, so thank funny. you. And I'm really happy with so the way impressive. it turned out. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. This is, um, I think this is the last of my art right now. And you know, this self-portrait, but I've already shown this. So, yeah, I mean, I, I have some of the clips I've animated. Mm -hmm. but I, I, maybe I can show them. Wait with me. You want? Oh, wait. As long as it's yeah, not under you. NDA. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. No, right now, all of the animation I've done is personal because I'm oh, still nice. not that good. Old Roach, thank you so much for um, the tune well, I this appreciate is, it. Uh, I don't know if I can show this uh, because this is this an is animatic I made on 2020 about uh, Women's Day in Mexico. I think it goes into like very heavy themes of abuse and stuff. Um, I don't know if you think that's. <laughs> I don't know. Appropriate. It is quite late, so maybe I th it's, it should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's always like if it's if it's okay to be shown on TV, yeah. it will be okay to be shown on someone's stream, you know. Okay. No. Yeah. It's. I mean, it's light. Uh, where the hell is it now? Eret raid. Hi. Thank you for the raid, Eret. Welcome, everyone. We are doing artist streams right now with Rebecca. <laughs> Let me look at it. <laughs> I lost it. Oh, oh my god. To Harry. Hey, I hope um, I'm gonna mute so that Rebecca is not confused. But hi! Hello, hello, hello! Okay, you know what? I can show instead this clip I made for uh, Moana Reanimated, which is another collaboration in YouTube. Ooh. It's really short, so it's just um, like three seconds. But I really like how it turned out. Mm -hmm. That's it. Oh, oh no, it just oh. lagged. Literally the whole clip oh, no. just lagged out. <laughs> okay. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me try again. Okay. Oh yeah, now it works. Yeah. Oh, that's so I cute. Hope it works. Yeah, yeah, it worked. It worked. That's so cute. Okay. <laughs> it's really short, but uh, it's one of I don't know if you've seen reanimated Seven, collaborations so where someone well. gets like a lot of animators to redo a single shot from a scene of a movie, uh, but in their own style. So it's kind of like a moving collage. So I have this clip. That's so cool. I've never seen that, but that's really cute. I really recommend it. It's um, and you can just search Moana Reanimated, and you'll probably find probably find it. Mm -hmm. Because there were also so many amazing artists working on that one as well. Oh, this one is the other clip. So cute! I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and let me just show you 
one last clip. This one was for another reanimated collaboration. Um, and then I think I will be done with all my art. <laughs> Yes, Aaron Raiders. Uh, we are like the art streams. We're letting uh, Rebecca show us their art right now, and you can ask her questions in a second, and she will answer them and play. Uh, did it work? Yeah, it worked. Yeah, it worked. That's so cute. Uh, I'll play it again. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's so, is that from Moana too? I've never seen Moana. Sadly. I'm so bad with no, watching this is movies. from. <laughs> Yeah, me, me too, don't worry. I mean, I, I watch a lot of animated movies, but uh, mm -hmm. it's embarrassing the amount of famous, very important movies that I haven't seen. I know, so don't worry. <laughs> I slowly am catching up. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> no, uh, no, this is not from Moana. This is from... I don't know if you've heard of him, but it's a YouTuber called Saber Spark, and he reviews bad animated movies. Oh. This one is inspired in a particularly bad one. I uh, see. But now this is from a different project. <laughs> you should see Moana, though, it's really good. I should, I should. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I have Disney Plus now, Yay. so I'll be able to watch everything. Oh, watch Encanto first. No. I will. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll Blue watch Encanto yeah. first. <laughs> It's amazing, yeah. Thank you, but yeah, that's it. Very cool. Um, so I guess chat. It is time for you to ask some questions. Do you have any questions? Oh, we did. We do have a question that came from last time that um, I decided to move over to you, and that is, how do you draw hands? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, I knew. Oh, I was hoping you'd forget because oh, I am okay. also you don't, not the right person. I don't have to. It's fine. <laughs> like, I think um, I can just show some of my techniques, but just watch me try and do this, and it's going to turn out horrible. Just <sighs> because <laughs> I I love when hands go right, and I have a lot. Of, I, I've been drawing them a lot uh, for a specific project that I can show. But they are very hit and miss, and I feel like that's something that a lot of artists should keep in mind. I'm not only with hands, like with everything, but specifically with hands. It's easy to get them right in a very specific pose, uh, whichever pose that it was mostly like, you know, the resting pose of the hands. Is this one? Twig just said hands slash neck. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, like this. Uh, once you get used to this, it may be easy, but the things it, our hands are amazing. They work in mysterious and complicated ways, and not only are we able to do very crazy things with our fingers, but perspective also messes them a lot because you have like five different things to worry about, and they all look different and they all move different. So you may think that you get ha you already like can handle hands as weird as that, as that sounds, but then mm -hmm. you you need to do a really specific pose or a really specific movement and realize that you don't know anything, even if you know the anatomy, even if you know how um, how do you say this in English? Well, um, uh, how the bones bone structure works. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really hard to get it right because they are they are very. Um, variable very diverse in terms of shapes so my advice is just draw a lot of hands like look for the craziest references you can find look for how hands look that when they're holding someone or something and just do that one pose and like create an entire portfolio of just hand gestures because there are so many and it's impossible for you to say okay now i can draw all of the hands all of the time all of the in all of the perspectives because no you can't mm -hmm. <laughs> you you're just gonna have to keep trying so so yeah and i mean another like basic tip is that when you draw hands instead of doing like this um oh my god <laughs> this okay. basic shape um Instead of a square, it's more of like a pentagon, is that how it's called? So you have like this little um, like bone structure that comes out to support your amazing, amazing thumb, which is a really cool thing us humans have. 
some monkeys. <laughs> the thumb needs like its own space. It's a really selfish but part of your hand, but it's also really important, so they deserve it. Uh, but yeah, like the thumb has its own space, and then everything else just has to share a room with the other fingers. But that's literally the only advice I can give to you, <laughs> because uh, again, I'm not the right person to uh, to ask for hands. They are just really complicated and diverse. I mean, you can do it. Uh, I feel like that already like, <laughs> showed um, um, or, or gave some help and advice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, I, I think it was uh, Rick or or Chris maybe who mentioned Ethan Becker. Which, yeah, yeah again, uh, I absolutely recommend him. If you want to get into animation or just illustration and drawings or just you just want to uh, be a good artist, you should absolutely check check his his channel out because he... Uh, I think he's the closest thing you can ask for the uh, to the internet for a teacher. Because, you know, uh, tutorials are made by really nice people with really good intentions and they take care of your of your feelings and that's good <laughs> but sometimes your feelings need to come <laughs> to be uh, hurt. are not as important as your need to draw <laughs> as awful as that sounds and uh, i mean he's not mean he he just has like a really dry humor mm -hmm. but but he's really uh good at motivating you to push yourself through the um to your next level to not fall into comfort zones which is a really um common thing in art you know it's not wrong. I mean, you don't. You need to enjoy it first of all, but you also need to realize that uh, art. You're able like to consume such great art because it's like um, transcending knowledge of other artists, and that can only happen when you push yourself to be better, so you can show other people how to be better. Uh, so if you're ever like in the mood to push yourself and just learn new things, definitely check his channel out and check the video he made on hands because it's a really good one. And yeah. <laughs> What's your inspiration for the way you design your work? I mean, you do have a lot of huh. different, like, I guess designs and... <laughs> um, well, again, a uh, big part is my culture. I also um, really take a lot of inspiration in... Uh, there's this really uh, famous uh, genre of paintings, which is surrealismo, surrealism. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Dali, and uh, what's this guy called? Uh, Grit. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, but surrealism is amazing. <laughs> it's really mm -hmm. cool. But I specifically take a lot of inspiration in TJ two Sharpstar, painters, surrealist stuff, painters, which are called Leonora Carrington and Remedios Varo. Mm -hmm. um, they are... Let me show you some of their paintings real quick. Um, but they were like the first um, time I was absolutely interested in traditional i mean in like the history of art because there are stories like as surrealist women which is famously a very anti-women art movement <laughs> uh are really inspiring and they also like uh, came here to mexico and they uh stayed here and a lot of their paintings talk about how much they love this culture so uh, what I take a lot from their paintings is that they merge really common and ordinary subjects in day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. with just the craziest amount of, uh, like, creatures you can imagine. Let me just, um... Okay, this is Leonora. She is the best. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I feel like it's some of them are like too creepy and too busy. But if you ever uh, like have the time to look at one of her, of her paintings close, uh, I mean from close up. Uh, I don't know. She she's just um, like looking at this. I just can't believe how she was able to come up with all of this. But 
I think this is like the most the the thing that inspires me the most that she just drew whatever she wanted no matter how weird the concept was no matter how out there it was she just implemented it and I don't know it it, it works <laughs> it works so well so other than like my culture and maybe feelings and that I feel like a good place to look for inspiration is, even if it sounds obvious, in other artists. Um, you're, even if it's... Uh, I mean, you need to look for artists that are your age, that you can find on their internet, but you also need to look for artists in Thank history you, and other times of the year, because they are... I mean, they are not thinking what you're thinking, and they didn't go uh, through what you're going through, mm -hmm. and that can be really refreshing and really eye-opening to how you can use your art to get out of your current like situation, I think. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Thank you. Well sub for five months, but watch you for about one year oh, going um, to you are having a great stream so I'm Regina. looking for more questions. Yeah me too. Chat um, if you have questions. Oh, I think this one says, do you lose motivation easily? If yes, how do you regain it? Huh. Well, right now I'm really motivated. Uh, I'm drawing... Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I can't really show you how much I'm drawing right now, but I'm drawing so much. Uh, in a single day, I can go like through five different pieces. Um, but uh, one thing that really motivates me is to think of my art as my safe, my safe place, because um, at the end of the day, art is the way you have to express yourself. Especially if you're like a very introverted person, there's nothing as relieving as being able to, at the end of the day, be in front of a piece of paper and just put what you're feeling there, even if it doesn't look good to you immediately, even if you don't understand what you're doing. Um, just the fact that you can do like a sound phase and say, yeah, this is how I feel, or this works for me for some reason, mm -hmm. is amazing. And, and I feel like a lot of the, uh, of, of, um, the process of like liking myself comes from the way I relate to my art. So if I ever just don't feel like drawing, if I feel tired, I just remind, my, remind myself that even if I'm not drawing that day, I'm still an artist and I still have like the ability to come back whenever I can and just be an artist again and be myself again. Like it's mine, no one can take that away from me. So I mean, I think that's not as motivating, but maybe more calming <laughs> of, a, of a thought that your art is yours, no one can take that away from you. If you like just feel too frustrated frustrated to draw too tired if you are too um angry with the way you haven't been making progress if that's the case remember that you can always come back to it i know it can be worrisome if it happens if it like uh, takes too long but no matter how much it takes it's yours like it's there it's always going to be there so yeah find uh find company in that <laughs> Favorite thing to draw? Favorite thing to draw? I mean, I think we've established that it's water. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. But um, huh? I really like to draw. I really like to draw mermaids. <laughs> Just because um, they make me, they help me a lot to practice my line of actions. Because you don't have to worry about legs, so it's just like, oh yeah, here's her face. And then you can just do like a crazy cylinder. Mm -hmm. It will work. I Maybe, <laughs> sometimes. Um, I always try, this is always like kind of my warm-up um, exercise to draw mermaids. Wow. Because they make me, make my hand go a little bit looser and... I, I always have a tendency to do a lot of curves instead of um, straight lines, which is really bad, for example, for drawing clothes and stuff, because when you just do like this and this, you can't really communicate very uh, concretely. So to get it out of my system, I just draw mermaids <laughs> before I start. Yeah. 
love them also like you know their big flowy hair I can't really get into it right now because I feel like if I'm talking at the same time as I'm drawing I can't like do any of those things <laughs> right <laughs> but just imagine that this looks really cool mm -hmm. I mean, we saw your mermaid earlier that looked really cool all right um oh yeah, yeah this one there she is. <laughs> yeah very cool I do think however that we are reaching the one hour mark so chat hey. answer or ask your like last like one or two questions and then if you have anything more to say to chat you're welcome but then we can wrap up oh, oh yeah what's sure, your um, draw that's not a question of chat but um what do, um what like t drawing tablet do you use oh uh i use uh wacom intuos um Specifically the comic one, which is, uh, I think it's a very popular line of tablets that came out like maybe five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was my first draw, uh, tablet ever and it, I still use it. Uh, I'm saving for one that has a screen because uh, even if I'm really used to it, uh, I mean it's all I draw my digital art in, I do always miss the ability to like directly control my lines uh, mm -hmm. into the page. So for example, every single drawing I've ever made, I make the sketch uh, in a sketchbook first, like just mm -hmm. traditionally, and then I import that sketchbook into the computer. Because I know that even if I could do the sketch directly there, it just won't have like the same um, <laughs> feeling or the same, yeah, the same control um, of the concept. But yeah, I use Wacom, it's really good. I love it so much. Uh, it's everything to me. I'm saving for a better one. They're really expensive. And in the meantime, this one is doing just fine. Like, uh, there's literally nothing wrong with it. <laughs> it's perfect. Mm -hmm. It's really useful. Yeah. All right, chat. Your last two questions. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, what cartoons, animated series do you find inspiration on? Well, um, I mean, obviously, my like my first inspiration ever was Avatar: The Last Airbender. <laughs> like, yeah, no, that uh, that uh, that one was. I feel my. I mean, actually, I think my first animation was a Waterbender. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, that's that's the main one. <laughs> I love Avatar with all my heart. I love it so much. Especially because that was also the first uh, time I ever got close to the process of animation because they have so much behind the scene content and so much so many interviews and so many storyboards. So when I but but also their production was really nice like all the artists working there were really into what they were doing mm -hmm. so it's really inspiring to see how they made the series even with all the budget cuts and even with all the restrictions nickelodeon had to put on them they still made something so beautiful and so sound with uh so much work and so much intelligence in, into how they made it that it just it's really inspiring whenever i'm feeling down about my art or if i'm feeling too anxious about um animation specifically i always watch uh, <laughs> avatar the last Airbender interviews and process Aww. videos because they just make me feel so uh they're very reassur reassuring I'm trying to find my first animation hold on all good i'll see if i Here it is. find another question really bad. There it is. Ooh. So but cute. but yeah, this one. <laughs> thank you. I mean, it has like no uh, spacing, no anything. It's just really mm -hmm. wonky. But I really wanted to do a water bender, so yeah. And I mean, I take inspiration in other many, many, many other. Um, pieces of art, I mean, well, animated pieces of art, but I think that would be the main one so far. Um, how do you draw dynamic poses? Dynamic poses. I think that can be the last one, right? Yeah. Okay, um... Uh, example... 
is an assignment I'm working on right now. Um, I have to, like, <laughs> thank you. I have to, first of all, I have to break down the shapes in this pose. But then, this is for animation, but then I have to come up with the pose that's going to come next, like the next key pose. So, um, this is based on just my imagination. I feel like what she's going to do is that she's going to turn around and maybe this hand is going to stick like this one. Uh, so my most important tip for dynamic poses is I the pose needs to work without hands or without arms. Um, by that at me, I mean that I'm, even though this may look like the most important part, part of the pose, and it is, it's important, but it doesn't really go anywhere if the torso and the legs are not sound enough to sustain it. So when you're doing poses, it's really easy to get carried away by, by how you're going to place the hands and the arms, because even in real life, when you are expressing yourself and talking, especially if you're a nervous person, you use your hands a lot. But if you were to be a fighter or you were to be in an action scene, your legs and your torso are the most vital parts to carry your body around. The hands are just going there, uh, are just there to do an action, but they are not taking you anywhere. So if you're going to do a pose, you need to keep in mind that torso and the legs need to work. The only way they can work if, is if you can clearly read a line of action through them. So here it's kind of like my line of action, and then it's just uh, defined by the hands. But yeah, <laughs> I feel like uh, that's the most important thing, lines of action. And they need to be like as simple as, as possible. Some of them can work by being curves, but the most um, rigid ones can just be like a straight line. And then you just come up from everything there. And you also need to keep in mind um, uh, negative spaces. So for example, here I'm going to actually find more the negative space between those, these legs. But in art, <laughs> a lot of the times, less is more. So uh, it tells me more like the amount of space that's between here and here than just you know, what's inside the body. So so yeah, like exaggerate the space your limbs can grow between each other. I don't know if that made sense. Mm -hmm. um, just make sure to really um, dramatic about how your your body is little and it's just moving through a lot of air i, I think that's a really good uh, fun way of looking at poses wow but yeah <laughs> that's it cool that's really cool thank um, you yeah i think I mean, we, we reached the seven hour mark. I've been holding you here for seven oh hours <laughs> um, So oh. I think um, we can wrap up here. Um, do you yeah. want to shout yourself out? Thank you, Happy oh, Little well, um, I'm Rebecca Droplet in Instagram. That's like my main uh, social media account. Okay. Uh, I'll try to upload more this month, things that are, are not NDA. But yeah, if you want to find me, that's that's a place. Thank but I also Ethan. have a Twitter, uh, which is Rebecca Droplet, but with a little line between Rebecca and Droplet. <laughs> uh, and yeah, that's that's it for for now. Um, hope I can ha I have some more projects to show at the end of the year. But right now, that's just um, if you're interested, you can come and see what else I'm doing there. Very cool. Well, thank yeah, you so much thank you for so being much. here. Oh, thank you. This has been amazing. I'm glad. I'm really glad. Um, yeah, thank you for taking your time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is, uh, I mean, uh, this is so sweet of you. You have no idea how much uh, I've listened to your streams while drawing. They are like, <laughs> they have been really helpful. So I was really excited for this opportunity. I couldn't, I really couldn't believe myself when I... Uh, I saw the discreet message. <laughs> oh, I'm really glad. No, uh, yeah. thank you so much for, for for your support, I guess, and also for being here, taking your time. I really appreciate it. For for thank you for showing chat some of your art and explaining some of it. Um, it was really fun. <laughs> this was fun. Thank you. Yeah, thank you too. All right, have a good evening, I guess. Yeah, 
Thank you. Yeah, bye, bye chat. Thank you. You were so kind. Bye. Bye. Aww. Oh, so sweet. Okay, again, Ethan, thank, thank you so much for the five gifted. Sorry, I couldn't. Um, I didn't want to interrupt her. But thank you so much for the five gifted. I appreciate it. Oh, that was so sweet. Oh my god, chat. They were all so amazing. I really enjoyed this stream. I'm glad. Seeing everyone's artwork was truly inspiring, and I'm super excited for future art streams. Yeah, I want to bring I those back a once a month day. now. Less than three. Um, if you guys are artists and you guys are interested in being on these streams, um, you can apply to it on my sub server, uh, which means right now it's only closed for my own subs. Um, so if you want to apply my sub discord is in the description you need to be a sub to join though uh the applications are always open you can always send something in uh, i go through them multiple times whenever i search for people so i go up and down up and down so if you were the first person applying i i will might still pick you um so don't be scared uh if i didn't but yeah oh my god <laughs> That's crazy, chat. Now, thank you so much for being here. It's really sweet. I know a lot of things happened and a lot of other streams were going on today. Um, and honestly, I, I still appreciate you guys being here so much. It's very sweet. I very, very much appreciate it. I want to raid if Twig is live. I want to raid Twig. Twig is live. Okay. Twig was on here earlier. Uh, Twig, I think, is just continuing the art, the the drawing that they did uh, earlier on here. Oh, it's been such a long stream. I never know how to end, especially the longest streams are so hard to end. But uh, especially because I haven't talked to you guys much um, after uh, I did the just chatting thing. But for future art streams, I will always start an hour early to then talk to you guys for an hour. And then we'll do the artist streams. So... Um, I, I will talk to you and I always read you guys. I'm so sorry. I always feel bad for not interacting with you guys enough. But I love you so much, chat. You guys are amazing. You really are. I appreciate you guys a lot. Um, and I appreciate you guys being here. I appreciate all your support because I know I haven't been here for a bit. Bye, see, 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 thank you so much. Bye-bye. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Ending is hard. Um, but I will see you again soon. Uh <laughs> Thank you for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Give Twig my love. And uh, I hope you're all having a wonderful morning, evening, or day, wherever you are. I'll see you soon, chat. I don't know. I don't want to end. But I have to. I'm so tired. Bye.